Chapter 21 Holiness Required of Priests Yahweh said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, A priest shall not defile himself for the dead among his people, except for his relatives that are near to him, for his mother, for his father, for his son, for his daughter, for his brother, and for his virgin sister who is near to him, who has had no husband. For her he may defile himself. He shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. They shall not shave their heads, neither shall they shave off the corners of their beards, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. They shall be holy to their God, and not profane the name of their God. For they offer the offerings of Yahweh, made by fire, the bread of their God. Therefore they shall be holy. They shall not marry a woman who is a prostitute or profane. Neither shall they marry a woman divorced from her husband, for he is holy to his God. You shall sanctify him, therefore, for he offers the bread of your God. He shall be holy to you. For I, Yahweh, who sanctify you, am holy. The daughter of any priest, if she profanes herself by playing the prostitute, she profanes her father. She shall be burned with fire. He who is the high priest among his brothers, upon whose head the anointing oil is poured, and that is consecrated to put on the garments, shall not let the hair of his head hang loose, nor tear his clothes. Neither shall he go in to any dead body, nor defile himself for his father or for his mother. Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his God. For the crown of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. I am Yahweh. He shall take a wife in her virginity, a widow, or one divorced, or a woman who has been defiled, or a prostitute. These he shall not marry, but a virgin of his own people shall he take as a wife. He shall not profane his seed among his people, for I am Yahweh who sanctifies him. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Say to Aaron, None of your seed throughout their generations, who has a blemish, may approach to offer the bread of his God. Restrictions Against Those With Blemishes for whatever man he is that has a blemish, he shall not draw near. A blind man, or a lame, or he who has a flat nose, or any deformity, or a man who has an injured foot, or an injured hand, or hunchbacked, or a dwarf, or one who has a defect in his eye, or an itching disease, or scabs, or who has damaged testicles. No man of the seed of Aaron the priest, who has a blemish, shall come near to offer the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. Since he has a blemish, he shall not come near to offer the bread of his God. He shall eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy. He shall not come near to the veil, nor come near to the altar, 
because he has a blemish, that he may not profane my sanctuaries. For I am Yahweh who sanctifies them. So Moses spoke to Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel. Chapter 22 Restrictions Against the Unclean Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Tell Aaron and his sons to separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, which they make holy to me, and that they not profane my holy name. I am Yahweh. Tell them, if any one of all your seed throughout your generations approaches the holy things which the children of Israel make holy to Yahweh, having his uncleanness on him, that soul shall be cut off from before me. I am Yahweh. Whoever of the seed of Aaron is a leper or has an issue, he shall not eat of the holy things until he is clean. Whoever touches anything that is unclean by the dead, or a man whose seed goes from him, or whoever touches any creeping thing, whereby he may be made unclean, or a man of whom he may take uncleanness, whatever uncleanness he has, INSTRUCTIONS FOR CLEANSING The person that touches any such shall be unclean until the evening, and shall not eat of the holy things, unless he bathe his body in water. When the sun is down, he shall be clean, and afterward he shall eat of the holy things, because it is his bread. That which dies of itself, or is torn by animals, he shall not eat, defiling himself by it. I am Yahweh. They shall, therefore, follow my requirements, lest they bear sin for it, and die therein, if they profane it. I am Yahweh who sanctifies them. No stranger shall eat of the holy thing, a foreigner living with the priests, or a hired servant shall not eat of the holy thing. But if a priest buys a slave purchased by his money, he shall eat of it. And such as are born in his house, they shall eat of his bread. If a priest's daughter is married to an outsider, she shall not eat of the heave offering of the holy things. But if a priest's daughter is a widow or divorced and has no child and has returned to her father's house as in her youth, she may eat of her father's bread, but no stranger shall eat any of it. If a man eats something holy unwittingly, then he shall add the fifth part of its value to it, and shall give the holy thing to the priest. The priests shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel, which they offer to Yahweh, and so cause them to bear the iniquity that brings guilt when they eat their holy things. For I am Yahweh who sanctifies them. Worthy Offerings Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons, and to all the children of Israel, and say to them, Whoever is of the house of Israel, or of the foreigners in Israel, who offers his offering, whether it be any of their vows, or any of their free will offerings, 
which they offer to Yahweh for a burnt offering, that you may be accepted. You shall offer a male without blemish, of the bulls, of the sheep, or of the goats. But whatever has a blemish, that you shall not offer, for it shall not be acceptable for you. Whoever offers a sacrifice of peace offerings to Yahweh to accomplish a vow, or for a free will offering of the herd or of the flock, it shall be perfect to be accepted. No blemish shall be therein. Blind, injured, maimed, having a wart, festering, or having a running sore. You shall not offer these to Yahweh, nor make an offering by fire of them on the altar to Yahweh. Either a bull or a lamb that has any deformity or lacking in his parts, that you may offer for a free will offering, but for a vow it shall not be accepted. That which has its testicles bruised, crushed, broken, or cut, you shall not offer to Yahweh, neither shall you do thus in your land, neither shall you offer the bread of your God from the hand of a foreigner, of any of these, because their corruption is in them. There is a blemish in them. They shall not be accepted for you. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, When a bull, or a sheep, or a goat is born, then it shall remain seven days with its mother, and from the eighth day and thenceforth it shall be accepted for the offering of an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Whether it is a cow or you, you shall not kill it and its young, both in one day. When you sacrifice a sacrifice of thanksgiving to Yahweh, you shall sacrifice it so that you may be accepted. It shall be eaten on the same day. You shall leave none of it until the morning. I am Yahweh. Therefore, you shall keep my commandments and do them. I am Yahweh. You shall not profane my holy name, but I will be made holy among the children of Israel. I am Yahweh, who makes you holy, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Yahweh. Chapter 23 Feasts of the Lord Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them, The set feasts of Yahweh, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my set feasts. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no kind of work. It is a Sabbath to Yahweh in all your dwellings. The Passover Feast These are the set feasts of Yahweh, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their appointed season. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, in the evening, is Yahweh's Passover. On the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to Yahweh. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no regular work, but you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh seven days. 
In the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no regular work. The Feast of First Fruits Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them, When you have come into the land which I give to you, and shall reap its harvest, then you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before Yahweh to be accepted for you. On the next day, after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. On the day when you wave the sheaf, you shall offer a male lamb without blemish, a year old, for a burnt offering to Yahweh. The meal offering with it shall be two tenth parts of an ephah of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire to Yahweh for a pleasant aroma, and the drink offering with it shall be of wine, the fourth part of a hen. You shall eat neither bread, nor roasted grain, nor fresh grain, until this same day, until you have brought the offering of your God. This is a statute forever, throughout your generations, in all your dwellings. The Feast of Pentecost You shall count from the next day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Even to the next day after the seventh Sabbath, you shall number fifty days, and you shall offer a new meal offering to Yahweh. You shall bring out of your habitations two loaves of bread for a wave offering made of two tenth parts of an ephah of fine flour. They shall be baked with yeast for first fruits to Yahweh. You shall present with the bread seven lambs without blemish, a year old, one young bull, and two rams. They shall be a burnt offering to Yahweh, with their meal offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of a sweet aroma to Yahweh. You shall offer one male goat for a sin offering, and two male lambs a year old for a sacrifice of peace offerings. The priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before Yahweh with the two lambs. They shall be holy to Yahweh for the priest. You shall make proclamation on the same day. There shall be a holy convocation to you. You shall do no regular work. This is a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap into the corners of your field. Neither shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the foreigner. I am Yahweh, your God. The Feast of Trumpets Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, shall be a solemn rest to you, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation, you shall do no regular work, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. The Day of Atonement Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, However, on the tenth day of this seventh month is the Day of Atonement. It shall be a holy convocation to you, and you shall afflict yourselves and you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. You shall do no kind of work in that same day, 
for it is a day of atonement, to make atonement for you before Yahweh your God. For whoever it is who shall not deny himself in that same day shall be cut off from his people. Whoever it is who does any kind of work in that same day that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall do no kind of work. It is a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for you, and you shall deny yourselves. In the ninth day of the month, at evening, from evening to evening, you shall keep your Sabbath. THE FEAST OF BOOTHS Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month is the Feast of Tents for seven days to Yahweh. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no regular work. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation to you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly. You shall do no regular work. These are the appointed feasts of Yahweh which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh, a burnt offering and a meal offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, each on its own day, besides the Sabbaths of Yahweh, and besides your gifts, and besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings, which you give to Yahweh. So on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruits of the land, you shall keep the feast of Yahweh seven days. On the first day shall be a solemn rest, and on the eighth day shall be a solemn rest. You shall take on the first day the fruit of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before Yahweh your God seven days. You shall keep it a feast to Yahweh seven days in the year. It is a statute forever throughout your generations. You shall keep it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All who are native-born in Israel shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. Moses declared to the children of Israel the appointed feasts of Yahweh. Chapter 24 The Oil for the Lamps Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring to you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause a lamp to burn continually outside of the veil of the testimony in the tent of meeting shall Aaron keep it in order from evening to morning before Yahweh continually it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations he shall keep in order the lamps on the pure gold lampstand before Yahweh continually the showbread you shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes of it two tenth parts of an ephah shall be in one cake you shall set them in two rows six on a row 
on the pure gold table before Yahweh. You shall put pure frankincense on each row, that it may be to the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Every Sabbath day he shall set it in order before Yahweh continually. It is on the behalf of the children of Israel an everlasting covenant. It shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it in a holy place, for it is most holy to him of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire, by a perpetual statute. Shilomith's son blasphemes. The son of an Israelite woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel. And the son of the Israelite woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. The son of the Israelite woman blasphemed the name and cursed, and they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shilomith, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. They put him in custody until the will of Yahweh should be declared to them. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Bring out of the camp him who cursed, and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head, and let all the congregation stone him. You shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, Whoever curses his God shall bear his sin. He who blasphemes the name of Yahweh, he shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall certainly stone him. The foreigner, as well as the native-born, when he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. An eye for an eye. He who strikes any man mortally shall surely be put to death. He who strikes an animal mortally shall make it good, life for life. If anyone injures his neighbor as he has done, so shall it be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye tooth for tooth as he has injured someone so shall it be done to him he who kills an animal shall make it good and he who kills a man shall be put to death you shall have one kind of law for the foreigner as well as the native born for i am yahweh your god Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and they brought forth him who had cursed out of the camp, and stoned him with stones. The children of Israel did as Yahweh commanded Moses. Chapter 25 The Sabbatic Year Yahweh said to Moses in Mount Sinai, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to Yahweh. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in its fruits. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land a sabbath to yahweh you shall not sow your field or prune your vineyard what grows of itself in your harvest you shall not reap and the grapes of your undressed vine you shall not gather it shall be a year of solemn rest for the land the sabbath of the land shall be for food for you for yourself for your servant for your maid, for your hired servant, and for your stranger, who lives as a foreigner with you, for your livestock also, and for the animals that are in your land, 
shall all its increase be for food. The Year of Jubilee You shall count off seven Sabbaths of the years, seven times seven years, and there shall be to you the days of seven Sabbaths of the years, even forty-nine years. Then you shall sound the loud trumpet on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement you shall sound the trumpet throughout all your land. You shall make the fiftieth year holy and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee to you, and each of you shall return to his own property and each of you shall return to his family. That fiftieth year shall be a jubilee to you. In it you shall not sow, neither reap that which grows of itself, nor gather from the undressed vines. For it is a jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You shall eat of its increase out of the field. Return of Property In this year of Jubilee, each of you shall return to his property. If you sell anything to your neighbor, or buy from your neighbor, you shall not wrong one another. According to the number of years after the Jubilee, you shall buy from your neighbor according to the number of years of the crops he shall sell to you, according to the length of the years you shall increase its price, and according to the shortness of the years you shall diminish its price, for he is selling the number of the crops to you. You shall not wrong one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am Yahweh your God. THE BLESSING OF OBEDIENCE Therefore you shall do my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them, and you shall dwell in the land in safety. The land shall yield its fruit, and you shall eat your field, and dwell therein in safety. If you said, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, nor gather in our increase. Then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for the three years. You shall sow the eighth year, and eat of the fruits, the old store, until the ninth year, until its fruits come in. You shall eat the old store. THE LAW OF REDEMPTION The land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and live as foreigners with me. In all the land of your possession you shall grant a redemption for the land. If your brother becomes poor and sells some of his possessions, then his kinsman who is next to him shall come and redeem that which his brother has sold. If a man has no one to redeem it, and he becomes prosperous and finds sufficient means to redeem it, then let him reckon the years since its sale and restore the surplus to the man to whom he sold it, and he shall return to his property. But if he isn't able to get it back for himself, then what he has sold shall remain in the hand of him who has bought it until the year of Jubilee, and in the Jubilee it shall be released, and he shall return to his property. If a man sells a dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it has been sold. For a full year he shall have the right of redemption. If it isn't redeemed within the space of a full year, 
then the house that is in the walled city shall be made sure in perpetuity to him who bought it throughout his generations it shall not be released in the jubilee but the houses of the villages which have no wall around them shall be reckoned with the fields of the country they may be redeemed and they shall be released in the jubilee nevertheless the cities of the levites the houses in the cities of their possession the levites may redeem at any time the levites may redeem the house that was sold and the city of his possession and it shall be released in the jubilee for the houses of the cities of the levites are their possession among the children of israel but the field of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold for it is their perpetual possession. Redemption of the Poor If your brother has become poor, and his hand can't support him among you, then you shall uphold him. He shall live with you like an alien and a temporary resident. Take no interest from him or profit, but fear your God that your brother may live among you. You shall not lend him your money at interest, nor give him your food for profit. I am Yahweh your God, who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. Redemption of Bondmen if your brother has grown poor among you and sells himself to you you shall not make him to serve as a slave as a hired servant and as a temporary resident he shall be with you he shall serve with you until the year of jubilee then he shall go out from you he and his children with him and shall return to his own family and to the possession of his fathers for they are my servants whom i brought forth out of the land of egypt they shall not be sold as slaves you shall not rule over him with harshness but shall fear your god as for your male and your female slaves whom you may have of the nations that are around you from them you may buy male and female slaves moreover of the children of the aliens who live among you of them you may buy and of their families who are with you which they have conceived in your land and they will be your property you may make them an inheritance for your children after you to hold for a possession of them may you take your slaves forever but over your brothers the children of israel you shall not rule one over another with harshness redemption of servants if an alien or temporary resident with you becomes rich and your brother beside him has grown poor and sells himself to the stranger or foreigner living among you or to a member of the stranger's family after he is sold he may be redeemed one of his brothers may redeem him or his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him or any who is a close relative to him of his family may redeem him or if he has grown rich he may redeem himself he shall reckon with him who bought him from the year that he sold himself to him to the year of jubilee and the price of his sale shall be according to the number of years 
according to the time of a hired servant, shall he be with him. If there are yet many years, according to them, he shall give back the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for. If there remain but a few years to the year of jubilee, then he shall reckon with him, according to his years of service, he shall give back the price of his redemption. As a servant hired year by year, shall he be with him. He shall not rule with harshness over him in your sight. If he isn't redeemed by these means, then he shall be released in the year of jubilee, he and his children with him. For to me, the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your God. Chapter 26 The Blessings of Obedience You shall make for yourselves no idols. Neither shall you raise up an engraved image or a pillar. Neither shall you place any figured stone in your land to bow down to it. For I am Yahweh your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am Yahweh. If you walk in my statutes, and keep my commandments, and do them. Then I will give you your rains in their season, and the land shall yield its increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall reach to the vintage, and the vintage shall reach to the sowing time, and you shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and no one will make you afraid. And I will remove evil animals out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. You shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall chase ten thousand and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. I will have respect for you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and will establish my covenant with you. You shall eat old store long kept, and you shall move out the old because of the new. I will set my tent among you, and my soul won't abhor you. I will walk among you, and will be your God, and you will be my people. I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their slaves. And I have broken the bars of your yoke, and made you go upright. Punishments for Disobedience but if you will not listen to me, and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall reject my statutes, and if your soul abhors my ordinances, so that you will not do all my commandments, but break my covenant, I also will do this to you. I will appoint terror over you, even consumption and fever that shall consume the eyes, and make the soul to pine away. And you will sow your seed in vain, for your enemies will eat it. I will set my face against you, and you will be struck before your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you, and you will flee when no one pursues you. If you, in spite of these things, will not listen to me, then I will chastise you seven times more for your sins. 
I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your sky like iron, and your soil like brass, and your strength will be spent in vain, for your land won't yield its increase, neither will the trees of the land yield their fruit. If you walk contrary to me, and won't listen to me, then I will bring seven times more plagues on you, according to your sins. I will send the wild animals among you, which will rob you of your children, destroy your livestock, and make you few in number, and your roads will become desolate. If by these things you won't be reformed to me, but will walk contrary to me, then I will also walk contrary to you, and I will strike you, even I, seven times for your sins. I will bring a sword upon you that will execute the vengeance of the covenant, and you will be gathered together within your cities, and I will send the pestilence among you, and you will be delivered into the hand of the enemy. When I break your staff of bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver your bread again by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. If you, in spite of this, won't listen to me, but walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary to you in wrath, and I also will chastise you seven times for your sins. You will eat the flesh of your sons, and you will eat the flesh of your daughters. I will destroy your high places, and cut down your incense altars, and cast your dead bodies upon the bodies of your idols, and my soul will abhor you. I will lay your cities waste, and will bring your sanctuaries to desolation, and I will not take delight in the sweet fragrance of your offerings. I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies that dwell therein will be astonished at it. I will scatter you among the nations, and I will draw out the sword after you, and your land will be a desolation, and your cities shall be a waste. Then the land will enjoy its Sabbaths as long as it lies desolate, and you are in your enemy's lands. Even then the land will rest and enjoy its Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate, it shall have rest, even the rest which it didn't have in your Sabbaths when you lived on it. As for those of you who are left, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a driven leaf will put them to flight, and they shall flee as one flees from the sword, and they will fall when no one pursues. They will stumble over one another, as it were, before the sword, when no one pursues, and you will have no power to stand before your enemies. You will perish among the nations, and the land of your enemies will eat you up. Those of you who are left will pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. God remembers those who repent. If they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers in their trespass which they trespassed against me, and also that because they walked contrary to me, I also walked contrary to them and brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised heart is humbled, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob, 
and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. The land also will be left by them, and will enjoy its Sabbaths while it lies desolate without them, and they will accept the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they rejected my ordinances, and their soul abhorred my statutes. Yet for all that, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them, neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them. For I am Yahweh their God. But I will, for their sake, Remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the nations, that I might be their God. I am Yahweh. These are the statutes, ordinances, and laws which Yahweh made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by Moses. Chapter 27 Rules About Valuations Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When a man makes a vow, the persons shall be for Yahweh by your valuation. Your valuation shall be of a male, from twenty years old, even to sixty years old, even your valuation shall be fifty shekels of silver, after the shekel of the sanctuary. If it is a female, then your valuation shall be thirty shekels. If the person is from five years old, even to twenty years old, then your valuation shall be for a male twenty shekels, and for a female ten shekels. If the person is from a month old, even to five years old, then your valuation shall be, for a male, five shekels of silver, and for a female your valuation shall be three shekels of silver. If the person is from sixty years old and upward, if it is a male, then your valuation shall be fifteen shekels, and for a female, ten shekels. But if he is poorer than your valuation, then he shall be set before the priest, and the priest shall value him. According to the ability of him who vowed, shall the priest value him. If it is an animal, of which men offer an offering to Yahweh, all that any man gives of such to Yahweh, becomes holy. He shall not alter it, nor change it, a good for a bad, or a bad for a good. And if he shall at all change animal for animal, then both it and that for which it is changed shall be holy. If it is any unclean animal, of which they do not offer as an offering to Yahweh, then he shall set the animal before the priest, and the priest shall value it, whether it is good or bad. As you, the priest, values it, so shall it be. But if he will indeed redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part of it to its valuation. When a man dedicates his house to be holy to Yahweh, then the priest shall evaluate it whether it is good or bad. As the priest shall evaluate it, so shall it stand. If he who dedicates it will redeem his house, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of your valuation to it, and it shall be his. If a man dedicates to Yahweh part of the field of his possession, then your valuation shall be according to the seed for it. The sowing of a homer of barley shall be valued at fifty shekels of silver. 
if he dedicates his field from the year of jubilee according to your valuation it shall stand but if he dedicates his field after the jubilee then the priest shall reckon to him the money according to the years that remain to the year of jubilee and an abatement shall be made from your valuation if he who dedicated the field will indeed redeem it then he shall add the fifth part of the money of your valuation to it and it shall remain his if he will not redeem the field or if he has sold the field to another man it shall not be redeemed any more but the field when it goes out in the jubilee shall be holy to yahweh as a field devoted it shall be owned by the priests if he dedicates to yahweh a field which he has bought which is not of the field of his possession then the priest shall reckon to him the worth of your valuation up to the year of jubilee and he shall give your valuation on that day as a holy thing to yahweh in the year of jubilee the field shall return to him from whom it was bought even to him to whom the possession of the land belongs all your valuations shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary twenty geras to the shekel only the firstborn among animals which is made a firstborn to yahweh no man may dedicate it whether an ox or sheep it is yahweh's if it is an unclean animal then he shall buy it back according to your valuation and shall add to it the fifth part of it or if it isn't redeemed then it shall be sold according to your valuation notwithstanding no devoted thing that a man shall devote to yahweh of all that he has whether of man or animal or of the field of his possession shall be sold or redeemed every devoted thing is most holy to yahweh no one devoted who shall be devoted from among men shall be ransomed he shall surely be put to death instruction on tithes all the tithes of the land whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees is yahweh's it is holy to yahweh if a man redeems anything of his tithes he shall add a fifth part to it all the tithes of the herds or the flocks whatever passes under the rod the tenth shall be holy to yahweh he shall not search whether it is good or bad neither shall he change it and if he changes it at all then both it and that for which it is changed shall be holy it shall not be redeemed these are the commandments which yahweh commanded moses for the children of israel on mount sinai end of section 11《Numbers》Chapter 1 The Census of Israel's Warriors Yahweh spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tent of meeting, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, every male, one by one, from twenty years old and upward, all who are able to go out to war in Israel. 
You and Aaron shall number them by their divisions. With you there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of his father's house. The Princes of the Tribes These are the names of the men who shall stand with you. Of Reuben, Elizer, the son of Shedeu, of Simeon, Shalumiel, the son of Zurishaddai, of Judah, Nashon, the son of Amenadab, of Issachar, Nethanel, the son of Zuar, of Zebulun, Eliab, the son of Helen, of the children of Joseph, of Ephraim, Elishama, the son of Amihud, of Manasseh, Gamaliel, the son of Pedazer, of Benjamin, Abidon, the son of Gideoni, of Dan, Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai, of Asher, Pagiel, the son of Okran, of Gad, Eliasaph, the son of Duel, of Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Enon. These are those who were called of the congregation, the princes of the tribes of their fathers. They were the heads of the thousands of Israel. The number of every tribe. Moses and Aaron took these men, who are mentioned by name. They assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their ancestry by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, one by one. As Yahweh commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. The children of Reuben, Israel's firstborn, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, one by one, every male from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Reuben, were forty-six thousand five hundred. Of the children of Simeon, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, those who were numbered of it according to the number of the names, one by one, every male from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Simeon, were fifty-nine thousand three hundred. Of the children of Gad, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Gad, were forty-five thousand six hundred fifty. Of the children of Judah, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Judah, were sixty-four thousand six hundred. Of the children of Issachar, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Issachar, were fifty-four thousand four hundred. Of the children of Zebulun, their generations, by their families, 
by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Zebulun, were fifty-seven thousand four hundred. Of the children of Joseph, of the children of Ephraim, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Ephraim, were forty thousand five hundred. Of the children of Manasseh, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Manasseh, were thirty-two thousand two hundred. Of the children of Benjamin, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Benjamin, were thirty-five thousand four hundred. Of the children of Dan, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Dan, were sixty-two thousand seven hundred. Of the children of Asher, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Asher, were forty-one thousand five hundred. Of the children of Naphtali, their generations, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war, those who were numbered of them, of the tribe of Naphtali, were fifty-three thousand four hundred. These are those who were numbered, whom Moses and Aaron numbered, and the princes of Israel, being twelve men. They were each one for his father's house. So all those who were numbered of the children of Israel by their father's houses, from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go out to war in Israel, even all those who were numbered, were six hundred three thousand five hundred fifty. Levites Exempted but the Levites, after the tribe of their fathers, were not numbered among them. For Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Only the tribe of Levi you shall not number, neither shall you take a census of them among the children of Israel. But appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, and over all its furnishings, and over all that belongs to it. They shall carry the tabernacle, and all its furnishings, and they shall take care of it, and shall encamp around it. When the tabernacle is to move, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall set it up. The stranger who comes near shall be put to death. The children of Israel shall pitch their tents, every man by his own camp, and every man by his own standard, according to their divisions. But the Levites shall encamp around the tabernacle of the testimony, 
that there may be no wrath on the congregation of the children of Israel. And the Levites shall be responsible for the tabernacle of the testimony. Thus the children of Israel did. According to all that Yahweh commanded Moses, so they did. Chapter 2 Order of the Camps Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, The children of Israel shall encamp every man by his own standard, with the banners of their fathers' houses. At a distance from the tent of meeting shall they encamp around it. Those who encamp on the east side toward the sunrise shall be of the standard of the camp of Judah, according to their divisions. And the prince of the children of Judah shall be Nashon, the son of Amenadab. His division, and those who were numbered of them, were seventy-four thousand six hundred. Those who encamp next to him shall be the tribe of Issachar. And the prince of the children of Issachar shall be Nethanel, the son of Zuar. His division, and those who were numbered of it, were fifty-four thousand four hundred. The tribe of Zebulun, and the prince of the children of Zebulun, shall be Eliab, the son of Helon. His division, and those who were numbered of it, were fifty-seven thousand four hundred. All who were numbered of the camp of Judah were one hundred eighty-six thousand four hundred according to their divisions. They shall set out first. On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben, according to their divisions. The prince of the children of Reuben shall be Elizer, the son of Shideur. His division and those who were numbered of it were 46,500. Those who encamp next to him shall be the tribe of Simeon. The prince of the children of Simeon shall be Shalumiel, the son of Zurishaddai. His division and those who were numbered of them were 59,300. The tribe of Gad and the prince of the children of Gad shall be Eliasaph the son of Ruel. His division and those who were numbered of them were 45,650. All who were numbered of the camp of Reuben were 151,450, according to their armies. They shall set out second. Then the tent of meeting shall set out with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camps. As they encamp, so shall they set out, every man in his place, by their standards. On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim, according to their divisions. And the prince of the children of Ephraim shall be Elishema, the son of Amihud, his division and those who were numbered of them were 40,500. Next to him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, and the prince of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamaliel, the son of Pedazer. His division and those who were numbered of them were 32,200. The tribe of Benjamin and the prince of the children of Benjamin shall be Abidon, the son of Gideoni. His army and those who were numbered of them were 35,400. All who were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were 108,100, according to their divisions. They shall set out third. On the north side shall be the standard of the camp of Dan, according to their divisions. And the prince of the children of Dan shall be Ahiezer, the son of Amishaddai. 
his division, and those who were numbered of them, were sixty-two thousand seven hundred. Those who encamp next to him shall be the tribe of Asher, and the prince of the children of Asher shall be Pagiel, the son of Akran. His division, and those who were numbered of them, were forty-one thousand and five hundred. The tribe of Naphtali, and the prince of the children of Naphtali, shall be Ahira, the son of Enan. His division, and those who were numbered of them, were fifty-three thousand four hundred. All who were numbered of the camp of Dan were one hundred fifty-seven thousand six hundred. They shall set out last by their standards. These are those who were numbered of the children of Israel by their fathers' houses. All who were numbered of the camps according to their armies were 603,550. But the Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel, as Yahweh commanded Moses. Thus the children of Israel did. According to all that Yahweh commanded Moses, so they encamped by their standards, and so they set out, every one by their families, according to their fathers' houses. Chapter 3 The Sons of Aaron Now this is the history of the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that Yahweh spoke with Moses in Mount Sinai. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests who were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. Nadab and Abihu died before Yahweh when they offered strange fire before Yahweh in the wilderness of Sinai and they had no children. Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the presence of Aaron their father. Duties of the Levites Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near, and set them before Aaron the priest, that they may minister to him. They shall keep his requirements, and the requirements of the whole congregation before the tent of meeting to do the service of the tabernacle. They shall keep all the furnishings of the tent of meeting and the obligations of the children of Israel to do the service of the tabernacle. You shall give the Levites to Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given to him on the behalf of the children of Israel. You shall appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall keep their priesthood. The stranger who comes near shall be put to death. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel, instead of all the firstborn who opened the womb among the children of Israel. And the Levites shall be mine, for all the firstborn are mine. On the day that I struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I made holy to me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and animal. They shall be mine. I am Yahweh. Registration of the Levites Yahweh spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Count the children of Levi by their fathers' houses, by their families. You shall count every male from a month old and upward. Moses numbered them according to the word of Yahweh, as he was commanded. These were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon, and Kohath, and Merari. These are the names of the sons of Gershon by their families. 
Libni, and Shimei, the sons of Kohath by their families, Amram, and Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel, the sons of Merari by their families, Malai, and Mushai. These are the families of the Levites, according to their fathers' houses. The Gershonites Of Gershon was the family of the Libnites, and the family of the Shimeites. These are the families of the Gershonites. Those who were numbered of them, according to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, even those who were numbered of them, were seven thousand five hundred. The families of the Gershonites shall encamp behind the tabernacle westward. The prince of the father's house of the Gershonites shall be Eliasaph, the son of Lael. The duty of the sons of Gershon in the tent of meeting shall be the tabernacle and the tent, its covering, and the screen for the door of the tent of meeting, and the hangings of the court, and the screen for the door of the court, which is by the tabernacle, and around the altar, and its cords for all of its service. The Kohathites of Kohath was the family of the Amramites, and the family of the Isharites, and the family of the Hebronites, and the family of the Uzielites. These are the families of the Kohathites. According to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, there were 8,600, keeping the requirements of the sanctuary. The families of the sons of Kohath shall encamp on the south side of the tabernacle. The prince of the father's house of the families of the Kohathites shall be Elizaphan, the son of Uziel. Their duty shall be the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars, the vessels of the sanctuary with which they minister, and the screen, and all its service. Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, shall be prince of the princes of the Levites, with the oversight of those who keep the requirements of the sanctuary. The Merarites Of Merari was the family of the Malites, and the family of the Mushites. These are the families of Merari. Those who were numbered of them according to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, were six thousand two hundred. The prince of the father's house of the families of Merari was Zuriel, the son of Abihel. They shall encamp on the north side of the tabernacle. The appointed duty of the sons of Merari shall be the tabernacle's boards, its bars, its pillars, its sockets, all its instruments, all its service, the pillars of the court around it, their sockets, their pins, and their cords. Moses and Aaron Those who encamp before the tabernacle eastward, in front of the tent of meeting toward the sunrise, shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons keeping the requirements of the sanctuary for the duty of the children of Israel. The stranger who comes near shall be put to death. All who were numbered of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of Yahweh, by their families, all the males from a month old and upward, were twenty-two thousand. Firstborn Sons Redeemed Yahweh said to Moses, Number all the firstborn males of the children of Israel from a month old and upward, and take the number of their names. You shall take the Levites for me. I am Yahweh, instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel. 
and the livestock of the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the livestock of the children of Israel. Moses numbered, as Yahweh commanded him, all the firstborn among the children of Israel, all the firstborn males according to the number of names, from a month old and upward, of those who were numbered of them, were twenty-two thousand two hundred seventy-three. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the livestock of the Levites instead of their livestock, and the Levites shall be mine. I am Yahweh. For the redemption of the two hundred seventy-three of the firstborn of the children of Israel, who exceed the number of the Levites, you shall take five shekels apiece for each one. After the shekel of the sanctuary, you shall take them. The shekel is twenty geras. And you shall give the money with which the remainder of them is redeemed to Aaron and to his sons. Moses took the redemption money from those who exceeded the number of those who were redeemed by the Levites. From the firstborn of the children of Israel, he took the money, 1,365 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. And Moses gave the redemption money to Aaron and to his sons, according to the word of Yahweh, as Yahweh commanded Moses. Chapter 4 Duties of the Kohathites Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, Take a census of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi, by their families, by their fathers' houses, from thirty years old and upward, even until fifty years old, all who enter into the service to do the work in the tent of meeting. This is the service of the sons of Kohath in the tent of meeting, the most holy things. When the camp moves forward, Aaron shall go in and his sons, and they shall take down the veil of the screen and cover the ark of the testimony with it and shall put a covering of sealskin on it, and shall spread over it a cloth all of blue, and shall put in its poles. On the table of showbread they shall spread a blue cloth, and put on it the dishes, the spoons, the bowls, and the cups with which to pour out, and the continual bread shall be on it, they shall spread on them a scarlet cloth, and cover the same with a covering of sealskin, and shall put in its poles. They shall take a blue cloth, and cover the lampstand of the light, and its lamps, and its snuffers, and its snuff dishes, and all its oil vessels, with which they minister to it. They shall put it and all its vessels within a covering of sealskin, and shall put it on the frame. On the golden altar they shall spread a blue cloth, and cover it with a covering of sealskin, and shall put in its poles. They shall take all the vessels of ministry with which they minister in the sanctuary, and put them in a blue cloth, and cover them with a covering of sealskin, and shall put them on the frame. They shall take away the ashes from the altar, and spread a purple cloth on it. They shall put on it all its vessels, with which they minister about it, the firepans, the flesh hooks, the shovels, and the basins, all the vessels of the altar, and they shall spread on it a covering of sealskin, and put in its poles. 
when Aaron and his sons have finished covering the sanctuary and all the furniture of the sanctuary as the camp moves forward, after that the sons of Kohath shall come to carry it. But they shall not touch the sanctuary, lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath in the tent of meeting. The duty of Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest shall be the oil for the light, the sweet incense, the continual meal offering, and the anointing oil, the requirements of all the tabernacle, and of all that is in it, the sanctuary and its furnishings. Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, Don't cut off the tribe of the families of the Kohathites from among the Levites, but thus do to them, that they may live and not die, when they approach to the most holy things. Aaron and his sons shall go in, and appoint them every one to his service and to his burden. But they shall not go in to see the sanctuary, even for a moment, lest they die. Duties of the Gershonites Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Take a census of the sons of Gershon also, by their fathers' houses, by their families. You shall count them from thirty years old and upward, until fifty years old. All who enter in to wait on the service, to do the work in the tent of meeting. This is the service of the families of the Gershonites, in serving and in bearing burdens. They shall carry the curtains of the tabernacle, and the tent of meeting, its covering, and the covering of sealskin that is above on it, and the screen for the door of the tent of meeting, and the hangings of the court, and the screen for the door of the gate of the court, which is by the tabernacle and around the altar, and their cords, and all the instruments of their service, and whatever shall be done with them, therein shall they serve. At the commandment of Aaron and his sons shall be all the service of the sons of the Gershonites, in all their burden, and in all their service. And you shall appoint their duty to them in all their responsibilities. This is the service of the families of the sons of the Gershonites in the tent of meeting. And their duty shall be under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. Duties of the Merarites As for the sons of Merari, you shall number them by their families, by their fathers' houses. You shall count them from thirty years old and upward, even to fifty years old. Everyone who enters on the service to do the work of the tent of meeting, this is the duty of their burden according to all their service in the tent of meeting. The tabernacle's boards, its bars, its pillars, its sockets, and the pillars of the court around it, and their sockets, and their pins, and their cords, with all their instruments, and with all their service. And by name you shall appoint the instruments of the duty of their burden. This is the service of the families of the sons of Merari, according to all their service, in the tent of meeting, under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. The Number of the Kohathites Moses and Aaron and the princes of the congregation numbered the sons of the Kohathites by their families and by their fathers' houses from thirty years old and upward, even to fifty years old, everyone who entered into the service for work in the tent of meeting. Those who were numbered of them by their families 
were 2,750. These are those who were numbered of the families of the Kohathites, all who served in the tent of meeting, whom Moses and Aaron numbered, according to the commandment of Yahweh by Moses. The Number of the Gershonites Those who were numbered of the sons of Gershon, their families, and by their father's houses, from thirty years old and upward, even to fifty years old, everyone who entered into the service for work in the tent of meeting, even those who were numbered of them by their families, by their father's houses, were 2,630. These are those who were numbered of the families of the sons of Gershon, all who served in the tent of meeting, whom Moses and Aaron numbered according to the commandment of Yahweh. The Number of the Merarites those who were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari by their families, by their fathers' houses, from thirty years old and upward, even to fifty years old, everyone who entered into the service for work in the tent of meeting, even those who were numbered of them by their families, were three thousand two hundred. These are those who were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari whom Moses and Aaron numbered, according to the commandment of Yahweh by Moses. All those who were numbered of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron and the princes of Israel numbered, by their families and by their fathers' houses, from thirty years old and upward, even to fifty years old, everyone who entered in to do the work of service and the work of bearing burdens in the tent of meeting, even those who were numbered of them, were 8,580. According to the commandment of Yahweh, they were numbered by Moses, everyone according to his service and according to his burden. Thus were they numbered by him, as Yahweh commanded Moses. Chapter 5 Cleansing the Camps Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they put out of the camp every leper and everyone who has an issue and whoever is unclean by the dead. Both you shall put male and female outside of the camp that they not defile their camp in the midst of which I dwell. The children of Israel did so, and put them out outside of the camp. As Yahweh spoke to Moses, so did the children of Israel. Restitution for Trespasses Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, when a man or woman commits any sin that men commit so as to trespass against Yahweh and that soul is guilty then he shall confess his sin which he has done and he shall make restitution for his guilt in full and add to it the fifth part of it and give it to him in respect of whom he has been guilty but if the man has no kinsman to whom restitution may be made for the guilt, the restitution for guilt which is made to Yahweh shall be the priests, besides the ram of the atonement, by which atonement shall be made for him. Every heave offering of all the holy things of the children of Israel, which they present to the priest, shall be his. Every man's holy things shall be his. Whatever any man gives the priest, it shall be his. The Adultery Test Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them, If any man's wife goes astray and is unfaithful to him, 
and a man lies with her carnally, and it is hidden from the eyes of her husband, and is kept close, and she is defiled, and there is no witness against her, and she isn't taken in the act, and the spirit of jealousy comes on him, and he is jealous of his wife, and she is defiled. Or, if the spirit of jealousy comes on him, and he is jealous of his wife, and she isn't defiled, then the man shall bring his wife to the priest, and shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil on it, nor put frankincense on it, for it is a meal offering of jealousy, a meal offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to memory. The priest shall bring her near and set her before Yahweh, and the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and of the dust that is on the floor of the tabernacle the priest shall take and put it into the water, the priest shall set the woman before Yahweh, and let the hair of the woman's head go loose, and put the meal offering of memorial in her hands, which is the meal offering of jealousy. The priest shall have in his hand the water of bitterness that brings a curse. The priest shall cause her to swear, and shall tell the woman, if no man has lain with you, and if you haven't gone aside to uncleanness, being under your husband, be free from this water of bitterness that brings a curse. But if you have gone astray, being under your husband, and if you are defiled, and some man has lain with you besides your husband, then the priest shall cause the woman to swear with the oath of cursing, and the priest shall tell the woman, Yahweh make you a curse and an oath among your people. When Yahweh allows your thigh to fall away and your body to swell, and this water that brings a curse will go into your bowels and make your body swell and your thigh fall away. The woman shall say, Amen, Amen. The priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall blot them out into the water of bitterness. He shall make the woman drink the water of bitterness that causes the curse, and the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. The priest shall take the meal offering of jealousy out of the woman's hand, and shall wave the meal offering before Yahweh, and bring it to the altar. The priest shall take a handful of the meal offering as its memorial, and burn it on the altar, and afterward shall make the woman drink the water. When he has made her drink the water, then it shall happen. If she is defiled and has committed a trespass against her husband, that the water that causes the curse will enter into her and become bitter, and her body will swell, and her thigh will fall away, and the woman will be a curse among her people. If the woman isn't defiled but is clean, then she shall be free, and shall conceive seed. This is the law of jealousy, when a wife, being under her husband, goes astray and is defiled, or when the spirit of jealousy comes on a man, and he is jealous of his wife, then he shall set the woman before Yahweh, and the priest shall execute on her all this law, the man shall be free from iniquity, and that woman shall bear her iniquity. Chapter 6 
the Nazarite vow. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them, When either man or woman shall make a special vow, the vow of a Nazarite, to separate himself to Yahweh, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. He shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of fermented drink. Neither shall he drink any juice of grapes, nor eat fresh grapes or dried. All the days of his separation he shall eat nothing that is made of the grapevine, from the seeds even to the skins. All the days of his vow of separation, no razor shall come on his head, until the days are fulfilled, in which he separates himself to Yahweh. He shall be holy. He shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow long. All the days that he separates himself to Yahweh, he shall not go near a dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father, or for his mother, for his brother, or for his sister, when they die, because his separation to God is on his head. All the days of his separation he is holy to Yahweh. If any man dies very suddenly beside him, and he defiles the head of his separation. Then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day he shall shave it. On the eighth day he shall bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons to the priest, to the door of the tent of meeting. The priest shall offer one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, and make atonement for him, because he sinned by reason of the dead, and shall make his head holy that same day. He shall separate to Yahweh the days of his separation, and shall bring a male lamb a year old for a trespass offering. But the former days shall be void, because his separation was defiled. This is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought to the door of the tent of meeting, and he shall offer his offering to Yahweh. One male lamb, a year old, without blemish, for a burnt offering, and one ewe lamb, a year old, without blemish, for a sin offering, and one ram, without blemish, for peace offerings, and a basket of unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and their meal offering, and their drink offerings. The priest shall present them before Yahweh, and shall offer his sin offering, and his burnt offering. He shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings to Yahweh, with the basket of unleavened bread. The priest shall offer also its meal offering, and its drink offering. The Nazarite shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tent of meeting and shall take the hair of the head of his separation, and put it on the fire, which is under the sacrifice of peace offerings. The priest shall take the boiled shoulder of the ram, and one unleavened cake out of the basket, and one unleavened wafer, and shall put them on the hands of the Nazarite, after he has shaved the head of his separation and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before Yahweh. This is holy for the priest, 
together with the breast that is waved and the thigh that is offered. After that, the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite who vows and of his offering to Yahweh for his separation, besides that which he is able to get. According to his vow which he vows, so he must do after the law of his separation. Aaron's Blessing Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons, saying, This is how you shall bless the children of Israel. You shall tell them, Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his face toward you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Chapter 7 Offerings of Dedication It happened on the day that Moses had finished setting up the tabernacle and had anointed it and sanctified it with all its furniture and the altar with all its vessels and had anointed and sanctified them, that the princes of Israel, the heads of their fathers' houses, offered. These were the princes of the tribes. These are they who were over those who were numbered, and they brought their offering before Yahweh, six covered wagons and twelve oxen, a wagon for every two of the princes, and for each one an ox and they presented them before the tabernacle. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Accept these from them, that they may be used in doing the service of the tent of meeting, and you shall give them to the Levites, to every man according to his service. Moses took the wagons and the oxen and gave them to the Levites. He gave two wagons and four oxen to the sons of Gershon, according to their service. And he gave four wagons and eight oxen to the sons of Merari, according to their service, under the direction of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. But to the sons of Kohath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonged to them. They carried it on their shoulders. The princes gave offerings for the dedication of the altar in the day that it was anointed. Even the princes gave their offerings before the altar. Yahweh said to Moses, They shall offer their offering, each prince on his day, for the dedication of the altar. He who offered his offering the first day was Nashon, the son of Amenadab, of the tribe of Judah and his offering was one silver platter, the weight of which was one hundred thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of ten shekels, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old, for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Nashon, the son of Amenadab. On the second day, Nethanel, the son of Zuar, prince of Issachar, gave his offering. He offered for his offering one silver platter, the weight of which was one hundred thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of ten shekels, full of incense, 
one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Nethanel, the son of Zuar. On the third day, Eliab, the son of Helon, prince of the children of Zebulon, gave his offering. One silver platter, the weight of which was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of ten shekels, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Eliab, the son of Helon. On the fourth day, Elizer, the son of Shedeur, prince of the children of Reuben, gave his offering. One silver platter, the weight of which was one hundred thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of ten shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Eliezer, the son of Shedeur. On the fifth day, Shalumiel, the son of Zurishaddai, prince of the children of Simeon, gave his offering. One silver platter, the weight of which was one hundred thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of ten shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Shalumiel, the son of Zerishaddai. On the sixth day, Eliasaph, the son of Duel, prince of the children of Gad, gave his offering. One silver platter, the weight of which was one hundred thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of ten shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Eliasaph, the son of Duel. On the seventh day, Elishama, the son of Amihud, prince of the children of Ephraim, gave his offering. One silver platter, the weight of which was one hundred thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of ten shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, 
one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Elishema, the son of Amihud. On the eighth day, Gamaliel, the son of Padazer, prince of the children of Manasseh, gave his offering, one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Gamaliel, the son of Padazer. On the ninth day, Abidon, the son of Gideoni, prince of the children of Benjamin, gave his offering. One silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of ten shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Abidon, the son of Gideoni. On the tenth day, Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai, prince of the children of Dan, gave his offering, one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of ten shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai. On the eleventh day, Pagiel, the son of Akran, prince of the children of Asher, gave his offering, one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden ladle of ten shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Pagiel, the son of Akran. On the twelfth day, Ahira, the son of Enon, prince of the children of Naphtali, gave his offering. One silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a meal offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, 
one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two head of cattle, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Ahira, the son of Enon. This was the dedication of the altar on the day when it was anointed by the princes of Israel. Twelve silver platters, twelve silver bowls, twelve golden ladles, each silver platter weighing 130 shekels, and each bowl 70. All the silver of the vessels, 2,400 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. The twelve golden ladles, full of incense, weighing 10 shekels apiece after the shekel of the sanctuary. All the gold of the ladles weighed 120 shekels. All the cattle for the burnt offering, 12 bulls, the rams, 12, the male lambs a year old, 12, and their meal offering, and the male goats for a sin offering, 12. And all the cattle for the sacrifice of peace offerings, 24 bulls, the rams, sixty, the male goats, sixty, the male lambs a year old, sixty. This was the dedication of the altar, after it was anointed. When Moses went into the tent of meeting to speak with Yahweh, he heard his voice speaking to him from above the mercy seat that was on the ark of the testimony, from between the two cherubim, and he spoke to him. End of section 12. Chapter 8 The Seven Lamps Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and tell him, when you light the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light in front of the lampstand. Aaron did so. He lit its lamps to light the area in front of the lampstand, as Yahweh commanded Moses. This was the workmanship of the lampstand, beaten work of gold. From its base to its flowers, it was beaten work according to the pattern which Yahweh had shown Moses, so he made the lampstand. Cleansing the Levites Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Take the Levites from among the children of Israel and cleanse them. You shall do this to them, to cleanse them. Sprinkle the water of cleansing on them, let them shave their whole bodies with a razor, and let them wash their clothes and cleanse themselves. Then let them take a young bull and its meal offering, fine flour mixed with oil, and another young bull you shall take for a sin offering. You shall present the Levites before the tent of meeting, you shall assemble the whole congregation of the children of Israel. You shall present the Levites before Yahweh. The children of Israel shall lay their hands on the Levites, and Aaron shall offer the Levites before Yahweh for a wave offering on the behalf of the children of Israel, that it may be theirs to do the service of Yahweh. The Levites shall lay their hands on the heads of the bulls, and you shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering to Yahweh, to make atonement for the Levites. You shall set the Levites before Aaron and before his sons, and offer them as a wave offering to Yahweh. Thus you shall separate the Levites from among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. After that, 
the Levites shall go in to do the service of the tent of meeting, and you shall cleanse them, and offer them as a wave offering. For they are wholly given to me from among the children of Israel, instead of all who open the womb, even the firstborn of all the children of Israel. I have taken them to me. For all the firstborn among the children of Israel are mine, both man and animal. On the day that I struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. I have taken the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel. I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the children of Israel to do the service of the children of Israel in the tent of meeting and to make atonement for the children of Israel that there be no plague among the children of Israel, when the children of Israel come near to the sanctuary. Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel did so to the Levites, according to all that Yahweh commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so the children of Israel did to them. The Levites purified themselves from sin, and they washed their clothes. And Aaron offered them for a wave offering before Yahweh. And Aaron made atonement for them to cleanse them. After that, the Levites went in to do their service in the tent of meeting before Aaron and before his sons. As Yahweh had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so they did to them. Retirement for Levites Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, This is that which belongs to the Levites. From twenty-five years old and upward, they shall go in to wait on the service in the work of the tent of meeting. And from the age of fifty years, they shall cease waiting on the work, and shall serve no more but shall minister with their brothers in the tent of meeting to perform the duty, and shall do no service. You shall do thus to the Levites concerning their duties. Chapter 9 The Second Passover Yahweh spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the first month of the second year, after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Moreover, let the children of Israel keep the Passover in its appointed season. On the fourteenth day of this month, at evening, you shall keep it in its appointed season, according to all its statutes, and according to all its ordinances, you shall keep it. Moses spoke to the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. They kept the Passover in the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, in the wilderness of Sinai. According to all that Yahweh commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did. There were certain men who were unclean because of the dead body of a man, so that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. Those men said to him, We are unclean because of the dead body of a man. Why are we kept back that we may not offer the offering of Yahweh in its appointed season among the children of Israel? Moses answered them, Wait, that I may hear what Yahweh will command concerning you. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Say to the children of Israel, If any man of you or of your generations is unclean by reason of a dead body, or is on a journey far away, he shall still keep the Passover to Yahweh. In the second month, on the fourteenth day at evening, they shall keep it. 
They shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until the morning, nor break a bone of it. According to all the statute of the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man who is clean and is not on a journey and fails to keep the Passover, that soul shall be cut off from his people because he didn't offer the offering of Yahweh in its appointed season. That man shall bear his sin. If a foreigner lives among you and desires to keep the Passover to Yahweh, according to the statute of the Passover and according to its ordinance, so shall he do. You shall have one statute, both for the foreigner and for him who is born in the land. The Cloud Above the Tabernacle On the day that the tabernacle was raised up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, even the tent of the testimony. And at evening it was over the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire until morning. So it was continually. The cloud covered it, and the appearance of fire by night. Whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tent, then after that the children of Israel traveled. And in the place where the cloud remained, there the children of Israel encamped. At the commandment of Yahweh, the children of Israel traveled, and at the commandment of Yahweh, they encamped. As long as the cloud remained on the tabernacle, they remained encamped. When the cloud stayed on the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel kept Yahweh's command and didn't travel. Sometimes the cloud was a few days on the tabernacle. Then, according to the commandment of Yahweh, they remained encamped. And, according to the commandment of Yahweh, they traveled. Sometimes the cloud was from evening until morning. And when the cloud was taken up in the morning, they traveled. Or by day and by night, when the cloud was taken up, they traveled. Whether it was two days, or a month, or a year, that the cloud stayed on the tabernacle, remaining on it, the children of Israel remained encamped and didn't travel. But when it was taken up, they traveled. At the commandment of Yahweh they encamped, and at the commandment of Yahweh they traveled. They kept Yahweh's command at the commandment of Yahweh by Moses. Chapter 10 the two silver trumpets. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Make two trumpets of silver. You shall make them of beaten work. You shall use them for the calling of the congregation and for the journeying of the camps. When they blow them, all the congregation shall gather themselves to you at the door of the tent of meeting. If they blow just one, then the princes, the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves to you. When you blow an alarm, the camps that lie on the east side shall go forward. When you blow an alarm the second time, the camps that lie on the south side shall go forward. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the assembly is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. The sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets. This shall be to you for a statute forever throughout your generations. When you go to war in your land against the adversary who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets. Then you will be remembered before Yahweh your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your set feasts, and in the beginnings of your months, 
you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings, and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, and they shall be to you for a memorial before your God. I am Yahweh your God. Moving from Sinai to Paran. It happened in the second year, in the second month, on the twentieth day of the month, that the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle of the testimony. The children of Israel went forward according to their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai, and the cloud stayed in the wilderness of Paran. They first went forward according to the commandments of Yahweh by Moses. First, the standard of the camp of the children of Judah went forward, according to their armies. Nashon, the son of Amenadab, was over his army. Nethanel, the son of Zuar, was over the army of the tribe of the children of Issachar. Eliab, the son of Helon, was over the army of the tribe of the children of Zebulon. The tabernacle was taken down and the sons of Gershon and the sons of Merari, who bore the tabernacle, went forward. The standard of the camp of Reuben went forward according to their armies. Elizer, the son of Shedeur, was over his army. Shalumiel, the son of Zerishaddai, was over the army of the tribe of the children of Simeon. Eliasaph, the son of Duel, was over the army of the tribe of the children of Gad. The Kohathites set forward, bearing the sanctuary. The others set up the tabernacle before they arrived. The standard of the camp of the children of Ephraim set forward according to their armies. Elishema, the son of Amihud, was over his army. Gamaliel, the son of Pedazer, was over the army of the tribe of the children of Manasseh. Abidon, the son of Gideoni, was over the army of the tribe of the children of Benjamin. The standard of the camp of the children of Dan, which was the rear guard of all the camps, set forward according to their armies. Ahiezer, the son of Amishaddai, was over his army. Pagiel, the son of Akran, was over the army of the tribe of the children of Asher. Ahira, the son of Enon was over the army of the tribe of the children of Naphtali. Thus were the travels of the children of Israel, according to their armies, and they went forward. Moses said to Hobab, the son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We are journeying to the place of which Yahweh said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well. For Yahweh has spoken good concerning Israel. He said to him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my relatives. He said, Don't leave us, please, because you know how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and you can be our eyes. It shall be, if you go with us, yes, it shall be that whatever good Yahweh does to us, we will do the same to you. They set forward from the Mount of Yahweh three days' journey. The Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh went before them three days' journey to seek out a resting place for them. The cloud of Yahweh was over them by day when they set forward from the camp. It happened when the Ark went forward that Moses said, Rise up, Yahweh, and let your enemies be scattered. Let those who hate you flee before you. When it rested, he said, Return, Yahweh, to the ten thousands of the thousands of Israel. Chapter 11 The People Complain The people were complaining in the ears of Yahweh. When Yahweh heard it, his anger was kindled and Yahweh's fire burnt among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. The people cried to Moses, and Moses prayed to Yahweh, and the fire abated. 
The name of that place was called Tabera, because Yahweh's fire burnt among them. The mixed multitude that was among them lusted exceedingly, and the children of Israel also wept again, and said, Who will give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we ate in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. There is nothing at all except this manna to look at. The manna was like coriander seed, and its appearance like the appearance of delium. The people went around, gathered it, and ground it in meals, or beat it in mortars, and boiled it in pots, and made cakes of it. Its taste was like the taste of fresh oil. When the dew fell on the camp in the night, the manna fell on it. The Complaint of Moses Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, every man at the door of his tent, and the anger of Yahweh was kindled greatly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to Yahweh, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why haven't I found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I brought them forth, that you should tell me, Carry them in your bosom, as a nurse carries a nursing infant, to the land which you swore to their fathers? Where could I get meat to give to all this people? For they weep to me, saying, Give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. If you treat me this way, please kill me right now, if I have found favor in your sight, and don't let me see my wretchedness. Seventy Elders to Help Moses Yahweh said to Moses, Gather to me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with you. I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit which is on you, and will put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you not bear it yourself alone. The people receive meat for a month. Say to the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and you will eat flesh. For you have wept in the ears of Yahweh, saying, Who will give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore Yahweh will give you flesh, and you will eat. You will not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but a whole month, until it come out at your nostrils, and it is loathsome to you, because that you have rejected Yahweh who is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why did we come out of Egypt? Moses' faith staggered. Moses said, The people among whom I am are six hundred thousand men on foot, and you have said, I will give them flesh, that they may eat a whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them, to be sufficient for them? Shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them, to be sufficient for them? Yahweh said to Moses, Has Yahweh's hand grown short? Now you will see whether my word will happen to you or not. Moses went out and told the people the words of Yahweh, and he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people and set them around the tent. Yahweh came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And it happened that when the Spirit rested on them, 
They prophesied, but they did so no more. But two men remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the Spirit rested on them. And they were of those who were written, but had not gone out to the tent. And they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his chosen men, answered, My lord, Moses, forbid them. Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all Yahweh's people were prophets, that Yahweh would put his spirit on them. Moses went into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. The Quail and the Plague A wind from Yahweh went out and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp about a day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side around the camp and about two cubits above the surface of the earth. The people rose up all that day and all the night and all the next day and gathered the quail. He who gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves around the camp. While the flesh was yet between their teeth, before it was chewed, the anger of Yahweh was kindled against the people, and Yahweh struck the people with a very great plague. The name of that place was called Kibroth Hadava, because there they buried the people who lusted. From Kibroth Hadava, the people traveled to Hazaroth, and they stayed at Hazaroth. Chapter 12 The Murmuring of Miriam and Aaron Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. They said, has Yahweh indeed spoken only with Moses? Hasn't he spoken also with us? And Yahweh heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, above all the men who were on the surface of the earth. Yahweh spoke suddenly to Moses, to Aaron, and to Miriam. You three come out to the tent of meeting. The three of them came out. Yahweh came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the door of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. He said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known to him in a vision. I will speak with him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. He is faithful in all my house. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even plainly and not in riddles. And he shall see Yahweh's form. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? The anger of Yahweh was kindled against them and he departed. The cloud departed from over the tent, and behold, Miriam was leprous, as white as snow. Aaron looked at Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Aaron said to Moses, O oh my Lord, please don't count this sin against us, in which we have done foolishly, and in which we have sinned. Let her not, I pray, be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. Moses cried to Yahweh, saying, Heal her, God, I beg you. Yahweh said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, shouldn't she be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut up outside of the camp seven days. And after that, she shall be brought in again. Miriam was shut up outside of the camp seven days, 
and the people didn't travel until Miriam was brought in again. Afterward, the people traveled from Hazaroth and encamped in the wilderness of Paran. Chapter 13 Spies Sent to Canaan Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Send men, that they may spy out the land of Canaan, which I give to the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a prince among them. Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the commandment of Yahweh, all of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. These were their names. Of the tribe of Reuben, Shemua, the son of Zachur. Of the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat the son of Horai, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, of the tribe of Issachar, Igal, the son of Joseph, of the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun, of the tribe of Benjamin, Paltai, the son of Raphu, of the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodai, of the tribe of Joseph, namely, of the tribe of Manasseh, Gadai, the son of Susai, of the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gemali, of the tribe of Asher, Situr, the son of Michael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Nabai, the son of Vophsai, of the tribe of Gad, Guil, the son of Machai. These are the names of the men who Moses sent to spy out the land. Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. Instructions to the Spies Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said to them, Go up this way by the south, and go up into the hill country, and see the land, what it is, and the people who dwell therein, whether they are strong or weak, whether they are few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it is good or bad, and what cities they are that they dwell in, whether in camps or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it is fat or lean, whether there is wood therein or not. Be courageous and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. The spies explore Canaan. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zen to Rehob, to the entrance of Hamath, they went up by the south, and came to Hebron. And Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. They came to the valley of Eshkol, and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bore it on a staff between two. They brought also of the pomegranates and of the figs. That place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the children of Israel cut down from there. The Reports of the Spies They returned from spying out the land at the end of forty days. They went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, to the wilderness of Paran, to Kedesh, and brought back word to them, and to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. They told him, and said, We came to the land where you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified, and very great, 
and moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Amalek dwells in the land of the south, and the Hittite, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite dwell in the hill country. And the Canaanite dwells by the sea, and along by the side of the Jordan. Caleb stilled the people before Moses, and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who went up with him said, We aren't able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. They brought up an evil report of the land, which they had spied out to the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that eats up its inhabitants, and all the people who we saw in it are men of great statue. There we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come of the Nephilim. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Chapter 14 The People Rebel All the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. All the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness! Why does Yahweh bring us to this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will be a prey. Wouldn't it be better for us to return into Egypt? They said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were of those who spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to spy it out is an exceeding good land. If Yahweh delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only don't rebel against Yahweh, neither fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is removed from over them, and Yahweh is with us. Don't fear them. But all the congregation threatened to stone them with stones. The glory of Yahweh appeared in the tent of meeting to all the children of Israel. Yahweh said to Moses, how long will this people despise me? And how long will they not believe in me for all the signs which I have worked among them? I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. Moses intercedes for the people. Moses said to Yahweh, Then the Egyptians will hear it, for you brought up this people in your might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, Yahweh, are in the midst of this people. For you, Yahweh, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands over them, and you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you killed this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of you will speak, saying, Because Yahweh was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore to them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. Now, please, let the power of the Lord be great, according as you have spoken, saying, Yahweh is slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness, forgiving iniquity and disobedience, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and on the fourth generation. Please pardon the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of your loving kindness, 
and according as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. God's Forgiveness and Judgment Yahweh said, I have pardoned according to your word, but in very deed, as I live, and as all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahweh, because all those men who have seen my glory and my signs, which I worked in Egypt and in the wilderness, yet have tempted me these ten times, and have not listened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers, neither shall any of those who despised me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land, into which he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekite and the Canaanite dwell in the valley. Tomorrow turn and go into the wilderness by the way to the Red Sea. Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation that murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Tell them, As I live, says Yahweh, surely as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your dead bodies shall fall in this wilderness, and all who were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, who have murmured against me. Surely you shall not come into the land, concerning which I swore that I would make you dwell therein, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, that you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have rejected. But as for you, your dead bodies shall fall in this wilderness. Your children shall be wanderers in the wilderness forty years, and shall bear your prostitution, until your dead bodies be consumed in the wilderness, after the number of the days in which you spied out the land, even forty days. For every day, a year, you will bear your iniquities, even forty years, and you will know my alienation. I, Yahweh, have spoken. Surely this will I do to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. THE PLAGUE ON THE TEN SPIES The men whom Moses sent to spy out the land, who returned, and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up an evil report against the land, even those men who did bring up an evil report of the land, died by the plague before Yahweh. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, remained alive of those men who went to spy out the land. Moses told these words to all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. Defeat by Amalekites and Canaanites They rose up early in the morning and went up to the top of the mountain, saying, Behold, we are here and will go up to the place which Yahweh has promised, for we have sinned. Moses said, Why now do you disobey the commandment of Yahweh, since it shall not prosper? Don't go up, for Yahweh isn't among you, that you not be struck down before your enemies. For there the Amalekite and the Canaanite are before you, 
and you shall fall by the sword, because you are turned back from following Yahweh. Therefore Yahweh will not be with you. But they presumed to go up to the top of the mountain. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh and Moses didn't depart out of the camp. Then the Amalekite came down, and the Canaanite who lived in that mountain, and struck them, and beat them down, even to Hormah. Chapter 15 Laws About Sacrifices Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them, when you have come into the land of your habitations, which I give to you, and will make an offering by fire to Yahweh, a burnt offering or a sacrifice, to accomplish a vow, or as a free will offering, or in your set feasts, to make a pleasant aroma to Yahweh, of the herd or of the flock, then he who offers his offering shall offer to Yahweh a meal offering of a tenth part of an ephah of fine flour mixed with the fourth part of a hen of oil and wine for the drink offering. The fourth part of a hen you shall prepare with the burnt offering or for the sacrifice for each lamb or for a ram, you shall prepare for a meal offering two tenth parts of an ephah of fine flour mixed with the third part of a hen of oil. And for the drink offering, you shall offer the third part of a hen of wine of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. When you prepare a bull for a burnt offering, or for a sacrifice, to accomplish a vow, or for peace offerings to Yahweh. Then shall he offer with the bull a meal offering of three-tenth parts of an ephah of fine flour, mixed with half a hen of oil. And you shall offer for the drink offering half a hen of wine, for an offering made by fire of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. Thus shall it be done for each bull, or for each ram, or for each of the male lambs, or of the young goats, according to the number that you shall prepare, so you shall do to everyone according to their number. All who are native born shall do these things in this way, in offering an offering made by fire of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. If a stranger lives as a foreigner with you, or whoever may be among you throughout your generations, and will offer an offering made by fire of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh, as you do, so he shall do. For the assembly there shall be one statute for you and for the stranger who lives as a foreigner with you, a statute forever throughout your generations. As you are, so shall the foreigner be before Yahweh. One law and one ordinance shall be for you and for the stranger who lives as a foreigner with you. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them, When you come into the land where I bring you, then it shall be that when you eat of the bread of the land, you shall offer up a wave offering to Yahweh. Of the first of your dough you shall offer up a cake for a wave offering, as the wave offering of the threshing floor so you shall heave it. Of the first of your dough, you shall give to Yahweh a wave offering throughout your generations. 
offerings for unintentional sins. When you shall err, and not observe all these commandments which Yahweh has spoken to Moses, even all that Yahweh has commanded you by Moses, from the day that Yahweh gave commandment, and onward throughout your generations, then it shall be, if it be done unwittingly, without the knowledge of the congregation, that all the congregation shall offer one young bull for a burnt offering, for a pleasant aroma to Yahweh, with the meal offering of it, and the drink offering of it, according to the ordinance, and one male goat for a sin offering. The priest shall make atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel, and they shall be forgiven, for it was an error, and they have brought their offering, an offering made by fire to Yahweh, and their sin offering before Yahweh for their error, and all the congregation of the children of Israel shall be forgiven and the stranger who lives as a foreigner among them. For in respect of all the people, it was done unwittingly. If one person sins unwittingly, then he shall offer a female goat, a year old, for a sin offering. The priest shall make atonement for the soul who errs, when he sins unwittingly, before Yahweh, to make atonement for him, and he shall be forgiven. You shall have one law for him who does anything unwittingly, for him who is native-born among the children of Israel, and for the stranger who lives as a foreigner among them. But the soul who does anything with a high hand, whether he is native-born or a foreigner, the same blasphemes Yahweh, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he has despised the word of Yahweh, and has broken his commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off, his iniquity shall be on him. A Sabbath Breaker Stoned while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. Those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. They put him in custody because it had not been declared what should be done to him. Yahweh said to Moses, The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside of the camp. All the congregation brought him outside of the camp and stoned him to death with stones, as Yahweh commanded Moses. The Law of Tassels Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and tell them that they should make themselves fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put on the fringe of each border a cord of blue. And it shall be to you for a fringe, that you may look on it, and remember all the commandments of Yahweh, and do them and that you not follow after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you used to play the prostitute, that you may remember and do all my commandments, and be holy to your God. I am Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, to be your God. I am Yahweh your God. Chapter 16 Korah's Rebellion Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, 
the son of Levi, with Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses, with certain of the children of Israel, two hundred fifty princes of the congregation, called to the assembly, men of renown, and they assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said to them, You take too much on yourself, since all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and Yahweh is among them. Why then lift yourselves up above the assembly of Yahweh? When Moses heard it, he fell on his face, and he spoke to Korah and to all his company, saying, In the morning, Yahweh will show who are his, and who is holy, and will cause him to come near to him. Even him whom he shall choose, he will cause to come near to him. Do this, take censers, Korah and all his company, and put fire in them, and put incense on them before Yahweh tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom Yahweh chooses, he shall be holy. You have gone too far, you sons of Levi, Moses said to Korah. Hear now, you sons of Levi, is it a small thing to you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of Yahweh and to stand before the congregation to minister to them and that he has brought you near and all your brothers, the sons of Levi, with you? And do you seek the priesthood also? Therefore, you and all your company are gathered together against Yahweh. And Aaron, what is he that you murmur against him? Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and they said, We won't come up. Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? But you must also make yourself a prince over us? Moreover, you haven't brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We won't come up. Moses was very angry and said to Yahweh, Don't respect their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, neither have I hurt one of them. Moses said to Korah, You and all your company go before Yahweh, you and they and Aaron tomorrow, and each man take his censer and put incense on them, and each man bring before Yahweh his censer, 250 censers, you also and Aaron, each his censer. They each took his censer and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood at the door of the tent of meeting with Moses and Aaron. Korah assembled all the congregation against them to the door of the tent of meeting, and the glory of Yahweh appeared to all the congregation. Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. They fell on their faces and said, God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and will you be angry with all the congregation? Moses separates the people. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the congregation, saying, Get away from around the tent of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Moses rose up and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. He spoke to the congregation, saying, Depart, please, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. So they went away from the tent of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, on every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little ones. Moses said, 
Hereby you shall know that Yahweh has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then Yahweh hasn't sent me. But if Yahweh make a new thing, and the ground open its mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain to them, and they go down alive into Sheol, then you shall understand that these men have despised Yahweh. The earth swallows up Korah. It happened, as he made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground split apart that was under them, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, and their households, and all the men who appertained to Korah, and all their goods. So they, and all that appertained to them, went down alive into Sheol, and the earth closed on them, and they perished from among the assembly. All Israel that were around them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up. Fire came forth from Yahweh, and devoured the two hundred fifty men who offered the incense. The censers reserved for holy use. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter the fire yonder, for they are holy, even the censers of these sinners against their own lives, and let them be made beaten plates for a covering of the altar. For they offered them before Yahweh, therefore they are holy, and they shall be a sign to the children of Israel. Eleazar the priest took the bronze censers, which those who were burnt had offered, and they beat them out for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial to the children of Israel, to the end that no stranger who isn't of the seed of Aaron comes near to burn incense before Yahweh, that he not be as Korah and as his company, as Yahweh spoke to him by Moses. Murmuring and Plague But on the next day, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, You have killed Yahweh's people. It happened when the congregation was assembled against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tent of meeting, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of Yahweh appeared. Moses and Aaron came to the front of the tent of meeting. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Get away from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. They fell on their faces. Moses said to Aaron, Take your censer and put fire from off the altar in it, and lay incense on it, and carry it quickly to the congregation, and make atonement for them, for wrath has gone out from Yahweh. The plague has begun. Aaron did as Moses said, and ran into the midst of the assembly. And behold, the plague has begun among the people. And he put on the incense, and made atonement for the people. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Now those who died by the plague were fourteen thousand and seven hundred, besides those who died about the matter of Korah. Aaron returned to Moses to the door of the tent of meeting, and the plague was stayed. Chapter 17 Aaron's Staff Buds Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and take of them rods, one for each father's house, of all their princes, according to their father's houses, twelve rods. Write every man's name on his rod. You shall write Aaron's name on the rod of Levi, for there shall be one rod for each head of their father's houses. You shall lay them up in the tent of meeting before the testimony, 
where I meet with you. It shall happen that the rod of the man whom I shall choose shall bud, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against you. Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and all their princes gave him rods, for each prince, one, according to their father's houses, even twelve rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. Moses laid up the rods before Yahweh in the tent of the testimony. It happened on the next day that Moses went into the tent of the testimony, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and put forth buds and produced blossoms and bore ripe almonds. Moses brought out all the rods from before Yahweh to all the children of Israel, and they looked and took every man his rod. Yahweh said to Moses, Put back the rod of Aaron before the testimony to be kept for a token against the children of rebellion, that you may make an end of their murmurings against me, that they not die. Moses did so. As Yahweh commanded him, so he did. The children of Israel spoke to Moses, saying, Behold, we perish. We are undone. We are all undone. Everyone who comes near, who comes near to the tabernacle of Yahweh, dies. Will we all perish? End of Section 13 Chapter 18 Duties of Priests and Levites Yahweh said to Aaron, You and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, and you and your sons with you shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. Your brothers also, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, bring near with you, that they may be joined to you and minister to you. But you and your sons with you shall be before the tent of the testimony. They shall keep your commands and the duty of all the tent. Only they shall not come near to the vessels of the sanctuary and to the altar, that they not die, neither they nor you. They shall be joined to you and keep the responsibility of the tent of meeting for all the service of the tent, and a stranger shall not come near to you. You shall perform the duty of the sanctuary and the duty of the altar, that there be wrath no more on the children of Israel. I, behold, I have taken your brothers the Levites from among the children of Israel. To you they are a gift given to Yahweh to do the service of the tent of meeting. You and your sons with you shall keep your priesthood for everything of the altar and for that within the veil, and you shall serve. I give you the priesthood as a service of gift, and the stranger who comes near shall be put to death. The Priest's Portion Yahweh spoke to Aaron, I, behold, I have given you the command of my wave offerings, even all the holy things of the children of Israel. To you have I given them by reason of the anointing, and to your sons as a portion forever. This shall be yours of the most holy things, reserved from the fire, every offering of theirs, 
even every meal offering of theirs, and every sin offering of theirs, and every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render to me, shall be most holy for you and for your sons. You shall eat of it like the most holy things. Every male shall eat of it. It shall be holy to you. This is yours too, the wave offering of their gift, even all the wave offerings of the children of Israel. I have given them to you, and to your sons, and to your daughters with you, as a portion forever. Everyone who is clean in your house shall eat of it. All the best of the oil, and all the best of the vintage, and of the grain, the first fruits of them which they give to Yahweh, to you have I given them. The first ripe fruits of all that is in their land, which they bring to Yahweh, shall be yours. Everyone who is clean in your house shall eat of it. Everything devoted in Israel shall be yours. Everything that opens the womb of all flesh which they offer to Yahweh, both of man and animal, shall be yours. Nevertheless, you shall surely redeem the firstborn of man and you shall redeem the firstborn of unclean animals. You shall redeem those who are to be redeemed of them from a month old, according to your estimation, for five shekels of money, after the shekel of the sanctuary. The same is twenty geras. But you shall not redeem the firstborn of a cow, or the firstborn of a sheep, or the firstborn of a goat. They are holy. You shall sprinkle their blood on the altar, and shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire, for a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. Their flesh shall be yours, as the wave offering breast, and as the right thigh, it shall be yours. All the wave offerings of the holy things, which the children of Israel offer to Yahweh, have I given you, and your sons, and your daughters with you, as a portion forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before Yahweh to you, and to your seed with you. Yahweh said to Aaron, you shall have no inheritance in their land, neither shall you have any portion among them. I am your portion and your inheritance among the children of Israel. The Levite's Portion To the children of Levi, behold, I have given all the tithe in Israel for an inheritance in return for their service, which they serve, even the service of the tent of meeting. Henceforth the children of Israel shall not come near the tent of meeting, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tent of meeting, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute for ever, throughout your generations, and among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. For the tithe of the children of Israel, which they offer as a wave offering to Yahweh, I have given to the Levites for an inheritance. Therefore I have said to them, Among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. THE HEAVE OFFERING Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Moreover, you shall speak to the Levites, and tell them, When you take of the children of Israel the tithe which I have given you from them for your inheritance, 
then you shall offer up a wave offering of it for Yahweh, a tithe of the tithe. Your wave offering shall be reckoned to you, as though it were the grain of the threshing floor, and as the fullness of the wine press. Thus you also shall offer a wave offering to Yahweh of all your tithes, which you receive of the children of Israel. And of it you shall give Yahweh's wave offering to Aaron the priest. Out of all your gifts you shall offer every wave offering of Yahweh, of all its best, even the holy part of it out of it. Therefore you shall tell them, When you heave its best from it, then it shall be reckoned to the Levites as the increase of the threshing floor and as the increase of the winepress. You shall eat it in every place, you and your households, for it is your reward in return for your service in the tent of meeting. You shall bear no sin by reason of it, when you have heaved from it its best, and you shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel, that you not die. Chapter 19 Ashes of the Red Heifer Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, this is the statute of the law which Yahweh has commanded. Speak to the children of Israel that they bring you a red heifer without spot, in which is no blemish, and on which never came yoke. You shall give her to Eleazar the priest, and he shall bring her forth outside of the camp, and one shall kill her before his face, and Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger, and sprinkle her blood toward the front of the tent of meeting seven times. One shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh and her blood with her dung shall he burn. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet, and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. Then the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in water. And afterward he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until the evening. He who burns her shall wash his clothes in water, and bathe his flesh in water, and shall be unclean until the evening. A man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up outside of the camp in a clean place, and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water for impurity. It is a sin offering. He who gathers the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. And it shall be to the children of Israel, and to the stranger who lives as a foreigner among them, for a statute forever. Purification of the Unclean He who touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. The same shall purify himself with water on the third day and on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he doesn't purify himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. Whoever touches a dead person, the body of a man who has died and doesn't purify himself, defiles the tabernacle of Yahweh, and that soul shall be cut off from Israel because the water for impurity was not sprinkled on him, he shall be unclean. His uncleanness is yet on him. 
This is the law when a man dies in a tent. Every one who comes into the tent, and every one who is in the tent, shall be unclean seven days. Every open vessel, which has no covering bound on it, is unclean. Whoever in the open field touches one who is slain with a sword, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean seven days. For the unclean they shall take of the ashes of the burning of the sin offering, and running water shall be put thereto in a vessel, and a clean person shall take hyssop, and dip it in the water, and sprinkle it on the tent, and on all the vessels, and on the persons who were there, and on him who touched the bone, or the slain, or the dead, or the grave. And the clean person shall sprinkle on the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day. And on the seventh day he shall purify him. And he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be clean at evening. But the man who shall be unclean, and shall not purify himself, that soul shall be cut off from the midst of the assembly, because he has defiled the sanctuary of Yahweh. The water for impurity has not been sprinkled on him. He is unclean. It shall be a perpetual statute to them. And he who sprinkles the water for impurity shall wash his clothes. And he who touches the water for impurity shall be unclean until evening. Whatever the unclean person touches shall be unclean. And the soul that touches it shall be unclean until evening. Chapter 20 The Death of Miriam The children of Israel, even the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month. And the people stayed in Kadesh, and Miriam died there, and was buried there. Water from the Rock there was no water for the congregation, and they assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. The people strove with Moses and spoke, saying, We wish that we had died when our brothers died before Yahweh. Why have you brought the assembly of Yahweh into this wilderness, that we should die there, we and our animals? Why have you made us to come up out of Egypt? to bring us into this evil place. It is no place of seed, or of figs, or of vines, or of pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tent of meeting, and fell on their faces. And the glory of Yahweh appeared to them. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, and assemble the congregation, you and Aaron your brother, and speak to the rock before their eyes, that it give forth its water. And you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock. So you shall give the congregation and their livestock drink. Moses took the rod from before Yahweh as he commanded him. Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels, shall we bring you water out of this rock for you? Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his rod twice, and water came forth abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their livestock. Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, because you didn't believe in me, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, 
You shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. These are the waters of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with Yahweh, and he was sanctified in them. Edom refuses passage. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom, saying, Thus says your brother Israel, You know all the travail that has happened to us, how our fathers went down into Egypt, and we lived in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians dealt ill with us and our fathers. And when we cried to Yahweh, he heard our voice, and sent an angel, and brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of your border. Please let us pass through your land. We will not pass through field or through vineyard, neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go along the king's highway. We will not turn aside to the right hand nor to the left until we have passed your border. Edom said to him, you shall not pass through me, lest I come out with the sword against you. The children of Israel said to him, We will go up by the highway, and if we drink of your water, I and my livestock, then I will give its price. Let me only, without doing anything else, pass through on my feet. He said, You shall not pass through. Edom came out against him with many people and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border. So Israel turned away from him. The Death of Aaron They traveled from Kadesh, and the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, came to Mount Hor. Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron in Mount Hor, by the border of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered to his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given to the children of Israel, because you rebelled against my word at the waters of Meribah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up to Mount Hor and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them on Eleazar his son. And Aaron shall be gathered to his people, and shall die there. Moses did as Yahweh commanded, and they went up into Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, and put them on Eleazar his son. And Aaron died there on the top of the mountain. And Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. When all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they wept for Aaron thirty days, even all the house of Israel. Chapter 21 Victory over the Canaanites The Canaanite, the king of Arad, who lived in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of Atherim. And he fought against Israel and took some of them captive. Israel vowed a vow to Yahweh and said, If you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. Yahweh listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And the name of the place was called Horma. The Bronze Serpent They traveled from Mount Hor by the way to the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, and there is no water, and our soul loathes this light bread. Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many people of Israel died. 
the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, because we have spoken against Yahweh and against you. Pray to Yahweh that he take away the serpents from us. Moses prayed for the people. Yahweh said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent, and set it on a standard. And it shall happen, that every one who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. Moses made a serpent of brass, and set it on the standard. And it happened, that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he looked to the serpent of brass, he lived. The Journey to Moab The children of Israel traveled and encamped in Oboth. They traveled from Oboth and encamped at Liabiram in the wilderness, which is before Moab, toward the sunrise. From there they traveled and encamped in the valley of Zered. From there they traveled and encamped on the other side of the Arnon, which is in the wilderness that comes out of the border of the Amorites. For the Arnon is the border of Moab, between Moab and the Amorites. Therefore it is said in the book of the wars of Yahweh, Wahib in Sufa, the valleys of the Arnon, the slope of the valleys that incline toward the dwelling of Er, leans on the border of Moab. From there they traveled to Bair. That is the well of which Yahweh said to Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then sang Israel this song, Spring up, well, sing to it, the well which the princes dug, which the nobles of the people dug, with the scepter and with their pole. From the wilderness they traveled to Matana, and from Matana to Nahaliel, and from Nahaliel to Bamoth, and from Bamoth to the valley that is in the field of Moab, to the top of Pisgah, which looks down on the desert. The Defeat of Sihon Israel sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, let me pass through your land. We will not turn aside into field or into vineyard. We will not drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway until we have passed your border. Sihon would not allow Israel to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness and came to Jahaz. And he fought against Israel. Israel struck him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from the Arnon to the Jabbok, even to the children of Ammon, for the border of the children of Ammon was strong. Israel took all these cities, and Israel lived in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon and in all its towns, for Heshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and taken all his land out of his hand, even to the Arnon. Therefore, those who speak in Proverbs say, Come to Heshbon, let the city of Sihon be built and established. For a fire has gone out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon. It has devoured air of Moab, the lords of the high places of the Arnon. Woe to you, Moab! You are undone, people of Chemosh. He has given his sons as fugitives and his daughters into captivity to Sihon, king of the Amorites. We have shot at them. Heshbon has perished even to Dibon. We have laid waste even to Nopha, which reaches to Medaba. The Defeat of Og Thus Israel lived in the land of the Amorites. Moses sent to spy out Jazer, and they took its towns and drove out the Amorites who were there. They turned and went up by the way of Bashan, and Og, the king of Bashan, went out against them. 
he and all his people, to battle at Edrai. Yahweh said to Moses, Don't fear him, for I have delivered him into your hand, and all his people, and his land, and you shall do to him as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived at Heshbon. So they struck him and his sons and all his people, until there was none left him remaining, and they possessed his land. Chapter 22 Balak summons Balaam The children of Israel traveled and encamped in the plains of Moab, beyond the Jordan at Jericho. Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Moab was very afraid of the people, because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now this multitude will lick up all that is around us, as the ox licks up the grass of the field. Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of Moab at that time. He sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river, to the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people who came out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the surface of the earth, and they are staying opposite me. Please, come now, therefore, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall prevail, that we may strike them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. The elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the reward of divination in their hand. And they came to Balaam and spoke to him the words of Balak. He said to them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as Yahweh shall speak to me. The princes of Moab stayed with Balaam. God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent to me, saying, Behold, the people that is come out of Egypt, it covers the surface of the earth. Now come, curse me them. Perhaps I shall be able to fight against them and shall drive them out. God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. Balaam rose up in the morning and said to the princess of Balak, Go to your land for Yahweh refuses to permit me to go with you. The princes of Moab rose up, and they went to Balak, and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Balak sent yet again princes, more and more honorable than they. They came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, the son of Zippor, Please let nothing hinder you from coming to me for I will promote you to very great honor, and whatever you say to me, I will do. Please come, therefore, and curse this people for me. Balaam answered the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I can't go beyond the word of Yahweh my God to do less or more. Now, therefore, please wait also here this night that I may know what Yahweh will speak to me more. God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men have come to call you, rise up, go with them. But only the word which I speak to you, that you shall do. Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. The Angel and Balaam's Donkey God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of Yahweh placed himself in the way for an adversary against him. 
Now he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. The donkey saw the angel of Yahweh standing in the way, with his sword drawn in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam struck the donkey, to turn her into the way. Then the angel of Yahweh stood in a narrow path between the vineyards, a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. The donkey saw the angel of Yahweh, and she thrust herself to the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he struck her again. The angel of Yahweh went further, and stood in a narrow place, where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. The donkey saw the angel of Yahweh, and she lay down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Yahweh opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you, that you have struck me these three times? Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have mocked me. I wish there were a sword in my hand, for now I would have killed you. The donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey, on which you have ridden all your life long to this day? Was I ever in the habit of doing so to you? He said, No. Then Yahweh opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of Yahweh standing in the way, with his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed his head and fell on his face. The angel of Yahweh said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come forth as an adversary, because your way is perverse before me. And the donkey saw me, and turned aside before me these three times. Unless she had turned aside from me, surely now I would have killed you, and saved her alive. Balaam said to the angel of Yahweh, I have sinned, for I didn't know that you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displeases you, I will go back again. The angel of Yahweh said to Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak to you, that you shall speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. When Balak heard that Balaam had come, he went out to meet him to the city of Moab, which is on the border of the Arnon, which is in the utmost part of the border. Balak said to Balaam, Didn't I earnestly send to you to call you? Why didn't you come to me? Am I not able indeed to promote you to honor? Balaam said to Balak, Behold, I have come to you. Have I now any power at all to speak anything? The word that God puts in my mouth, that shall I speak. Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kiriath Huzoth. Balak sacrificed cattle and sheep, and sent to Balaam and to the princes who were with him. It happened in the morning that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal, and he saw from there the utmost part of the people. Chapter 23 Balaam's First Oracle Balaam said to Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bulls and seven rams. Balak did as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bull and a ram. Balaam said to Balak, Stand by your burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps Yahweh will come to meet me, and whatever he shows me, I will tell you. He went to a bare height. God met Balaam. And he said to him, I have prepared the seven altars, and I have offered up a bull and a ram on every altar. Yahweh put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. He returned to him, and behold, he was standing by his burnt offering, he and all the princes of Moab. He took up his parable and said, from Aram has Balak brought me, the king of Moab, 
from the mountains of the east. Come, curse Jacob for me. Come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? How shall I defy whom Yahweh has not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him. From the hills I see him. Behold, it is a people that dwells alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous. Let my last end be like his. Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them altogether. He answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which Yahweh puts in my mouth? Balaam's Second Oracle Balak said to him, Please, come with me to another place, where you may see them. You shall see but the utmost part of them, and shall not see them all, and curse me them from there. He took him into the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered up a bull and a ram on every altar. He said to Balak, Stand here by your burnt offering, while I meet Yahweh yonder. Yahweh met Balaam, and put a word in his mouth, and said, Return to Balak, and say this. He came to him, and behold, he was standing by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. Balak said to him, What has Yahweh spoken? He took up his parable, and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, you son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I can't reverse it. He has not seen iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. Yahweh his God is with him. The shout of a king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of the wild ox. Surely there is no enchantment with Jacob, neither is there any divination with Israel. Now it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What has God done? Behold, the people rises up as a lioness. As a lion he lifts himself up. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drinks the blood of the slain. Balak said to Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered Balak, Didn't I tell you, saying, All that Yahweh speaks, that I must do? Balak said to Balaam, Come now, I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse me them from there. Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor, that looks down on the desert. Balaam said to Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bulls and seven rams. Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered up a bull and a ram on every altar. Chapter 24 Balaam's Third Oracle When Balaam saw that it pleased Yahweh to bless Israel, he didn't go, as at the other times, to meet with enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel dwelling according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came on him. He took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, says, The man whose eye was closed, says, He says, Who hears the words of God, Who sees the vision of the Almighty, Falling down and having his eyes open. 
How goodly are your tents, Jacob, and your tents, Israel. As valleys they are spread forth, as gardens by the riverside, as aloes which Yahweh has planted, as cedar trees beside the waters. Water shall flow from his buckets, his seed shall be in many waters, his king shall be higher than Agag, his kingdom shall be exalted. God brings him out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of the wild ox. He shall eat up the nations, his adversaries, shall break their bones in pieces, and pierce them with his arrows. He crouched, he lay down as a lion, as a lioness. Who shall rouse him up? Everyone who blesses you is blessed. Everyone who curses you is cursed. Balak dismisses Balaam. Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he struck his hands together. And Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee you to your place. I thought to promote you to great honor, but behold, Yahweh has kept you back from honor. Balaam said to Balak, Didn't I also tell your messengers who you sent to me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I can't go beyond the word of Yahweh to do either good or bad of my own mind. I will say what Yahweh says. Now behold, I go to my people. Come, and I will inform you what this people shall do to your people in the latter days. Balaam's Fourth Oracle He took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, says, the man whose eye was closed, says, He says, Who hears the words of God, knows the knowledge of the Most High, and who sees the vision of the Almighty, falling down and having his eyes open. I see him, but not now. I see him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel and shall strike through the corners of Moab, and break down all the sons of Sheth. Edom shall be a possession, Seir his enemies also shall be a possession, while Israel does valiantly. Out of Jacob shall one have dominion, and shall destroy the remnant from the city. Balaam's Final Three Oracles he looked at Amalek, and took up his parable, and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall come to destruction. He looked at the Kenite, and took up his parable, and said, Your dwelling place is strong, your nest is set in the rock. Nevertheless, Cain shall be wasted, until Asher carries you away captive. He took up his parable, and said, Alas, who shall live when God does this? But ships shall come from the coast of Kittim. They shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber. He also shall come to destruction. Balaam rose up, and went, and returned to his place, and Balak also went his way. Chapter 25 Baal worship at Peor. Israel stayed in Shittim, and the people began to play the prostitute with the daughters of Moab, for they called the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. Israel joined himself to Baal Peor, and the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel. Yahweh said to Moses, Take all the chiefs of the people and hang them up to Yahweh before the sun, 
that the fierce anger of Yahweh may turn away from Israel. Moses said to the judges of Israel, Everyone kill his men who have joined themselves to Baal Peor. Phineas kills Zimri and Cosby. Behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought to his brothers a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, while they were weeping at the door of the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose up from the midst of the congregation and took a spear in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the pavilion and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her body. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. Those who died by the plague were twenty-four thousand. Phineas's Reward Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel in that he was jealous with my jealousy among them, so that I didn't consume the children of Israel in my jealousy. Therefore say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and to his seed after him the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was jealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the man of Israel that was slain, who was slain with the Midianite woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, a prince of a father's house among the Simeonites. The name of the Midianite woman who was slain was Cosby, the daughter of Zur. He was head of the people of a father's house in Midian. A WARNING AGAINST THE MIDIANITES Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Harass the Midianites and strike them, for they harassed you with their wiles, with which they have deceived you in the matter of Peor and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of the prince of Midian, their sister who was slain on the day of the plague in the matter of Peor. Chapter 26 The Second Census of Israel It happened after the plague that Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saying, Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel, from twenty years old and upward, by their fathers' houses, all who are able to go forth to war in Israel. Moses and Eleazar the priest spoke with them in the plains of Moab, by the Jordan at Jericho, saying, Take a census of the people, from twenty years old and upward, as Yahweh commanded Moses and the children of Israel. These are those that came out of the land of Egypt. The Tribe of Reuben Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, the sons of Reuben, of Hanok, the family of the Hanokites, of Palu, the family of the Paluites, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. These are the families of the Reubenites, and those who were numbered of them were 43,730. The sons of Palu, Eliab, the sons of Eliab, Nimuel, and Dathan, and Abiram. These are that Dathan and Abiram, who were called of the congregation, who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah, 
when they strove against Yahweh. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah, when that company died. What time the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a sign. Notwithstanding, the sons of Korah didn't die. The Tribe of Simeon The sons of Simeon after their families Of Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelites Of Jamin, the family of the Jaminites Of Jekin, the family of the Jekonites Of Zerah, the family of the Zerahites of Shaul, the family of the Shaulites. These are the families of the Simeonites, 22,200. The tribe of Gad. The sons of Gad after their families. Of Zephon, the family of the Zephonites. Of Haggi, the family of the Haggites. Of Shunai, the family of the Shunites. Of Osni, the family of the Osnites. Of Uri, the family of the Urites. Of Arad, the family of the Arodites. Of Arilai, the family of the Arilites. These are the families of the sons of Gad, according to those who were numbered of them. Forty thousand and five hundred. The tribe of Judah. The sons of Judah, Er and Onan. And Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Judah after their families were of Shelah, the family of the Shelanites, of Perez, the family of the Perizzites, of Zerah, the family of the Zerahites. The sons of Perez were of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Hamul, the family of the Hamulites. These are the families of Judah, according to those who were numbered of them, 76,500. The tribe of Issachar. The sons of Issachar after their families. Of Tola, the family of the Tolaites. Of Puva, the family of the Punites. Of Jashub, the family of the Jashubites. Of Shimron, the family of the Shimronites. These are the families of Issachar, according to those who were numbered of them. Sixty-four thousand... 300. The tribe of Zebulun. The sons of Zebulun after their families. Of Sered, the family of the Seredites. Of Elan, the family of the Elanites. Of Jaliel, the family of the Jalielites. These are the families of the Zebulonites according to those who were numbered of them, 60,500. The tribe of Manasseh. The sons of Joseph, after their families, Manasseh and Ephraim. The sons of Manasseh. Of Makir, the family of the Makirites. And Makir became the father of Gilead. Of Gilead, the family of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead. Of Lezer, the family of the Lezerites. Of Helek, the family of the Helekites. And of Azrael, the family of the Azraelites. And of Shechem, the family of the Shechemites. And of Shemida, the family of the Shemidaites and of Hefer, the family of the Heferites. Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, had no sons but daughters, and the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mala and Noah, 
Hogla, Milka, and Terza. These are the families of Manasseh, and those who were numbered of them were 52,700. The tribe of Ephraim. These are the sons of Ephraim after their families, of Shuthala, the family of the Shuthalahites, of Beecher, the family of the Beecherites, of Tyan, the family of the Tyanites. These are the sons of Shuthala, of Aaron, the family of the Aaronites. These are the families of the sons of Ephraim, according to those who were numbered of them, 32,500. These are the sons of Joseph, after their families. The tribe of Benjamin. The sons of Benjamin, after their families. Of Bela, the family of the Belaites. Of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites. Of Ahiram, the family of the Ahiramites. Of Shephupham, the family of the Shuthamites. Of Hufam, the family of the Hufamites. The sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman. Of Ard, the family of the Ardites. Of Naaman, the family of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and those who were numbered of them were 45,600. The tribe of Dan. These are the sons of Dan after their families. Of Shuhem, the family of the Shuhemites. These are the families of Dan after their families. All the families of the Shuhemites, according to those who were numbered of them, were 64,400. The tribe of Asher. The sons of Asher after their families. Of Imna, the family of the Imnites. Of Ishvi, the family of the Ishvites. Of Beriah, the family of the Berites. Of the sons of Beriah. Of Heber, the family of the Heberites of Malkiel, the family of the Malkielites. The name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the families of the sons of Asher, according to those who were numbered of them, 53,400. The tribe of Naphtali. The sons of Naphtali after their families of Jaziel, the family of the Jazielites, of Gunai, the family of the Gunites, of Jazer, the family of the Jazerites, of Shilim, the family of the Shilimites. These are the families of Naphtali, according to their families, and those who were numbered of them were 45,400. These are those who were numbered of the children of Israel, 601,730. Inheritance by Lot Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, To these the land shall be divided for an inheritance, according to the number of names. To the more you shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer you shall give the less inheritance. To every one, according to those who were numbered of him, shall his inheritance be given. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot, according to the names of the tribes of their fathers, they shall inherit. According to the lot shall their inheritance be divided between the more and the fewer. Levites numbered. 
These are those who were numbered of the Levites after their families. Of Gershon, the family of the Gershonites. Of Kohath, the family of the Kohathites. Of Merari, the family of the Merarites. These are the families of Levi. The family of the Libnites. The family of the Hebronites. The family of the Malites. The family of the Mushites the family of the Korahites. Kohath became the father of Amram. The name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt. And she bore to Amram Aaron and Moses, and Miriam their sister. To Aaron were born Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. Nadab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before Yahweh. Those who were numbered of them were twenty-three thousand, every male from a month old and upward, for they were not numbered among the children of Israel, because there was no inheritance given them among the children of Israel. Only Caleb and Joshua remain. These are those who were numbered by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. But among these there was not a man of them who were numbered by Moses and Aaron the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For Yahweh had said of them, They shall surely die in the wilderness. There was not left a man of them, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Chapter 27 The Daughters of Zelophehad Then drew near the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, and Hogla, and Milka, and Terza. They stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes and all the congregation at the door of the tent of meeting, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not among the company of those who gathered themselves together against Yahweh in the company of Korah. But he died in his own sin, and he had no sons. Why should the name of our father be taken away from among his family, because he had no son? Give to us a possession among the brothers of our father. Moses brought their cause before Yahweh. The Law of Inheritances Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. You shall surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brothers, and you shall cause the inheritance of their father to pass to them. You shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a man dies and has no son, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass to his daughter. If he has no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father has no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance to his kinsman, who is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be to the children of Israel a statute and ordinance, as Yahweh commanded Moses. Moses asks for a successor. Yahweh said to Moses, Go up into this mountain of Abarim, 
and see the land which I have given to the children of Israel. When you have seen it, you also shall be gathered to your people, as Aaron your brother was gathered, because you rebelled against my word in the wilderness of Zen, in the strife of the congregation, to sanctify me at the waters before their eyes. These are the waters of Meribah, of Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zen. Moses spoke to Yahweh, saying, Let Yahweh, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the congregation, who may go out before them, and who may come in before them, and who may lead them out, and who may bring them in, that the congregation of Yahweh not be as sheep, which have no shepherd. Joshua to succeed Moses. Yahweh said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and commission him in their sight. You shall put of your honor on him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may obey. He shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall inquire for him by the judgment of the Urim before Yahweh. At his word shall they go out, and at his word they shall come in both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. Moses did as Yahweh commanded him, and he took Joshua and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation, and he laid his hands on him and commissioned him, as Yahweh spoke by Moses. End of Section 14 Chapter 28 The Daily Offerings Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and tell them, my offering, my food for my offerings made by fire, of a pleasant aroma to me, you shall observe to offer to me in their due season. You shall tell them, This is the offering made by fire, which you shall offer to Yahweh. Male lambs, a year old, without blemish. Two day by day, for a continual burnt offering. You shall offer the one lamb in the morning, and you shall offer the other lamb at evening, with the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a meal offering, mixed with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a pleasant aroma, an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Its drink offering shall be the fourth part of a hen for the one lamb. You shall pour out a drink offering of strong drink to Yahweh in the holy place. The other lamb you shall offer at evening as the meal offering of the morning, and as the drink offering of it, you shall offer it, an offering made by fire of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. The Sabbath Offerings On the Sabbath day, two male lambs, a year old, without blemish, and two tenth parts of an ephah of fine flour for a meal offering, mixed with oil, and the drink offering of it. 
This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, besides the continual burnt offering, and the drink offering of it. The Monthly Offerings In the beginnings of your months, you shall offer a burnt offering to Yahweh, two young bulls and one ram, seven male lambs a year old without blemish, and three-tenth parts of an ephah of fine flour for a meal offering, mixed with oil for each bull, and two-tenth parts of fine flour for a meal offering mixed with oil for the one ram, and a tenth part of fine flour mixed with oil, for a meal offering to every lamb, for a burnt offering of a pleasant aroma, an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Their drink offerings shall be half a hen of wine for a bull, and the third part of a hen for the ram and the fourth part of a hen for a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. One male goat for a sin offering to Yahweh. It shall be offered besides the continual burnt offering and the drink offering of it. The Passover In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month is Yahweh's Passover. On the fifteenth day of this month shall be a feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. In the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work, but you shall offer an offering made by fire, a burnt offering to Yahweh two young bulls, and one ram, and seven male lambs a year old. They shall be to you without blemish, and their meal offering, fine flour mixed with oil. You shall offer three-tenth parts for a bull, and two-tenth parts for the ram. You shall offer a tenth part for every lamb of the seven lambs, and one male goat for a sin offering to make atonement for you. You shall offer these besides the burnt offering of the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. In this way you shall offer daily for seven days, the food of the offering made by fire, of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. It shall be offered besides the continual burnt offering, and the drink offering of it. On the seventh day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. The Feast of Weeks Also, in the day of the first fruits, when you offer a new meal offering to Yahweh in your feast of weeks, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work, but you shall offer a burnt offering for a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. Two young bulls, one ram, seven male lambs a year old, and their meal offering, fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenth parts for each bull, two-tenth parts for the one ram, a tenth part for every lamb of the seven lambs, one male goat to make atonement for you, besides the continual burnt offering and the meal offering of it you shall offer them. They shall be to you without blemish. And their drink offerings. Chapter 29 The Feast of Trumpets In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, 
you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. It is a day of blowing of trumpets to you. You shall offer a burnt offering for a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. One young bull, one ram, seven male lambs a year old without blemish, and their meal offering, fine flour mixed with oil, three tenth parts for the bull, two tenth parts for the ram, and one-tenth part for every lamb of the seven lambs, and one male goat for a sin offering, to make atonement for you, besides the burnt offering of the new moon, and the meal offering of it, and the continual burnt offering, and the meal offering of it, and their drink offerings, according to their ordinance, for a pleasant aroma, an offering made by fire to Yahweh. The Day of Atonement On the tenth day of this seventh month you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall afflict your souls. You shall do no kind of work, but you shall offer a burnt offering to Yahweh, for a pleasant aroma, one young bull, one ram, seven male lambs a year old. They shall be to you without blemish, and their meal offering, fine flour mixed with oil, three tenth parts for the bull, two tenth parts for the ram, a tenth part for every lamb of the seven lambs one male goat for a sin offering, besides the sin offering of atonement, and the continual burnt offering, and the meal offering of it, and their drink offerings. The Feast of Tabernacles On the fifteenth day of the seventh month you shall have a holy convocation, you shall do no servile work, and you shall keep a feast to Yahweh seven days, and you shall offer a burnt offering, an offering made by fire of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh, thirteen young bulls, two rams, fourteen male lambs a year old. They shall be without blemish, and their meal offering, fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenth parts for every bull of the thirteen bulls, two-tenth parts for each ram of the two rams, and a tenth part for every lamb of the fourteen lambs, and one male goat for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering the meal offering of it, and the drink offering of it. On the second day you shall offer twelve young bulls, two rams, fourteen male lambs a year old without blemish, and their meal offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number after the ordinance, and one male goat for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering, and the meal offering of it, and their drink offerings. On the third day, eleven bulls, two rams, fourteen male lambs a year old without blemish, and their meal offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number, after the ordinance, and one male goat for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering, and the meal offering of it, 
and the drink offering of it. On the fourth day, ten bulls, two rams, fourteen male lambs a year old without blemish, their meal offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number, after the ordinance, and one male goat for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering, the meal offering of it, and the drink offering of it. On the fifth day, nine bulls, two rams, fourteen male lambs a year old without blemish, and their meal offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number, after the ordinance, and one male goat for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering, and the meal offering of it, and the drink offering of it. On the sixth day, eight bulls, two rams, fourteen male lambs a year old without blemish, and their meal offering, and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number, after the ordinance, and one male goat for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering, the meal offering of it, and the drink offerings of it. On the seventh day, seven bulls, two rams, fourteen male lambs a year old without blemish, and their meal offering, and their drink offerings, for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number, after the ordinance, and one male goat for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering, the meal offering of it, and the drink offering of it. On the eighth day you shall have a solemn assembly. You shall do no servile work, but you shall offer a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, of a pleasant aroma to Yahweh one bull, one ram, seven male lambs a year old without blemish, their meal offering and their drink offerings, for the bull, for the ram, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the ordinance, and one male goat for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering and the meal offering of it, and the drink offering of it. You shall offer these to Yahweh in your set feasts, besides your vows, and your freewill offerings, for your burnt offerings, and for your meal offerings, and for your drink offerings, and for your peace offerings. Moses told the children of Israel according to all that Yahweh commanded Moses. Chapter 30 Laws Concerning Vows Moses spoke to the heads of the tribes of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. When a man vows a vow to Yahweh, or swears an oath to bind his soul with a bond. He shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Also, when a woman vows a vow to Yahweh, and binds herself by a bond, being in her father's house and in her youth, and her father hears her vow, and her bond with which she has bound her soul, and her father holds his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond with which she has bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he hears, 
none of her vows or of her bonds with which she has bound her soul shall stand. And Yahweh will forgive her, because her father disallowed her. If she is married to a husband, while her vows are on her, or the rash utterance of her lips with which she has bound her soul, and her husband hear it, and hold his peace at her in the day that he hears it, then her vows shall stand, and her bonds with which she has bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallow her in the day that he hears it, then he shall make void her vow which is on her, and the rash utterance of her lips, with which she has bound her soul, and Yahweh will forgive her. But the vow of a widow, or of her who is divorced, even everything with which she has bound her soul, shall stand against her. If she vowed in her husband's house, or bound her soul by bond with an oath, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her, and didn't disallow her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond with which she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband made them null and void in the day that he heard them, then whatever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Her husband has made them void, and Yahweh will forgive her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it, or her husband may make it void. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then he establishes all her vows or all her bonds which are on her. He has established them because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall make them null and void after that he has heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. These are the statutes which Yahweh commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between a father and his daughter, being in her youth in her father's house. Chapter 31 Vengeance on Midian Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel for the Midianites. Afterward, you shall be gathered to your people. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Arm men from among you for the war, that they may go against Midian to execute Yahweh's vengeance on Midian. Of every tribe, one thousand, throughout all the tribes of Israel, you shall send to the war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. Moses sent them, one thousand of every tribe, to the war. Them and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, to the war, with the vessels of the sanctuary and the trumpets for the alarm in his hand. They warred against Midian, as Yahweh commanded Moses, and they killed every male. They killed the kings of Midian with the rest of their slain, Evi, and Rechem, and Zur, and Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. Balaam also, the son of Beor, they killed with the sword. The children of Israel took captive the women of Midian, and their little ones, and all their livestock, and all their flocks, and all their goods they took for a prey. All their cities in the places in which they lived, and all their encampments, they burnt with fire. They took all the spoil and all the prey, both of man and of animal. They brought the captives and the prey and the spoil to Moses and to Eleazar the priest, and to the congregation of the children of Israel, to the camp at the plains of Moab, 
which are by the Jordan at Jericho. Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them outside of the camp. Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds who came from the service of the war. Moses said to them, Have you saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against Yahweh in the matter of Peor, and so the plague was among the congregation of Yahweh. Now therefore, kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman who has known man by lying with him. But all the girls who have not known man by lying with him keep alive for yourselves. In camp outside of the camp seven days, whoever has killed any person and whoever has touched any slain, purify yourselves on the third day and on the seventh day, you and your captives. As to every garment and all that is made of skin and all work of goat's hair and all things made of wood, you shall purify yourselves. Eleazar the priest said to the men of war who went to the battle, This is the statute of the law which Yahweh has commanded Moses. However, the gold and the silver, the brass, the iron, the tin and the lead, everything that may withstand the fire, you shall make to go through the fire, and it shall be clean. Nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water for impurity. And all that doesn't withstand the fire, you shall make to go through the water. You shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and you shall be clean. And afterward, you shall come into the camp. Division of the Spoils Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of animal, you and Eleazar the priest, and the heads of the fathers' houses of the congregation, and divide the prey into two parts, between the men skilled in war who went out to battle, and all the congregation. Levy a tribute to Yahweh, of the men of war who went out to battle, one soul of five hundred, both of the persons and of the cattle and of the donkeys and of the flocks. Take it of their half and give it to Eleazar the priest for Yahweh's wave offering. Of the children of Israel's half, you shall take one drawn out of every fifty, of the persons, of the cattle, of the donkeys, and of the flocks, even of all the livestock, and give them to the Levites, who perform the duty of the tabernacle of Yahweh. Moses and Eleazar the priest did as Yahweh commanded Moses. Now the prey, over and above the booty which the men of war took, was 675,000 sheep and 72,000 head of cattle and 61,000 donkeys and 32,000 persons in all of the women who had not known man by lying with him. The half, which was the portion of those who went out to war, was in number 337,500 sheep and Yahweh's tribute of the sheep was 675. The cattle were 36,000, of which Yahweh's tribute was 72. The donkeys were 30,500, of which Yahweh's tribute was 61. The persons were 16,000, of whom Yahweh's tribute was 32 persons. Moses gave the tribute which was Yahweh's wave offering, to Eleazar the priest, as Yahweh commanded Moses. 
of the children of Israel's half, which Moses divided off from the men who warred. Now the congregation's half was 337,500 sheep, and 36,000 head of cattle, and 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 persons. Even of the children of Israel's half, Moses took one drawn out of every fifty, both of man and of animal, and gave them to the Levites, who performed the duty of the tabernacle of Yahweh, as Yahweh commanded Moses. The Voluntary Offering The officers who were over the thousands of the army, the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds, came near to Moses, and they said to Moses, Your servants have taken the sum of the men of war who are under our command, and there lacks not one man of us. We have brought Yahweh's offering, what every man has gotten, of jewels of gold, armlets and bracelets, signet rings, earrings and necklaces, to make atonement for our souls before Yahweh. Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of them, even all worked jewels, all the gold of the wave offering that they offered up to Yahweh, of the captains of thousands and of the captains of hundreds, was 16,750 shekels. For the men of war had taken booty, every man for himself. Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of the captains of thousands and of hundreds and brought it into the tent of meeting for a memorial for the children of Israel before Yahweh. Chapter 32 Reuben and Gad ask for Gilead. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of livestock. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that, behold, the place was a place for livestock. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spoke to Moses and to Eleazar the priest and to the princes of the congregation, saying, Adaroth and Dibon and Jazer and Nimrah and Heshbon and Eliali and Sebum and Nebo and beyond, the land which Yahweh struck before the congregation of Israel, is a land for livestock, and your servants have livestock. They said, If we have found favor in your sight, let this land be given to your servants for a possession. Don't bring us over the Jordan. Moses reproves Reuben and Gad. Moses said to the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brothers go to the war? And shall you sit here? Why do you discourage the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which Yahweh has given them? Your fathers did so when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up to the valley of Eshkol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which Yahweh had given them. Yahweh's anger was kindled in that day, and he swore, saying, Surely none of the men who came up out of Egypt from twenty years old and upward shall see the land which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, because they have followed Yahweh completely. Yahweh's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander back and forth in the wilderness forty years, until all the generation who had done evil in the sight of Yahweh was consumed. Behold, you have risen up in your father's place, an increase of sinful men, to augment yet the fierce anger of Yahweh toward Israel. For if you turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness, and you will destroy all this people. 
Reuben and Gad, appease Moses. They came near to him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our livestock and cities for our little ones, but we ourselves will be ready armed to go before the children of Israel until we have brought them to their place and our little ones shall dwell in the fortified cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance, for we will not inherit with them on the other side of the Jordan and forward, because our inheritance is fallen to us on this side of the Jordan, eastward. Moses said to them, If you will do this thing, if you will arm yourselves to go before Yahweh to the war, and every armed man of you will pass over the Jordan before Yahweh until he has driven out his enemies from before him, and the land is subdued before Yahweh, then afterward you shall return and be guiltless towards Yahweh and towards Israel. And this land shall be to you for a possession before Yahweh. But if you will not do so, Behold, you have sinned against Yahweh, and be sure your sin will find you out. Build cities for your little ones, and folds for your sheep, and do that which has proceeded out of your mouth. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben spoke to Moses, saying, Your servants will do as my Lord commands. Our little ones, our wives, our flocks, and all our livestock shall be there in the cities of Gilead. But your servants will pass over, every man who is armed for war, before Yahweh, to battle, as my Lord says. So Moses commanded concerning them to Eleazar the priest, and to Joshua the son of Nun, and to the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the children of Israel. Moses said to them, if the children of Gad and the children of Reuben will pass with you over the Jordan, every man who is armed to battle before Yahweh, and the land shall be subdued before you, then you shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession. But if they will not pass over with you armed, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben answered, saying, as Yahweh has said to your servants, so will we do. We will pass over armed before Yahweh into the land of Canaan, and the possession of our inheritance shall remain with us beyond the Jordan. Reuben and Gad settle in Gilead. Moses gave to them, even to the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land, according to the cities of it, with their borders, even the cities of the surrounding land. The children of Gad built Dibon, and Adaroth, and Aurora, and Adroth Shophan, and Jazer, and Jogbeha, and Beth Nimrah, and Beth Haran, fortified cities and folds for sheep. The children of Reuben built Heshbon, and Eliali, and Cariathaim, and Nebo, and Baal Maon, their names being changed, and Sibma, and they gave other names to the cities which they built. The children of Mekur, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead and took it, and dispossessed the Amorites who were therein. Moses gave Gilead to Machir, the son of Manasseh, and he lived therein. Jair, the son of Manasseh, went and took its towns, and called them Havoth-Jair. Noba went and took Kenneth and its villages, and called it Noba, after his own name. Chapter 33 The Forty-Two Journeys of the Israelites These are the journeys of the children of Israel, 
when they went forth out of the land of Egypt, by their armies, under the hand of Moses and Aaron. Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys, by the commandment of Yahweh. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. They traveled from Ramesses in the first month, on the fifteenth day of the first month. On the next day after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians, while the Egyptians were burying all their firstborn, whom Yahweh had struck among them. On their gods also Yahweh executed judgments. The children of Israel traveled from Ramesses and encamped in Succoth. They traveled from Succoth and encamped in Etham, which is in the edge of the wilderness. They traveled from Etham and turned back to Pihiroth, which is before baal Zephon, and they encamped before Migdal. They traveled from before Hiroth and passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness, and they went three days' journey in the wilderness of Etham, and encamped in Merah. They traveled from Merah and came to Elam, and in Elam were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they encamped there. They traveled from Elam and encamped by the Red Sea. They traveled from the Red Sea and encamped in the wilderness of Sin. They traveled from the wilderness of Sin and encamped in Dovka. They traveled from Dovka and encamped in Alush. They traveled from Alush and encamped in Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. They traveled from Rephidim and encamped in the wilderness of Sinai. They traveled from the wilderness of Sinai and encamped in Kibroth Hadava. They traveled from Kibroth Hadava and encamped in Hazaroth. They traveled from Hazaroth and encamped in Rithma. They traveled from Rithma and encamped in Rimon Perez. They traveled from Rimon Perez and encamped in Libna. They traveled from Libna and encamped in Rissa. They traveled from Rissa and encamped in Kihalatha. They traveled from Kihalatha and encamped in Mount Shefer. They traveled from Mount Shefer and encamped in Harada. They traveled from Harada and encamped in Makaloth. They traveled from Makaloth and encamped in Tahath. They traveled from Tahath and encamped in Terah. They traveled from Terah and encamped in Mithka. They traveled from Mithka and encamped in Hashmona. They traveled from Hashmona and encamped in Moseroth. They traveled from Moseroth and encamped in Benid Jachin. They traveled from Benid Jachin and encamped in Hor Hagidat. They traveled from Hor Hagidat and encamped in Jotbatha. They traveled from Jotbatha and encamped in Abrona. They traveled from Abrona and encamped in Ezion Geber. They traveled from Ezion Geber and encamped in the wilderness of Zin. The same is Kedesh. They traveled from Kedesh and encamped in Mount Hur, in the edge of the land of Edom. Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hur at the commandment of Yahweh, and died there. In the fortieth year, after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the fifth month, on the first day of the month, Aaron was one hundred twenty-three years old when he died in Mount Hur. The Canaanite, the king of Arad, who lived in the south, in the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. They traveled from Mount Hor and encamped in Zalmona. They traveled from Zalmona and encamped in Punan. They traveled from Punan and encamped in Oboth. They traveled from Oboth 
and encamped in Liabarim, in the border of Moab. They traveled from Liam and encamped in Dibon Gad. They traveled from Dibon Gad and encamped in Almon Diblethaim. They traveled from Almon Diblethaim and encamped in the mountains of Abarim before Nebo. They traveled from the mountains of Abarim and encamped in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. They encamped by the Jordan from Beth Jeshemoth even to Ebel Shittim in the plains of Moab. Canaanites to be destroyed. Yahweh spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them, When you pass over the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their figured stones, and destroy all their molten images, and demolish all their high places. And you shall take possession of the land, and dwell therein. For I have given the land to you to possess it. You shall inherit the land by lot according to your families. To the more you shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer you shall give the less inheritance. Wherever the lot falls to any man, that shall be his. You shall inherit according to the tribes of your fathers. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then those you let remain of them will be as pricks in your eyes and as thorns in your sides, and they will harass you in the land in which you dwell. It shall happen that as I thought to do to them, so will I do to you. Chapter 34 The Boundaries of Canaan Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and tell them, When you come into the land of Canaan, This is the land that shall fall to you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan, according to its borders. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zin, along by the side of Edom, and your south border shall be from the end of the salt sea eastward, and your border shall turn about southward of the ascent of Akrabim, and pass along to Zin, and the goings out of it shall be southward of Kadesh Barnea, and it shall go forth to Hazar Adder, and pass along to Asmon, and the border shall turn about from Asmon to the brook of Egypt, and the goings out of it shall be at the sea. For the western border you shall have the great sea and the border of it. This shall be your west border. This shall be your north border. From the great sea you shall mark out for you Mount Hor. From Mount Hor you shall mark out to the entrance of Hamath, and the goings out of the border shall be at Zedad, and the border shall go forth to Ziphron, and the goings out of it shall be at Hazar Enon. This shall be your north border. You shall mark out your east border from Hazar Enon to Shephem, and the border shall go down from Shephem to Ribla, on the east side of En. And the border shall go down, and shall reach to the side of the sea of Kinnereth eastward. And the border shall go down to the Jordan, and the goings out of it shall be at the salt sea. This shall be your land according to its borders around it. Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the land which you shall inherit by lot, which Yahweh has commanded to give to the nine tribes and to the half-tribe. 
for the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to their fathers' houses, and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to their fathers' houses, have received, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. The two tribes and the half-tribe have received their inheritance, beyond the Jordan, at Jericho, eastward, toward the sunrise. Leaders to Divide the Land Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, These are the names of the men who shall divide the land to you for inheritance. Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun. You shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land for inheritance. These are the names of the men of the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jephunneh, of the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shemuel the son of Amihud, of the tribe of Benjamin, Elidad the son of Kislon, of the tribe of the children of Dan, a prince, Bukai, the son of Joglai, of the children of Joseph, of the tribe of the children of Manasseh, a prince, Haniel, the son of Ephod, of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, a prince, Kemuel, the son of Shiftan, of the tribe of the children of Zebulon, a prince, Elizaphan, the son of Parnak, of the tribe of the children of Issachar, a prince, Paltiel, the son of Azan, of the tribe of the children of Asher, a prince, Ahiud, the son of Shalomai, of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, a prince, Pedahel, the son of Amihud. These are they whom Yahweh commanded to divide the inheritance to the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. Chapter 35 Forty-eight cities for the Levites Yahweh spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give to the Levites of the inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in, and you shall give suburbs for the cities around them to the Levites. The cities shall they have to dwell in, and their suburbs shall be for their livestock, and for their substance, and for all their animals. The suburbs of the cities, which you shall give to the Levites, shall be from the wall of the city, and outward, one thousand cubits around it. You shall measure outside of the city, for the east side, two thousand cubits, and for the south side, two thousand cubits, and for the west side, two thousand cubits, and for the north side, two thousand cubits, the city being in the midst. This shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. Six Cities of Refuge the cities which you shall give to the Levites, they shall be the six cities of refuge, which you shall give for the manslayer to flee to, and besides them you shall give forty-two cities. All the cities which you shall give to the Levites shall be forty-eight cities, together with their suburbs. Concerning the cities which you shall give of the possession of the children of Israel, from the many you shall take many, and from the few you shall take few. Everyone, according to his inheritance, which he inherits, shall give of his cities to the Levites. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and tell them, 
when you pass over the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the manslayer who kills any person unwittingly may flee there. The cities shall be to you for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer not die until he stands before the congregation for judgment. The cities which you shall give shall be for you six cities of refuge. You shall give three cities beyond the Jordan, and you shall give three cities in the land of Canaan. They shall be cities of refuge. For the children of Israel, and for the stranger, and for the foreigner living among them, shall these six cities be for refuge, that everyone who kills any person unwittingly may flee there. But if he struck him with an instrument of iron, so that he died, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. If he struck him with a stone in the hand, by which a man may die, and he died, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he struck him with a weapon of wood in the hand, by which a man may die, and he died, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. The avenger of blood shall himself put the murderer to death. When he meets him, he shall put him to death. If he thrust him of hatred, or hurled at him, lying in wait, so that he died, or in enmity struck him with his hand, so that he died. He who struck him shall surely be put to death. He is a murderer. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when he meets him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, or hurled on him anything without lying in wait, or with any stone, by which a man may die, not seeing him, and cast it on him, so that he died, and he was not his enemy, neither sought his harm. Then the congregation shall judge between the striker and the avenger of blood according to these ordinances, and the congregation shall deliver the manslayer out of the hand of the avenger of blood and the congregation shall restore him to his city of refuge, where he was fled. And he shall dwell therein until the death of the high priest, who was anointed with holy oil. But if the manslayer shall at any time go beyond the border of his city of refuge, where he flees, and the avenger of blood find him outside of the border of his city of refuge, and the avenger of blood kill the manslayer. He shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in his city of refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the manslayer shall return into the land of his possession. These things shall be for a statute and ordinance to you throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Whoever kills any person, the murderer shall be slain at the mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person that he die. Moreover, you shall take no ransom for the life of a murderer who is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death. You shall take no ransom for him who is fled to his city of refuge, that he may come again to dwell in the land until the death of the priest. So you shall not pollute the land in which you are, for blood, it pollutes the land, and no expiation can be made for the land for the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him who shed it. 
You shall not defile the land which you inhabit, in the midst of which I dwell. For I, Yahweh, dwell in the midst of the children of Israel. Chapter 36 Zelophehad's Daughters Marry The heads of the father's houses of the family of the children of Gilead, the son of Mekur, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Joseph, came near and spoke before Moses and before the princes, the heads of the father's houses of the children of Israel. And they said, Yahweh commanded my Lord to give the land for inheritance by lot to the children of Israel. And my Lord was commanded by Yahweh to give the inheritance of Zelophehad, our brother, to his daughters. If they are married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then will their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of our fathers, and will be added to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they shall belong. So will it be taken away from the lot of our inheritance. When the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then will their inheritance be added to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they shall belong. So will their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of Yahweh, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph speaks right. This is the thing which Yahweh does command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them be married to whom they think best. Only into the family of the tribe of their father shall they be married so shall no inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For the children of Israel shall all keep the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. Every daughter who possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife to one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may possess every man the inheritance of his fathers so shall no inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe. For the tribes of the children of Israel shall each keep his own inheritance. The daughters of Zelophehad did as Yahweh commanded Moses. For Mala, Terza, and Hogla, and Milcah, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophehad, were married to their father's brother's sons. They were married into the families of the sons of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the ordinances which Yahweh commanded by Moses to the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. End of section 15 Deuteronomy Chapter 1 The Command to Leave Sinai These are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel beyond the Jordan in the wilderness, in the Arabah over against Suth, between Paran and Tophel, and Laban and Hazaroth and Dizahab. It is eleven days' journey from Horeb, by the way of Mount Seir, to Kadesh Barnea. It happened in the fortieth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel, according to all that Yahweh had given him in commandment to them. After he had struck Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth, at Edrei, beyond the Jordan in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, saying, Yahweh our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, You have lived long enough in this mountain. 
Turn and take your journey, and go to the hill country of the Amorites, and to all the places near there, in the Arabah, in the hill country, and in the lowland, and in the south, and by the seashore, the land of the Canaanites, and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to their seed after them. Moses appoints leaders. I spoke to you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. Yahweh, your God, has multiplied you. And behold, you are this day as the stars of the sky for multitude. Yahweh, the God of your fathers, make you a thousand times as many as you are, and bless you as he has promised you. How can I myself alone bear your encumbrance and your burden and your strife? Take wise men of understanding and well known according to your tribes, and I will make them heads over you. You answered me and said, The thing which you have spoken is good for us to do. So I took the heads of your tribes wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains of thousands, and captains of hundreds, and captains of fifties, and captains of tens, and officers, according to your tribes. I commanded your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brothers, and judge righteously between a man and his brother and the foreigner who is living with him. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small and the great alike. You shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you, you shall bring to me, and I will hear it. I commanded you at that time all the things which you should do, Twelve Spies Sent Out We traveled from Horeb, and went through all that great and terrible wilderness which you saw, by the way to the hill country of the Amorites, as Yahweh our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea. I said to you, You have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which Yahweh our God gives to us, Behold, Yahweh your God has set the land before you. Go up, take possession, as Yahweh the God of your fathers has spoken to you. Don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. You came near to me, every one of you, and said, Let us send men before us, that they may search the land for us and bring us word again of the way by which we must go up, and the cities to which we shall come. The thing pleased me well, and I took twelve men of you, one man for every tribe. And they turned and went up into the hill country, and came to the valley of Eshkol, and spied it out. They took of the fruit of the land in their hands, and brought it down to us, and brought us word again, and said, It is a good land which Yahweh our God gives to us. Israel's Rebellion Yet you wouldn't go up, but rebelled against the commandment of Yahweh your God. And you murmured in your tents, and said, Because Yahweh hated us, he has brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us. Where are we going up? Our brothers have made our heart to melt, saying, The people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great 
and fortified up to the sky. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakim there. Then I said to you, Don't dread, neither be afraid of them. Yahweh, your God, who goes before you, he will fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes and in the wilderness where you have seen how that Yahweh your God bore you as a man does bear his son in all the way that you went until you came to this place. Yet in this thing you didn't believe Yahweh your God who went before you in the way to seek you out a place to pitch your tents in, in fire by night, to show you by what way you should go, and in the cloud by day. Israel's Penalty Yahweh heard the voice of your words, and was angry, and swore, saying, Surely not one of these men of this evil generation shall see the good land which I swore to give to your fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it, and to him will I give the land that he has trodden on, and to his children, because he has wholly followed Yahweh. Also, Yahweh was angry with me for your sakes, saying, You also shall not go in there. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall go in there. Encourage you him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, whom you said should be a prey, and your children, who this day have no knowledge of good or evil, they shall go in there, and to them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn and take your journey into the wilderness by the way to the Red Sea. The Defeat at Horma. Then you answered and said to me, We have sinned against Yahweh. We will go up and fight according to all that Yahweh our God commanded us. Every man of you put on his weapons of war and presumed to go up into the hill country. Yahweh said to me, Tell them, Don't go up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest you be struck before your enemies. So I spoke to you, and you didn't listen, but you rebelled against the commandment of Yahweh and were presumptuous, and went up into the hill country. The Amorites who lived in that hill country came out against you and chased you as bees do and beat you down in Seir, even to Horma. You returned and wept before Yahweh. But Yahweh didn't listen to your voice nor gave ear to you. So you stayed in Kadesh many days according to the days that you stayed there. Chapter 2 Wanderings in the Wilderness Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way to the Red Sea, as Yahweh spoke to me, and we encircled Mount Seir many days. Yahweh spoke to me, saying, you have encircled this mountain long enough. Turn northward. Command the people, saying, You are to pass through the border of your brothers, the children of Esau, who dwell in Seir. And they will be afraid of you. Take good heed to yourselves, therefore. Don't contend with them, for I will not give you of their land. No, not so much as for the sole of the foot to tread on because I have given Mount Seir to Esau for a possession. You shall purchase food of them for money that you may eat, and you shall also buy water of them for money that you may drink. For Yahweh your God has blessed you in all the work of your hand. 
He has known your walking through this great wilderness. These forty years Yahweh your God has been with you, you have lacked nothing. So we passed by our brothers, the children of Esau, who dwell in Seir, from the way of the Arabah, from Elath, and from Ezion Geber. We turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. Yahweh said to me, Don't bother Moab, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give you of his land for a possession, because I have given heir to the children of Lot for a possession. The Emim lived therein before, a people great and many, and tall as the Anakim. These also are accounted Rephaim as the Anakim, but the Moabites called them Emim. The Horites also lived in Seir before, but the children of Esau succeeded them, and they destroyed them from before them, and lived in their place, as Israel did to the land of his possession, which Yahweh gave to them. Now rise up and cross over the brook Zered. We went over the brook Zered, the days in which we came from Kadesh Barnea until we were come over the brook Zered were thirty-eight years, until all the generation of the men of war were consumed from the midst of the camp, as Yahweh swore to them. Moreover, the hand of Yahweh was against them to destroy them from the midst of the camp until they were consumed. So it happened when all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people, that Yahweh spoke to me, saying, You are this day to pass over Er, the border of Moab, and when you come near over against the children of Ammon, don't bother them, nor contend with them, for I will not give you of the land of the children of Ammon for a possession, because I have given it to the children of Lot for a possession. That also is accounted a land of Rephaim. Rephaim lived therein before, but the Ammonites called them Zamzumin, a people great and many, and tall as the Anakim. But Yahweh destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and lived in their place, as he did for the children of Esau, who dwell in Seir, when he destroyed the Horites from before them. And they succeeded them and lived in their place even to this day. And the Avim, who lived in villages as far as Gaza, the Kaphtarim, who came forth out of Kaphtor, destroyed them and lived in their place. King Sihon defeated. Rise up, take your journey, and pass over the valley of the Arnon. Behold, I have given into your hand Sihon, the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land begin to possess it, and contend with him in battle. This day will I begin to put the dread of you and the fear of you on the peoples who are under the whole sky, who shall hear the report of you, and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. I sent messengers out of the wilderness of Kedemoth to Sihon, king of Heshbon, with words of peace, saying, let me pass through your land. I will go along by the highway. I will turn neither to the right hand nor to the left. You shall sell me food for money that I may eat, and give me water for money that I may drink. Only let me pass through on my feet, as the children of Esau who dwell in Seir, and the Moabites who dwell in Er did to me, until I shall pass over the Jordan, into the land which Yahweh our God gives us. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, would not let us pass by him. For Yahweh your God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate, that he might deliver him into your hand, as at this day. Yahweh said to me, Behold, I have begun to deliver up Sihon and his land before you. Begin to possess, that you may inherit his land. Then Sihon came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Jahaz. Yahweh our God delivered him up before us, and we struck him and his sons and all his people. 
we took all his cities at that time and utterly destroyed every inhabited city with the women and the little ones. We left nothing remaining, only the livestock we took for a prey to ourselves with the spoil of the cities which we had taken. From Aurora, which is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon, and from the city that is in the valley, even to Gilead, there was not a city too high for us. Yahweh our God delivered up all before us. Only to the land of the children of Ammon you didn't come near. All the side of the river Jabbok and the cities of the hill country and wherever Yahweh our God forbade us. Chapter 3 King Og Defeated Then we turned and went up the way to Bashan, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Edrei. Yahweh said to me, Don't fear him, for I have delivered him and all his people and his land into your hand. And you shall do to him as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived at Heshbon. So Yahweh our God delivered into our hand Og also, the king of Bashan, and all his people. And we struck him until none was left to him remaining. We took all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we didn't take from them. Sixty cities, all the region of Argob, the kingdom of Og in Bashan. All these were cities fortified with high walls, gates, and bars. Besides the unwalled towns, a great many. We utterly destroyed them as we did to Sihon, king of Heshbon, utterly destroying every inhabited city with the women and the little ones. But all the livestock and the spoil of the cities we took for a prey to ourselves. We took the land at that time out of the hand of the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, from the valley of the Arnon to Mount Hermon, which Hermon the Sidonians call Syrian, and the Amorites call it Sinir. All the cities of the plain, and all Gilead, and all Bashan, to Salica and Edrei, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the Rephaim. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron, isn't it in Rabbah of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was its length, and four cubits its breadth, after the cubit of a man. Division of the Land This land we took in possession at that time, from Aurora, which is by the valley of the Arnon, and half the hill country of Gilead, and its cities, gave I to the Reubenites and to the Gadites, and the rest of Gilead and all Bashan, the kingdom of Og, gave I to the half-tribe of Manasseh. All the region of Argob, even all Bashan, the same is called the land of Rephaim. Jair, the son of Manasseh, took all the region of Argob to the border of the Geshurites and the Maacathites, and called them even Bashan, after his own name, Havoth Jair, to this day. I gave Gilead to Mekur, to the Reubenites and to the Gadites I gave from Gilead even to the valley of the Arnon, the middle of the valley and the border of it, even to the river Jabbok, which is the border of the children of Ammon, the Arabah also, and the Jordan and the border of it, from Kinnereth even to the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, under the slopes of Pisgah eastward. I commanded you at that time, saying, Yahweh your God has given you this land to possess it. You shall pass over, armed before your brothers, the children of Israel, all the men of valor, 
but your wives and your little ones and your livestock, I know that you have much livestock, shall live in your cities which I have given you until Yahweh gives rest to your brothers as to you. And they also possess the land which Yahweh your God gives them beyond the Jordan. Then you shall return every man to his possession, which I have given you. I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, Your eyes have seen all that Yahweh your God has done to these two kings. So shall Yahweh do to all the kingdoms where you go over. You shall not fear them. For Yahweh your God, he it is who fights for you. Moses forbidden to cross the Jordan. I begged Yahweh at that time, saying, Lord Yahweh, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to your works? and according to your mighty acts. Please let me go over and see the good land that is beyond the Jordan, that goodly mountain, and Lebanon. But Yahweh was angry with me for your sakes, and didn't listen to me. And Yahweh said to me, Let it suffice you. Speak no more to me of this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah, and lift up your eyes westward, and northward, and southward, and eastward, and see with your eyes, for you shall not go over this Jordan, but commission Joshua, and encourage him, and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which you shall see. So we stayed in the valley over against Beth Peor, Chapter 4 An Exhortation to Obedience Now, Israel, listen to the statutes and to the ordinances which I teach you, to do them, that you may live, and go in, and possess the land which Yahweh, the God of your fathers, gives you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahweh your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what Yahweh did because of Baal Peor. For all the men who followed Baal Peor, Yahweh your God has destroyed them from the midst of you. But you who did cling to Yahweh your God are all alive this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and ordinances, even as Yahweh my God commanded me, that you should do so in the midst of the land where you go in to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to them as Yahweh our God is whenever we call on him? What great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently lest you forget the things which your eyes saw, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. But make them known to your children and your children's children. The day that you stood before Yahweh your God in Horeb, when Yahweh said to me, Assemble me the people, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me, all the days that they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. You came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire to the heart of the sky, with darkness, cloud, and thick darkness. 
Yahweh spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the voice of words, but you saw no form. Only you heard a voice. He declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two tables of stone. Yahweh commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and ordinances, that you might do them in the land where you go over to possess it. Warning Against Idolatry Take therefore good heed to yourselves, for you saw no kind of form on the day that Yahweh spoke to you in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, lest you corrupt yourselves and make yourself an engraved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the sky, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the water under the earth. And lest you lift up your eyes to the sky, and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the army of the sky, you are drawn away and worship them and serve them, which Yahweh your God has allotted to all the peoples under the whole sky. But Yahweh has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt, to be to him a people of inheritance, as at this day. Furthermore, Yahweh was angry with me for your sakes, and swore that I should not go over the Jordan, and that I should not go into that good land, which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not go over the Jordan, but you shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of Yahweh your God, which he made with you, and make you an engraved image in the form of anything which Yahweh your God has forbidden you. For Yahweh your God is a devouring fire a jealous God. When you shall father children and children's children, and you shall have been long in the land and shall corrupt yourselves and make an engraved image in the form of anything, and shall do that which is evil in the sight of Yahweh your God to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you shall soon utterly perish from off the land, whereunto you go over the Jordan to possess it. You shall not prolong your days on it, but shall utterly be destroyed. Yahweh will scatter you among the peoples, and you shall be left few in number among the nations, where Yahweh shall lead you away. There you shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But from there you shall seek Yahweh your God, and you shall find him, when you search after him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in oppression, and all these things are come on you, in the latter days you shall return to Yahweh your God, and listen to his voice. For Yahweh your God is a merciful God. He will not fail you, neither destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he swore to them. The Lord alone is God. For ask now of the days that are past, which were before you, since the day that God created man on the earth, and from the one end of the sky to the other, whether there has been any such thing as this great thing is, or has been heard like it. Did ever a people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire, as you have heard, and live? Or has God tried to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation, by trials, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, 
and by a mighty hand, and by an outstretched arm, and by great terrors, according to all that Yahweh your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? It was shown to you so that you might know that Yahweh is God. There is no one else besides him. Out of heaven he made you to hear his voice, that he might instruct you. And on earth he made you to see his great fire, and you heard his words out of the midst of the fire. Because he loved your fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them, and brought you out with his presence, with his great power, out of Egypt, to drive out nations from before you, greater and mightier than you, to bring you in, to give you their land for an inheritance, as at this day. Know therefore this day, and lay it to your heart, that Yahweh, he is God in heaven above, and on the earth beneath, there is none else. You shall keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you this day, that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which Yahweh your God gives you forever. Cities of Refuge then Moses set apart three cities beyond the Jordan toward the sunrise, that the manslayer might flee there, who kills his neighbor unawares, and didn't hate him in time past, and that fleeing to one of these cities he might live, namely Bezer in the wilderness, in the plain country for the Reubenites, and Ramoth in Gilead for the Gadites, and Golan in Bashan for the Manassites. Introduction to the Law This is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the ordinances which Moses spoke to the children of Israel when they came forth out of Egypt, beyond the Jordan, in the valley over against Beth Peor, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived at Heshbon, whom Moses and the children of Israel struck when they came forth out of Egypt. They took his land in possession, and the land of Og, king of Bashan, the two kings of the Amorites, who were beyond the Jordan, toward the sunrise, from Aurora, which is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon, even to Mount Sion. The same is Hermon. And all the Arabah beyond the Jordan eastward, even to the sea of the Arabah, under the slopes of Pisgah. Chapter 5 The Covenant in Horeb Moses called to all Israel, and said to them, Hear, Israel, the statutes and the ordinances which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn them and observe to do them. Yahweh our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. Yahweh didn't make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. Yahweh spoke with you, face to face on the mountain, out of the midst of the fire. I stood between Yahweh and you at that time, to show you the word of Yahweh, for you were afraid because of the fire, and didn't go up onto the mountain, saying, The Ten Commandments I am Yahweh, your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make an engraved image for yourself, nor any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them, 
nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, and on the third and on the fourth generation of those who hate me, and showing loving kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahweh your God in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy, as Yahweh your God commanded you. You shall labor six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your God, in which you shall not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your livestock, nor your stranger who is within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. You shall remember that you were a servant in the land of Egypt, and Yahweh your God brought you out of there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, Yahweh your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, as Yahweh your God commanded you, that your days may be long, and that it may go well with you in the land which Yahweh your God gives you. You shall not murder, neither shall you commit adultery, neither shall you steal, neither shall you give false testimony against your neighbor. Neither shall you covet your neighbor's wife, neither shall you desire your neighbor's house, his field, or his male servant, or his female servant, his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. Moses intercedes for the people. These words Yahweh spoke to all your assembly on the mountain out of the midst of the fire of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a great voice, and he added no more. He wrote them on two tables of stone, and gave them to me. It happened, when you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, that you came near to me, even all the heads of your tribes, and your elders, and you said, Behold, Yahweh our God has shown us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God does speak with man, and he lives. Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of Yahweh our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go near and hear all that Yahweh our God shall say and tell us all that Yahweh our God shall tell you and we will hear it and do it. Yahweh heard the voice of your words when you spoke to me. And Yahweh said to me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken to you. They have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there were such a heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Go tell them, return to your tents. But as for you, stand here by me, and I will tell you all the commandment and the statutes and the ordinances which you shall teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. You shall observe to do therefore, as Yahweh your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left, 
You shall walk in all the way which Yahweh your God has commanded you, that you may live, and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Chapter 6 The Greatest Commandment Now this is the commandment, the statutes, and the ordinances, which Yahweh your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you go over to possess it, that you might fear Yahweh your God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son, and your son's son, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Hear, therefore, Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may increase mightily, as Yahweh, the God of your fathers, has promised to you, in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, Israel, Yahweh is our God, Yahweh is one, and you shall love Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. These words which I command you this day shall be on your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign on your hand, and they shall be for symbols between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. It shall be when Yahweh your God shall bring you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you great and goodly cities which you didn't build, and houses full of all good things which you didn't fill, and cisterns dug out which you didn't dig, vineyards and olive trees which you didn't plant, and you shall eat and be full. Then beware lest you forget Yahweh, who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall fear Yahweh your God, and you shall serve him, and shall swear by his name. You shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the peoples who are around you. For Yahweh your God in the midst of you is a jealous God, lest the anger of Yahweh your God be kindled against you, and he destroy you from off the face of the earth. You shall not tempt Yahweh your God as you tempted him in Massa. You shall diligently keep the commandments of Yahweh your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded you. You shall do that which is right and good in the sight of Yahweh, that it may be well with you and that you may go in and possess the good land which Yahweh swore to your fathers, to thrust out all your enemies from before you, as Yahweh has spoken. Teach your children. When your son asks you in time to come, saying, What do the testimonies? the statutes, and the ordinances which Yahweh our God has commanded you mean. Then you shall tell your son, We were Pharaoh's bondservants in Egypt, and Yahweh brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and Yahweh showed great and awesome signs and wonders on Egypt, on Pharaoh, and on all his house before our eyes. And he brought us out from there, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore to our fathers. Yahweh commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yahweh our God, for our good always, 
that he might preserve us alive, as at this day it shall be righteousness to us if we observe to do all this commandment before Yahweh our God, as he has commanded us. Chapter 7 Casting Out the Nations when Yahweh your God shall bring you into the land where you go to possess it, and shall cast out many nations before you, the Hittite, and the Girgashite, and the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when Yahweh your God shall deliver them up before you, and you shall strike them, then you shall utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Neither shall you make marriages with them. Your daughter you shall not give to his son, nor shall you take his daughter for your son. For he will turn away your son from following me, that they may serve other gods so the anger of Yahweh would be kindled against you, and he would destroy you quickly. But you shall deal with them like this. You shall break down their altars, and dash their pillars in pieces, and cut down their asherim, and burn their engraved images with fire. For you are a holy people to Yahweh your God. Yahweh your God has chosen you, to be a people for his own possession above all peoples who are on the face of the earth. Yahweh didn't set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But because Yahweh loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, has Yahweh brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that Yahweh your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and loving kindness with them who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repays those who hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him who hates him. He will repay him to his face. You shall, therefore, keep the commandment and the statutes and the ordinances which I command you this day to do them. God's Promises it shall happen, because you listen to these ordinances and keep and do them, that Yahweh your God will keep with you the covenant and the loving kindness which he swore to your fathers, and he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground, your grain and your new wine, and your oil, the increase of your livestock, and the young of your flock, in the land which he swore to your fathers to give you. You shall be blessed above all peoples. There shall not be male or female barren among you, or among your livestock. Yahweh will take away from you all sickness, and none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you know, he will put on you, but will lay them on all those who hate you. You shall consume all the peoples whom Yahweh your God shall deliver to you. Your eye shall not pity them, neither shall you serve their gods, for that will be a snare to you. If you shall say in your heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them. You shall well remember what Yahweh your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt, 
the great trials which your eyes saw, and the signs, and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the outstretched arm by which Yahweh your God brought you out. So shall Yahweh your God do to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Moreover, Yahweh your God will send the hornet among them until those who are left and hide themselves perish from before you. You shall not be scared of them, for Yahweh your God is in the midst of you, a great and awesome God. Yahweh your God will cast out those nations before you by little and little. You may not consume them at once, lest the animals of the field increase on you. But Yahweh your God will deliver them up before you, and will confuse them with a great confusion until they be destroyed. He will deliver their kings into your hand, and you shall make their name to perish from under the sky. No man shall be able to stand before you until you have destroyed them. You shall burn the engraved images of their gods with fire. You shall not covet the silver or the gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared in it. For it is an abomination to Yahweh your God. You shall not bring an abomination into your house and become a devoted thing like it. You shall utterly detest it, and you shall utterly abhor it, for it is a devoted thing. Chapter 8 Remember the Lord your God. You shall observe to do all the commandment which I command you this day, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers. You shall remember all the way which Yahweh your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness that he might humble you, to prove you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you didn't know, neither did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread only, but by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh does man live. Your clothing didn't grow old on you, neither did your foot swell these forty years. You shall consider in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so Yahweh your God chastens you. You shall keep the commandments of Yahweh your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For Yahweh your God brings you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of springs and underground water flowing into valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you shall eat bread without scarceness. You shall not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you may dig copper. You shall eat and be full, and you shall bless Yahweh your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware lest you forget Yahweh your God in not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes which I command you this day, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built goodly houses and lived therein, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up, and you forget Yahweh your God, who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, in which were fiery serpents and scorpions, and thirsty ground where there was no water, 
who brought you forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers didn't know, that he might humble you, and that he might prove you, to do you good at your latter end. And lest you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. But you shall remember Yahweh your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as at this day it shall be, if you shall forget Yahweh your God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish, as the nations that Yahweh makes to perish before you, so you shall perish, because you wouldn't listen to the voice of Yahweh your God. Chapter 9 Assurance of Victory Hear, Israel, you are to pass over the Jordan this day to go in to dispossess nations greater and mightier than yourself, cities great and fortified up to the sky, a people great and tall, the sons of the Anakim, whom you know and of whom you have heard say, Who can stand before the sons of Anak? Know therefore this day that Yahweh your God is he who goes over before you as a devouring fire. He will destroy them, and he will bring them down before you. So you shall drive them out and make them to perish quickly, as Yahweh has spoken to you. Don't say in your heart, after Yahweh your God has thrust them out from before you, saying, for my righteousness, Yahweh has brought me in to possess this land. Because Yahweh drives them out before you because of the wickedness of these nations, not for your righteousness or for the uprightness of your heart do you go in to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, Yahweh your God does drive them out from before you and that he may establish the word which Yahweh swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Know, therefore, that Yahweh your God doesn't give you this good land to possess it for your righteousness, for you are a stiff-necked people. The Golden Calf Remember, don't forget, how you provoked Yahweh your God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that you went forth out of the land of Egypt until you came to this place, you have been rebellious against Yahweh. Also in Horeb, you provoked Yahweh to wrath, and Yahweh was angry with you to destroy you. When I was gone up onto the mountain to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant, which Yahweh made with you. Then I stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights. I did neither eat bread nor drink water. Yahweh delivered to me the two tables of stone written with the finger of God, and on them was written according to all the words which Yahweh spoke with you on the mountain out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. It came to pass at the end of forty days and forty nights that Yahweh gave me the two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. Yahweh said to me, Arise, get down quickly from here, for your people whom you have brought forth out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten image. Furthermore, Yahweh spoke to me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under the sky, and I will make of you a nation mightier and greater than they. So I turned and came down from the mountain, 
and the mountain was burning with fire and the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands i looked and behold you had sinned against yahweh your god you had made yourselves a molten calf you had turned aside quickly out of the way which yahweh had commanded you i took hold of the two tables and cast them out of my two hands and broke them before your eyes i fell down before yahweh as at the first forty days and forty nights i did neither eat bread nor drink water because of all your sin which you sinned in doing that which was evil in the sight of yahweh to provoke him to anger for i was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure with which yahweh was angry against you to destroy you but yahweh listened to me that time also yahweh was very angry with aaron to destroy him and i prayed for aaron also at the same time i took your sin the calf which you had made and burnt it with fire and stamped it grinding it very small until it was as fine as dust and i cast its dust into the brook that descended out of the mountain at tabara and at massa and at kibroth hateva you provoked yahweh to wrath when yahweh sent you from kadesh Barnea, saying go up and possess the land which i have given you then you rebelled against the commandment of yahweh your god and you didn't believe him nor listen to his voice you have been rebellious against yahweh from the day that i knew you so i fell down before yahweh the forty days and forty nights that i fell down because yahweh had said he would destroy you i prayed to yahweh and said lord yahweh don't destroy your people and your inheritance that you have redeemed through your greatness that you have brought forth out of egypt with a mighty hand remember your servants abraham isaac and jacob don't look to the stubbornness of this people nor to their wickedness nor to their sin lest the land you brought us out from say because yahweh was not able to bring them into the land which he promised to them and because he hated them he has brought them out to kill them in the wilderness yet they are your people and your inheritance which you brought out by your great power and by your outstretched arm chapter 10 the new tablets of stone at that time yahweh said to me cut two tablets of stone like the first and come up to me onto the mountain and make an ark of wood i will write on the tables the words that were on the first tables which you broke and you shall put them in the ark so i made an ark of acacia wood and cut two tables of stone like the first and went up onto the mountain having the two tables in my hand he wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which Yahweh spoke to you on the mountain out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And Yahweh gave them to me. I turned and came down from the mountain and put the tables in the ark which I had made, and there they are as Yahweh commanded me. The children of Israel traveled from Beeroth bene Jeachin to Mozira. There Aaron died, and there he was buried, and Eleazar his son ministered in the priest's office in his place. From there they traveled to Gadgoda, and from Gadgoda to Jadbatha, a land of brooks of water. At that time Yahweh set apart the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of Yahweh, to stand before Yahweh to minister to him and to bless in his name to this day therefore levi has no portion nor inheritance with his brothers yahweh is his inheritance according as yahweh your god spoke to him i stayed on the mountain as at the first time forty days and forty nights 
and Yahweh listened to me that time also. Yahweh would not destroy you. Yahweh said to me, Arise, take your journey before the people, and they shall go in and possess the land, which I swore to their fathers to give to them. A Call to Obedience Now Israel, what does Yahweh your God require of you but to fear Yahweh your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul, to keep the commandments of Yahweh and his statutes, which I command you this day for your good. Behold, to Yahweh your God belongs heaven and the heaven of heavens, the earth with all that is therein. Only Yahweh had a delight in your fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all peoples, as at this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For Yahweh your God, he is God of gods, and Lord of lords, the great God, the mighty, and the awesome, who doesn't respect persons, nor takes reward. He does execute justice for the fatherless and widow and loves the foreigner in giving him food and clothing. Therefore, love the foreigner, for you were foreigners in the land of Egypt. You shall fear Yahweh your God. You shall serve him, and you shall cling to him, and you shall swear by his name. He is your praise, and he is your God who has done for you these great and awesome things, which your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down into Egypt with seventy persons, and now Yahweh your God has made you as the stars of the sky for multitude. End of section 16. Chapter 11 Rewards of Obedience Therefore, you shall love Yahweh your God, and keep his instructions, and his statutes, and his ordinances, and his commandments always. Know this day, for I don't speak with your children who have not known, and who have not seen the chastisement of Yahweh your God his greatness, his mighty hand, and his outstretched arm, and his signs, and his works, which he did in the midst of Egypt to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and to all his land, and what he did to the army of Egypt, to their horses, and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, and how Yahweh has destroyed them to this day, and what he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, and their households, and their tents, and every living thing that followed them in the midst of all Israel. But your eyes have seen all the great work of Yahweh, which he did. God's Great Blessings Therefore you shall keep all the commandment which I command you this day, that you may be strong, and go in and possess the land where you go over to possess it, and that you may prolong your days in the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers to give to them and to their seed, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land where you go in to possess it isn't as the land of Egypt that you came out from, where you sowed your seed and watered it with your foot as a garden of herbs. But the land where you go over to possess it is a land of hills and valleys and drinks water of the rain of the sky, a land which Yahweh your God cares for. The eyes of Yahweh your God are always on it 
from the beginning of the year even to the end of the year. It shall happen, if you shall listen diligently to my commandments, which I command you this day, to love Yahweh your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give the rain of your land in its season, the former rain and the latter rain, that you may gather in your grain and your new wine and your oil. I will give grass in your fields for your livestock, and you shall eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And the anger of Yahweh be kindled against you, and he shut up the sky, so that there shall be no rain, and the land shall not yield its fruit, and you perish quickly from off the good land which Yahweh gives you. Remember God's words. Therefore you shall lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them for a sign on your hand, and they shall be for symbols between your eyes. You shall teach them your children, talking of them, when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, in the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers to give them, as the days of the heavens above the earth. For if you shall diligently keep all this commandment which I command you, to do it, to love Yahweh your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cling to him, then will Yahweh drive out all these nations from before you, and you shall dispossess nations greater and mightier than yourselves. Every place whereon the sole of your foot shall tread shall be yours, from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the hinder sea shall be your border. No man shall be able to stand before you. Yahweh your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you on all the land that you shall tread on, as he has spoken to you. A Blessing and a Curse Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you shall listen to the commandments of Yahweh your God, which I command you this day. And the curse, if you shall not listen to the commandments of Yahweh your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. It shall happen when Yahweh your God shall bring you into the land where you go to possess it, that you shall set the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. Aren't they beyond the Jordan, behind the way of the going down of the sun, in the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the Arabah, over against Gilgal, beside the oaks of Mori? For you are to pass over the Jordan to go in to possess the land which Yahweh your God gives you, and you shall possess it and dwell therein. You shall observe to do all the statutes and the ordinances which I set before you this day. Chapter 12 One Place for Worship these are the statutes and the ordinances which you shall observe to do in the land which Yahweh, the God of your fathers, has given you to possess it all the days that you live on the earth. You shall surely destroy all the places in which the nations that you shall dispossess served their gods, on the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree and you shall break down their altars, and dash in pieces their pillars, and burn their asherim with fire. And you shall cut down the engraved images of their gods, and you shall destroy their name out of that place. You shall not do so to Yahweh your God, but to the place which Yahweh your God shall choose 
out of all your tribes to put his name there. Even to his habitation you shall seek, and there you shall come, and there you shall bring your burnt offerings, and your sacrifices, and your tithes, and the wave offering of your hand, and your vows, and your free will offerings, and the firstborn of your herd and of your flock. And there you shall eat before Yahweh your God, and you shall rejoice in all that you put your hand to, you and your households, in which Yahweh your God has blessed you. You shall not do after all the things that we do here this day, every man whatever is right in his own eyes. For you haven't yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which Yahweh your God gives you. But when you go over the Jordan and dwell in the land which Yahweh your God causes you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies around you, so that you dwell in safety, then it shall happen that to the place which Yahweh your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there, there you shall bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the wave offering of your hand, and all your choice vows which you vow to Yahweh. You shall rejoice before Yahweh your God, you and your sons, and your daughters, and your male servants, and your female servants, and the Levite who is within your gates, because he has no portion nor inheritance with you. Take heed to yourself that you don't offer your burnt offerings in every place that you see, but in the place which Yahweh shall choose in one of your tribes. There you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I command you. Notwithstanding, you may kill and eat flesh within all your gates, after all the desire of your soul, according to the blessing of Yahweh your God, which he has given you. The unclean and the clean may eat of it, as of the gazelle and as of the heart. Only you shall not eat the blood. You shall pour it out on the earth as water. You may not eat within your gates the tithe of your grain, or of your new wine, or of your oil, or the firstborn of your herd, or of your flock, nor any of your vows which you vow, nor your free will offerings, nor the wave offering of your hand. But you shall eat them before Yahweh your God, in the place which Yahweh your God shall choose, you and your son and your daughter, and your male servant, and your female servant, and the Levite who is within your gates. And you shall rejoice before Yahweh your God in all that you put your hand to. Take heed to yourself that you don't forsake the Levite as long as you live in your land. When Yahweh your God shall enlarge your border as he has promised you, and you shall say, I want to eat meat, because your soul desires to eat meat, you may eat meat after all the desire of your soul. If the place which Yahweh your God shall choose to put his name there is too far from you, then you shall kill of your herd and of your flock which Yahweh has given you, as I have commanded you, and you may eat within your gates after all the desire of your soul. Even as the gazelle and as the heart is eaten, so you shall eat of it. The unclean and the clean may eat of it alike. Only be sure that you don't eat the blood, for the blood is the life, and you shall not eat the life with the flesh. You shall not eat it. You shall pour it out on the earth as water. You shall not eat it, that it may go well with you and with your children after you when you shall do that which is right in the eyes of Yahweh. Only your holy things which you have, and your vows, you shall take, and go to the place which Yahweh shall choose. And you shall offer your burnt offerings, the flesh and the blood, on the altar of Yahweh your God. And the blood of your sacrifices 
shall be poured out on the altar of Yahweh your God, and you shall eat the flesh. Observe and hear all these words which I command you, that it may go well with you and with your children after you forever. When you do that which is good and right in the eyes of Yahweh your God. Warning Against Idolatry When Yahweh your God shall cut off the nations from before you, where you go in to dispossess them, and you dispossess them and dwell in their land, take heed to yourself that you not be ensnared to follow them after that they are destroyed from before you, and that you not inquire after their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods? I will do likewise. You shall not do so to Yahweh your God, for every abomination to Yahweh, which he hates, have they done to their gods. For even their sons and their daughters do they burn in the fire to their gods. Whatever thing I command you, that you shall observe to do. You shall not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Chapter 13 Idolaters to be put to death If there arise in the midst of you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and he give you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, of which he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods, which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or to that dreamer of dreams, for Yahweh your God proves you to know whether you love Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after Yahweh your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cling to him. That prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken rebellion against Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to draw you aside out of the way which Yahweh your God commanded you to walk in. So you shall put away the evil from the midst of you. If your brother, the son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, or the wife of your bosom, or your friend, who is as your own soul, entice you secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which you have not known, you nor your fathers, of the gods of the peoples who are around you, near to you or far off from you, from the one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. You shall not consent to him, nor listen to him, neither shall your eye pity him, neither shall you spare, neither shall you conceal him, but you shall surely kill him. Your hand shall be first on him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. You shall stone him to death with stones, because he has sought to draw you away from Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. All Israel shall hear and fear, and shall not do any more such wickedness as this is in the midst of you. Idolatrous Cities to be Destroyed If you shall hear tale concerning one of your cities, which Yahweh your God gives you to dwell there, saying, Certain base fellows are gone out from the midst of you, and have drawn away the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. Then you shall inquire and make search and ask diligently, and behold, if it be truth and the thing certain, 
that such abomination is done in the midst of you. You shall surely strike the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly, and all that is therein, and its livestock, with the edge of the sword. You shall gather all its spoil into the midst of its street, and shall burn with fire the city, and all its spoil, every whit, to Yahweh your God. And it shall be a heap forever. It shall not be built again. Nothing of the devoted thing shall cling to your hand, that Yahweh may turn from the fierceness of his anger, and show you mercy, and have compassion on you, and multiply you, as he has sworn to your fathers, when you shall listen to the voice of Yahweh your God, to keep all his commandments which I command you this day, to do that which is right in the eyes of Yahweh your God. Chapter 14 Clean and Unclean Animals You are the children of Yahweh, your God. You shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. For you are a holy people to Yahweh, your God. And Yahweh has chosen you to be a people for his own possession above all peoples who are on the face of the earth. You shall not eat any abominable thing. These are the animals which you may eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goat, the hart, and the gazelle, and the roebuck, and the wild goat, and the ibex, and the antelope, and the chamois. Every animal that parts the hoof and has the hoof cloven in two and choose the good among the animals that may you eat. Nevertheless, these you shall not eat of them that chew the could, or of those who have the hoof cloven, the camel, and the hare, and the rabbit, because they chew the could, but don't part the hoof. They are unclean to you. The pig, because it has a split hoof, but doesn't chew the could, is unclean to you. Of their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. These you may eat of all that are in the waters. Whatever has fins and scales may you eat, and whatever doesn't have fins and scales you shall not eat. It is unclean to you. Of all clean birds you may eat, but these are they of which you shall not eat, the eagle, and the vulture, and the osprey, and the red kite, and the falcon, and the kite after its kind, and every raven after its kind, and the ostrich, and the owl, and the seagull, and the hawk after its kind the little owl, and the great owl, and the horned owl, and the pelican, and the vulture, and the cormorant, and the stork, and the heron after its kind, and the hoopoe, and the bat. All winged creeping things are unclean to you. They shall not be eaten. Of all clean birds you may eat. You shall not eat of anything that dies of itself. You may give it to the foreigner living among you who is within your gates, that he may eat it. Or you may sell it to a foreigner, for you are a holy people to Yahweh your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Giving Tithes you shall surely tithe all the increase of your seed, that which comes forth from the field year by year. You shall eat before Yahweh your God in the place which he shall choose to cause his name to dwell there, the tithe of your grain, of your new wine, and of your oil, and the firstborn of your herd, and of your flock that you may learn to fear Yahweh your God always.
if the way is too long for you, so that you are not able to carry it, because the place is too far from you, which Yahweh your God shall choose to set his name there, when Yahweh your God shall bless you, then you shall turn it into money, and bind up the money in your hand, and shall go to the place which Yahweh your God shall choose. And you shall bestow the money for whatever your soul desires, for cattle, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatever your soul asks of you. And you shall eat there before Yahweh your God, and you shall rejoice, you and your household. The Levite who is within your gates, you shall not forsake him, for he has no portion nor inheritance with you. At the end of every three years, you shall bring forth all the tithe of your increase in the same year, and shall lay it up within your gates. And the Levite, because he has no portion nor inheritance with you, and the foreigner living among you, and the fatherless, and the widow who are within your gates, shall come, and shall eat and be satisfied that Yahweh your God may bless you in all the work of your hand, which you do. Chapter 15 The Seventh Year At the end of every seven years you shall make a release. This is the way of the release. Every creditor shall release that which he has lent to his neighbor, he shall not exact it of his neighbor and his brother, because Yahweh's release has been proclaimed. Of a foreigner you may exact it, but whatever of yours is with your brother, your hand shall release. However, there shall be no poor with you, for Yahweh will surely bless you in the land which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance to possess it. If only you diligently listen to the voice of Yahweh your God to observe to do all this commandment which I command you this day. For Yahweh your God will bless you as he promised you, and you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow, and you shall rule over many nations, but they shall not rule over you. Generosity in Lending and Giving If a poor man, one of your brothers, is with you within any of your gates in your land, which Yahweh your God gives you, you shall not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from your poor brother, but you shall surely open your hand to him, and shall surely lend him sufficient for his need, in that which he wants. Beware that there not be a base thought in your heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is at hand, and your eye be evil against your poor brother, and you give him nothing, and he cry to Yahweh against you, and it be sin to you. You shall surely give him, and your heart shall not be grieved when you give to him because that for this thing Yahweh your God will bless you in all your work and in all that you put your hand to. For the poor will never cease out of the land. Therefore I command you, saying, You shall surely open your hand to your brother, to your needy, and to your poor in your land. Release of Hebrew Servants if your brother, a Hebrew man, or a Hebrew woman, is sold to you, and serves you six years, then in the seventh year you shall let him go free from you. When you let him go free from you, you shall not let him go empty. You shall furnish him liberally out of your flock, and out of your threshing floor, and out of your wine press. As Yahweh your God has blessed you, you shall give to him. You shall remember that you were a bondservant in the land of Egypt, and Yahweh your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this thing today. It shall be, if he tells you, 
I will not go out from you, because he loves you and your house, because he is well with you, then you shall take an awl, and thrust it through his ear to the door, and he shall be your servant for ever. Also to your female servant you shall do likewise. It shall not seem hard to you when you let him go free from you, for to the double of the hire of a hireling has he served you six years, and Yahweh your God will bless you in all that you do. Firstborn Animals All the firstborn males that are born of your herd and of your flock you shall sanctify to Yahweh your God. You shall do no work with the firstborn of your herd, nor shear the firstborn of your flock. You shall eat it before Yahweh your God, year by year, in the place which Yahweh shall choose, you and your household. If it have any blemish, as if it be lame or blind, any ill blemish whatever, you shall not sacrifice it to Yahweh your God. You shall eat it within your gates, the unclean and the clean shall eat it alike as the gazelle and the heart. Only you shall not eat its blood. You shall pour it out on the ground as water. Chapter 16 The Feast of the Passover Observe the months of Abib, and keep the Passover to Yahweh your God. For in the month of Abib, Yahweh your God brought you forth out of Egypt by night. You shall sacrifice the Passover to Yahweh your God, of the flock and the herd, in the place which Yahweh shall choose, to cause his name to dwell there. You shall eat no leavened bread with it. You shall eat unleavened bread with it seven days, even the bread of affliction. For you came forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that you may remember the day when you came forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of your life. No yeast shall be seen with you in all your borders seven days. Neither shall any of the flesh which you sacrificed the first day at evening remain all night until the morning. You may not sacrifice the Passover within any of your gates, which Yahweh your God gives you. But at the place which Yahweh your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell in, there you shall sacrifice the Passover at evening, at the going down of the sun, at the season that you came forth out of Egypt. You shall roast and eat it in the place which Yahweh your God shall choose, and you shall turn in the morning and go to your tents. Six days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to Yahweh your God. You shall do no work therein. The Feast of Weeks You shall count for yourselves seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain you shall begin to number seven weeks. You shall keep the Feast of Weeks to Yahweh your God with a tribute of a free will offering of your hand, which you shall give, according as Yahweh your God blesses you. And you shall rejoice before Yahweh your God, you and your son and your daughter and your male servant and your female servant, and the Levite who is within your gates, and the foreigner, and the fatherless and the widow who are in the midst of you, in the place which Yahweh your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. You shall remember that you were a bondservant in Egypt, and you shall observe and do these statutes. The Feast of Tabernacles you shall keep the feast of tents seven days, 
after that you have gathered in from your threshing floor and from your wine press and you shall rejoice in your feast you and your son and your daughter and your male servant and your female servant and the levite and the foreigner and the fatherless and the widow who are within your gates you shall keep a feast to yahweh your god seven days in the place which yahweh shall choose because yahweh your god will bless you in all your increase and in all the work of your hands and you shall be altogether joyful three times in a year shall all your males appear before yahweh your god in the place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tents and they shall not appear before yahweh empty every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of yahweh your god which he has given you judges and justice you shall make judges and officers in all your gates which yahweh your god gives you according to your tribes and they shall judge the people with righteous judgment you shall not rest judgment you shall not respect persons neither shall you take a bribe for a bribe does blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous you shall follow that which is altogether just that you may live and inherit the land which yahweh your god gives you forbidden forms of worship you shall not plant for yourselves an asherah of any kind of tree beside the altar of yahweh your god which you shall make for yourselves neither shall you set yourself up a pillar which yahweh your god hates chapter 17 detestable sacrifices you shall not sacrifice to yahweh your god an ox or a sheep in which is a blemish or anything evil for that is an abomination to yahweh your god purge the idolater if there be found in the midst of you within any of your gates which yahweh your god gives you man or woman who does that which is evil in the sight of yahweh your god in transgressing his covenant and has gone and served other gods and worshipped them or the sun or the moon or any of the army of the sky which i have not commanded and it be told you and you have heard of it then you shall inquire diligently and behold if it be true and the thing certain that such abomination is done in israel then you shall bring forth that man or that woman who has done this evil thing to your gates even the man or the woman and you shall stone them to death with stones at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he who is to die be put to death at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death the hand of the witnesses shall be first on him to put him to death and afterward the hand of all the people so you shall put away the evil from the midst of you courts of law if there arises a matter too hard for you in judgment between blood and blood between plea and plea and between stroke and stroke being matters of controversy within your gates then you shall arise and go up to the place which yahweh your god shall choose and you shall come to the priests the levites and to the judge who shall be in those days and you shall inquire and they shall show you the sentence of judgment you shall do according to the tenor of the sentence which they shall show you 
from that place which Yahweh shall choose. And you shall observe to do according to all that they shall teach you, according to the tenor of the law which they shall teach you, and according to the judgment which they shall tell you, you shall do. You shall not turn aside from the sentence which they shall show you, to the right hand, nor to the left. The man who does presumptuously, in not listening to the priest who stands to minister there before Yahweh your God, or to the judge, even that man shall die, and you shall put away the evil from Israel. All the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. Election and Duties of Kings When you are come to the land which Yahweh your God gives you, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like all the nations that are around me, you shall surely set him king over yourselves, whom Yahweh your God shall choose. One from among your brothers you shall set king over you. You may not put a foreigner over you, who is not your brother. Only he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to the end that he may multiply horses. Because Yahweh has said to you, You shall not go back that way again. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart not turn away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. It shall be, when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear Yahweh his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes, to do them, that his heart not be lifted up above his brothers, and that he not turn aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Chapter 18 Provision for Priests and Levites The priests, the Levites, even all the tribe of Levi, shall have no portion nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of Yahweh made by fire and his inheritance. They shall have no inheritance among their brothers. Yahweh is their inheritance, as he has spoken to them. This shall be the priests due from the people, from those who offer a sacrifice, whether it be ox or sheep, that they shall give to the priest the shoulder and the two cheeks and the maw the first fruits of your grain, of your new wine, and of your oil, and the first of the fleece of your sheep, you shall give him. For Yahweh your God has chosen him out of all your tribes to stand to minister in the name of Yahweh, him and his sons forever. If a Levite comes from any of your gates out of all Israel, where he lives as a foreigner, and comes with all the desire of his soul to the place which Yahweh shall choose. Then he shall minister in the name of Yahweh his God, as all his brothers the Levites do, who stand there before Yahweh. They shall have like portions to eat, besides that which comes of the sale of his patrimony. Sorcery Forbidden when you are come into the land which Yahweh your God gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found with you anyone who makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, one who uses divination, one who practices sorcery, or an enchanter, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, 
or a consulter with a familiar spirit, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For whoever does these things is an abomination to Yahweh. And because of these abominations, Yahweh your God does drive them out from before you. You shall be perfect with Yahweh your God. For these nations that you shall dispossess, listen to those who practice sorcery and to diviners. But as for you, Yahweh your God has not allowed you so to do. A New Prophet Yahweh your God will raise up to you a prophet from the midst of you, of your brothers, like me. You shall listen to him. This is according to all that you desired of Yahweh your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I not die. Yahweh said to me, They have well said that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brothers, like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I shall command him. It shall happen that whoever will not listen to my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who shall speak a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who shall speak in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. If you say in your heart, How shall we know the word which Yahweh has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of Yahweh, if the thing doesn't follow nor happen, that is the thing which Yahweh has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Chapter 19 Cities of Refuge When Yahweh your God shall cut off the nations, whose land Yahweh your God gives you, and you succeed them, and dwell in their cities and in their houses. You shall set apart three cities for you in the midst of your land, which Yahweh your God gives you to possess it. You shall prepare you the way, and divide the borders of your land, which Yahweh your God causes you to inherit, into three parts, that every manslayer may flee there. This is the case of the manslayer that shall flee there and live. Whoever kills his neighbor unawares and didn't hate him in time past, as when a man goes into the forest with his neighbor to chop wood, and his hand fetches a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slips from the handle and lights on his neighbor, so that he dies. He shall flee to one of these cities and live lest the avenger of blood pursue the manslayer, while his heart is hot, and overtake him, because the way is long, and strike him mortally. Whereas he was not worthy of death, inasmuch as he didn't hate him in time past. Therefore I command you, saying, You shall set apart three cities for yourselves. If Yahweh your God enlarges your border, as he has sworn to your fathers, and gives you all the land which he promised to give to your fathers, if you keep all this commandment to do it, which I command you this day, to love Yahweh your God, and to walk ever in his ways. Then you shall add three cities more for yourselves, besides these three, that innocent blood not be shed in the midst of your land, which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance, and so blood be on you. But if any man hates his neighbor, and lies in wait for him, and rises up against him, and strikes him mortally so that he dies, and he flees into one of these cities, then the elders of his city shall send and bring him there, 
and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood, that he may die. Your eye shall not pity him, but you shall put away the innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with you. You shall not remove your neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set, in your inheritance which you shall inherit, in the land that Yahweh your God gives you to possess it. The Testimony of Witnesses One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity, or for any sin, in any sin that he sins, at the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall a matter be established. If an unrighteous witness rise up against any man to testify against him of wrongdoing, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before Yahweh, before the priests and the judges who shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition, and behold, if the witness is a false witness and has testified falsely against his brother, then you shall do to him as he had thought to do to his brother. So you shall put away the evil from the midst of you. Those who remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil in the midst of you. Your eyes shall not pity. Life shall go for life eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Chapter 20 Laws of Warfare When you go forth to battle against your enemies, and see horses, and chariots, and a people more than you, you shall not be afraid of them. For Yahweh your God is with you, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. It shall be, when you draw near to the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak to the people, and shall tell them, Hear, Israel, you draw near this day to battle against your enemies. Don't let your heart faint. Don't be afraid, nor tremble. Neither be scared of them, for Yahweh your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. The officers shall speak to the people, saying, What man is there who has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man dedicate it. What man is there who has planted a vineyard and has not used its fruit? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man use its fruit. What man is there who has pledged to be married a wife and has not taken her? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man take her. The officers shall speak further to the people, and they shall say, What man is there who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house, lest his brother's heart melt as his heart. It shall be, when the officers have made an end of speaking to the people, that they shall appoint captains of armies at the head of the people. When you draw near to a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace to it. It shall be, if it makes you answer of peace and opens to you, then it shall be that all the people who are found therein shall become tributary to you and shall serve you. If it will make no peace with you, but will make war against you, then you shall besiege it. And when Yahweh your God delivers it into your hand, you shall strike every male of it with the edge of the sword. But the women and the little ones and the livestock and all that is in the city, even all its spoil, you shall take for a prey to yourself, 
and you shall eat the spoil of your enemies, which Yahweh your God has given you. Thus you shall do to all the cities which are very far off from you, which are not of the cities of these nations, but of the cities of these peoples, that Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance. You shall save alive nothing that breathes, but you shall utterly destroy them, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, as Yahweh your God has commanded you, that they not teach you to do after all their abominations, which they have done to their gods. So would you sin against Yahweh your God. When you shall besiege a city a long time, in making war against it to take it, you shall not destroy its trees by wielding an axe against them, for you may eat of them, and you shall not cut them down. For is the tree of the field man, that it should be besieged of you? Only the trees of which you know that they are not trees for food, you shall destroy and cut them down. And you shall build bulwarks against the city that makes war with you until it fall. Chapter 21 the Atonement for an Unsolved Murder If one be found slain in the land which Yahweh your God gives you to possess it, lying in the field, and it isn't known who has struck him, then your elders and your judges shall come forth, and they shall measure to the cities which are around him who is slain, and it shall be, that the city which is nearest to the slain man, even the elders of that city, shall take a heifer of the herd, which hasn't been worked with, and which has not drawn in the yoke. And the elders of that city shall bring down the heifer to a valley with running water, which is neither plowed nor sown, and shall break the heifer's neck there in the valley. The priests, the sons of Levi, shall come near. For them Yahweh your God has chosen to minister to him, and to bless in the name of Yahweh. And according to their word shall every controversy and every stroke be. All the elders of that city, who are nearest to the slain man, shall wash their hands over the heifer whose neck was broken in the valley. And they shall answer and say, Our hands have not shed this blood, neither have our eyes seen it. Forgive, Yahweh, your people Israel, whom you have redeemed, and don't allow innocent blood to remain in the midst of your people Israel. The blood shall be forgiven them. So you shall put away the innocent blood from the midst of you, when you shall do that which is right in the eyes of Yahweh. Marrying a Captive Woman When you go forth to battle against your enemies, and Yahweh your God delivers them into your hands, and you carry them away captive, and see among the captives a beautiful woman, and you have a desire to her, and would take her to you as wife, then you shall bring her home to your house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails, and she shall put the clothing of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in your house, and bewail her father and her mother a full month, and after that you shall go in to her, and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. It shall be, if you have no delight in her, then you shall let her go where she will, but you shall not sell her at all for money. You shall not deal with her as a slave, because you have humbled her. Inheritance Rights of the Firstborn If a man have two wives, the one beloved and the other hated, and they have borne him children, 
both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son be hers who was hated, then it shall be, in the day that he causes his sons to inherit that which he has, that he may not make the son of the beloved the firstborn before the son of the hated, who is the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the firstborn, the son of the hated, by giving him a double portion of all that he has. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. A Rebellious Son if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and, though they chasten him, will not listen to them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out to the elders of his city and to the gate of his place, and they shall tell the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn, and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. All the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones. So you shall put away the evil from the midst of you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. Cursed is anyone hung on a tree. If a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night on the tree, but you shall surely bury him the same day, for he who is hanged is accursed of God, that you don't defile your land which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance. Chapter 22 Various Laws You shall not see your brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide yourself from them. You shall surely bring them again to your brother. If your brother isn't near to you, or if you don't know him, then you shall bring it home to your house, and it shall be with you until your brother seek after it and you shall restore it to him. So you shall do with his donkey, and so you shall do with his garment, and so you shall do with every lost thing of your brother's, which he has lost and you have found. You may not hide yourself. You shall not see your brother's donkey or his ox fallen down by the way, and hide yourself from them you shall surely help him to lift them up again. A woman shall not wear men's clothing, neither shall a man put on women's clothing. For whoever does these things is an abomination to Yahweh your God. If a bird's nest chance to be before you in the way, in any tree or on the ground, with young ones or eggs, and the hen sitting on the young or on the eggs. You shall not take the hen with the young. You shall surely let the hen go, but the young you may take to yourself, that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days. When you build a new house, then you shall make a battlement for your roof, that you don't bring blood on your house if any man fall from there. You shall not sow your vineyard with two kinds of seed, lest the whole fruit be forfeited, the seed which you have sown and the increase of the vineyard. You shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. You shall not wear a mixed stuff, wool and linen together. You shall make yourselves fringes on the four borders of your cloak, with which you cover yourself. Marriage Violations If any man takes a wife and goes in to her and hates her and accuses her of shameful things and brings up an evil name on her and says, I took this woman, and when I came near to her, 
I didn't find in her the tokens of virginity. Then shall the father of the young lady and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the young lady's virginity to the elders of the city in the gate. And the young lady's father shall tell the elders, I gave my daughter to this man to wife, and he hates her. And behold, he has accused her of shameful things, saying, I didn't find in your daughter the tokens of virginity. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. They shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. The elders of that city shall take the man and chastise him and they shall fine him one hundred shekels of silver, and give them to the father of the young lady, because he has brought up an evil name on a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. But if this thing be true, that the tokens of virginity were not found in the young lady, then they shall bring out the young lady to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her to death with stones, because she has done folly in Israel to play the prostitute in her father's house. So you shall put away the evil from the midst of you. If a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, then they shall both of them die the man who lay with the woman, and the woman. So you shall put away the evil from Israel. If there is a young lady who is a virgin, pledged to be married to a husband, and a man find her in the city, and lie with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city, and you shall stone them to death with stones, the lady, because she didn't cry, being in the city, and the man, because he has humbled his neighbor's wife. So you shall put away the evil from the midst of you. But if the man find the lady who is pledged to be married in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only who lay with her shall die. But to the lady you shall do nothing. There is in the lady no sin worthy of death. For as when a man rises against his neighbor and kills him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the field. The pledged to be married lady cried, and there was none to save her. If a man find a lady who is a virgin, who is not pledged to be married, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man who lay with her shall give to the lady's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he has humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. A man shall not take his father's wife, and shall not uncover his father's skirt. Chapter 23 Exclusion from the Congregation He who is wounded in the stones, or has his private member cut off, shall not enter into the assembly of Yahweh. A bastard shall not enter into the assembly of Yahweh. Even to the tenth generation shall none of his enter into the assembly of Yahweh. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the assembly of Yahweh. Even to the tenth generation shall none belonging to them enter into the assembly of Yahweh forever, because they didn't meet you with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beor, from Pethor of Mesopotamia, to curse you, Nevertheless, Yahweh your God wouldn't listen to Balaam, but Yahweh your God turned the curse into a blessing to you, because Yahweh your God loved you. You shall not seek their peace nor their prosperity all your days forever. You shall not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. You shall not abhor an Egyptian, 
because you lived as a foreigner in his land. The children of the third generation who are born to them shall enter into the assembly of Yahweh. Uncleanness in the Camp When you go forth in camp against your enemies, then you shall keep yourselves from every evil thing. If there is among you any man who is not clean by reason of that which happens him by night, then shall he go outside of the camp. He shall not come within the camp. But it shall be, when evening comes on, he shall bathe himself in water, and when the sun is down, he shall come within the camp. You shall have a place also outside of the camp, where you shall go forth abroad and you shall have a paddle among your weapons. And it shall be, when you sit down abroad, you shall dig therewith, and shall turn back and cover that which comes from you. For Yahweh your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and to give up your enemies before you. Therefore your camp shall be holy, that he may not see an unclean thing in you and turn away from you. Miscellaneous Laws You shall not deliver to his master a servant who has escaped from his master to you. He shall dwell with you, in the midst of you, in the place which he shall choose within one of your gates, where it pleases him best. You shall not oppress him. There shall be no prostitute of the daughters of Israel. Neither shall there be a Sodomite of the sons of Israel. You shall not bring the hire of a prostitute or the wages of a dog into the house of Yahweh your God for any vow. For even both these are an abomination to Yahweh your God. You shall not lend on interest to your brother, interest of money, interest of food, interest of anything that is lent on interest. To a foreigner you may lend on interest, but to your brother you shall not lend on interest, that Yahweh your God may bless you in all that you put your hand to, in the land where you go in to possess it. When you shall vow a vow to Yahweh your God, you shall not be slack to pay it, for Yahweh your God will surely require it of you, and it would be sin in you. But if you shall forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in you. That which is gone out of your lips you shall observe and do, according as you have vowed to Yahweh your God, a free will offering which you have promised with your mouth. When you come into your neighbor's vineyard, then you may eat of grapes your feel at your own pleasure, but you shall not put any in your vessel. When you come into your neighbor's standing grain, then you may pluck the ears with your hand, but you shall not move a sickle to your neighbor's standing grain. End of section 17. Chapter 24. Law of Divorce When a man takes a wife and marries her, then it shall be, if she find no favor in his eyes, because he has found some unseemly thing in her, that he shall write her a bill of divorce and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. When she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. If the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorce, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, who took her to be his wife, her former husband, who sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife, after that she is defiled, for that is abomination before Yahweh, and you shall not cause the land to sin which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance. When a man takes a new wife, he shall not go out in the army, 
neither shall he be assigned any business. He shall be free at home one year, and shall cheer his wife whom he has taken. Additional Laws No man shall take the mill or the upper millstone to pledge, for he takes a man's life to pledge. If a man be found stealing any of his brothers of the children of Israel, and he deal with him as a slave, or sell him, then that thief shall die. So you shall put away the evil from the midst of you. Take heed in the plague of leprosy, that you observe diligently, and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you, as I commanded them so you shall observe to do. Remember what Yahweh your God did to Miriam, by the way as you came forth out of Egypt. When you do lend your neighbor any kind of loan, you shall not go into his house to get his pledge. You shall stand outside, and the man to whom you do lend shall bring forth the pledge outside to you. If he be a poor man, you shall not sleep with his pledge. You shall surely restore to him the pledge when the sun goes down, that he may sleep in his garment, and bless you. And it shall be righteousness to you before Yahweh your God. You shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy, whether he be of your brothers or of your foreigners who are in your land within your gates. In his day you shall give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down on it, for he is poor and sets his heart on it, lest he cry against you to Yahweh, and it be sin to you. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. You shall not rest the justice due to the foreigner or to the fatherless, nor take the widow's clothing to pledge. But you shall remember that you were a bondservant in Egypt, and Yahweh your God redeemed you there. Therefore I command you to do this thing. When you reap your harvest in your field, and have forgot a sheaf in the field, you shall not go again to get it. It shall be for the foreigner, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that Yahweh your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat your olive tree, you shall not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the foreigner, for the fatherless, and for the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not glean it after yourselves. It shall be for the foreigner, for the fatherless, and for the widow. You shall remember that you were a bondservant in the land of Egypt. Therefore I command you to do this thing. Chapter 25 Laws of Fairness If there be a controversy between men, and they come to judgment, and the judges judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. And it shall be, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face, according to his wickedness, by number. Forty stripes he may give him. He shall not exceed, lest, if he should exceed, and beat him above these with many stripes, then your brother should seem vile to you. You shall not muzzle the ox when he treads out the grain. Widowhood and Marriage If brothers dwell together, and one of them die, and have no son, the wife of the dead shall not be married outside to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in to her, and take her to him as wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. It shall be, 
that the firstborn whom she bears shall succeed in the name of his brother who is dead, that his name not be blotted out of Israel. If the man doesn't want to take his brother's wife, then his brother's wife shall go up to the gate to the elders and say, My husband's brother refuses to raise up to his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of a husband's brother to me. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak to him. And if he stand and say, I don't want to take her, then his brother's wife shall come to him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face. And she shall answer and say, So shall it be done to the man who does not build up his brother's house. His name shall be called in Israel, the house of him who has his shoe untied. When men strive together, one with another, and the wife of the one draws near to deliver her husband out of the hand of him who strikes him, and puts forth her hand, and takes him by the secrets, then you shall cut off her hand. Your eye shall have no pity. Standard Weights and Measures you shall not have in your bag diverse weights, a great and a small. You shall not have in your house diverse measures, a great and a small. You shall have a perfect and just weight. You shall have a perfect and just measure, that your days may be long in the land which Yahweh your God gives you. For all who do such things, even all who do unrighteously are an abomination to Yahweh your God. Blot out Amalek. Remember what Amalek did to you by the way as you came forth out of Egypt, how he met you by the way and struck behind most of you, all who were feeble behind you when you were faint and weary, and he didn't fear God. Therefore it shall be, when Yahweh your God has given you rest from all your enemies all around, in the land which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance to possess it, that you shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under the sky, you shall not forget. Chapter 26 Offering First Fruits and Tithes It shall be, when you are come into the land which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance, and possess it, and dwell therein, that you shall take of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you shall bring in from your land that Yahweh your God gives you, and you shall put it in a basket, and shall go to the place which Yahweh your God shall choose, to cause his name to dwell there. You shall come to the priest who shall be in those days, and tell him, I profess this day to Yahweh your God, that I am come to the land which Yahweh swore to our fathers to give us. The priest shall take the basket out of your hand, and set it down before the altar of Yahweh your God. You shall answer and say before Yahweh your God, A Syrian ready to perish was my father, and he went down into Egypt and lived there, few in number, and he became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. The Egyptians dealt ill with us, and afflicted us, and laid on us hard bondage. And we cried to Yahweh, the God of our fathers. And Yahweh heard our voice, and saw our affliction, and our toil, and our oppression. And Yahweh brought us forth out of Egypt, with a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, and with great terror, and with signs, and with wonders. And he has brought us into this place, and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, behold, I have brought the first of the fruit of the ground 
which you, Yahweh, have given me. You shall set it down before Yahweh your God, and worship before Yahweh your God. You shall rejoice in all the good which Yahweh your God has given to you, and to your house, you and the Levite, and the foreigner who is in the midst of you. When you have made an end of tithing all the tithe of your increase in the third year, which is the year of tithing, then you shall give it to the Levite, to the foreigner, to the fatherless, and to the widow, that they may eat within your gates and be filled. You shall say before Yahweh your God, I have put away the holy things out of my house, and also have given them to the Levite, and to the foreigner, to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all your commandment, which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed any of your commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten of it in my mourning, neither have I put away of it, being unclean nor given of it for the dead. I have listened to the voice of Yahweh my God. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation, from heaven, and bless your people Israel, and the ground which you have given us, as you swore to our fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. Obey the Lord's commands. This day Yahweh your God commands you to do these statutes and ordinances. You shall therefore keep and do them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have declared Yahweh this day to be your God, and that you would walk in his ways and keep his statutes and his commandments and his ordinances and listen to his voice. And Yahweh has declared you this day to be a people for his own possession, as he has promised you, and that you should keep all his commandments, and to make you high above all nations that he has made, in praise, and in name, and in honor, and that you may be a holy people to Yahweh your God, as he has spoken. Chapter 27 The Altar on Mount Ebal Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandment which I command you this day. It shall be on the day when you shall pass over the Jordan to the land which Yahweh your God gives you, that you shall set yourself up great stones and plaster them with plaster. And you shall write on them all the words of this law when you have passed over, that you may go in to the land which Yahweh your God gives you, a land flowing with milk and honey, as Yahweh the God of your fathers has promised you. It shall be when you have passed over the Jordan that you shall set up these stones which I command you this day in Mount Ebal, and you shall plaster them with plaster. There you shall build an altar to Yahweh your God, an altar of stones. You shall lift up no iron tool on them. You shall build the altar of Yahweh your God of uncut stones, and you shall offer burnt offerings thereon to Yahweh your God and you shall sacrifice peace offerings, and shall eat there, and you shall rejoice before Yahweh your God. You shall write on the stones all the words of this law very plainly. Moses and the priests, the Levites, spoke to all Israel, saying, Keep silence and listen, Israel, this day you have become the people of Yahweh your God. You shall therefore obey the voice of Yahweh your God and do his commandments and his statutes which I command you this day. 
curses pronounced from evil. Moses commanded the people the same day, saying, These shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people when you have passed over the Jordan. Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin. These shall stand on Mount Ebal for the curse. Reuben, Gad, and Asher, and Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. The Levites shall answer and tell all the men of Israel with a loud voice. Cursed is the man who makes an engraved or molten image, an abomination to Yahweh, the work of the hands of the craftsman, and sets it up in secret. All the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed is he who sets light by his father or his mother. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who removes his neighbor's landmark. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who makes the blind to wander out of the way. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who rests the justice due to the foreigner, fatherless and widow. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his father's wife because he has uncovered his father's skirt. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with any kind of animal. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his mother-in-law. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who strikes his neighbor in secret. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who takes a bribe to kill an innocent person. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who doesn't confirm the words of this law to do them. All the people shall say, Amen. Chapter 28 The Blessings of Obedience It shall happen, if you shall listen diligently to the voice of Yahweh your God, to observe to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that Yahweh your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you, if you shall listen to the voice of Yahweh your God. You shall be blessed in the city, and you shall be blessed in the field. You shall be blessed in the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your animals, the increase of your livestock and the young of your flock, your basket and your kneading trough shall be blessed. You shall be blessed when you come in, and you shall be blessed when you go out. Yahweh will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be struck before you. They will come out against you one way and will flee before you seven ways. Yahweh will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you put your hand to, and he will bless you in the land which Yahweh your God gives you. Yahweh will establish you for a holy people to himself, as he has sworn to you, if you shall keep the commandments of Yahweh your God and walk in his ways. All the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of Yahweh, and they shall be afraid of you. Yahweh will make you plenteous for good in the fruit of your body and in the fruit of your livestock, 
and in the fruit of your ground, in the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers to give you. Yahweh will open to you his good treasure in the sky to give the rain of your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. Yahweh will make you the head and not the tail and you shall be above only and you shall not be beneath. If you shall listen to the commandments of Yahweh your God which I command you this day to observe and to do them, and shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. The Curses of Disobedience But it shall come to pass, if you will not listen to the voice of Yahweh your God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come on you and overtake you. You shall be cursed in the city, and you shall be cursed in the field. Your basket and your kneading trough shall be cursed. The fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, the increase of your livestock, and the young of your flock shall be cursed. You shall be cursed when you come in, and you shall be cursed when you go out. Yahweh will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke in all that you put your hand to until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the evil of your doings by which you have forsaken me. Yahweh will make the pestilence cling to you until he has consumed you from off the land where you go in to possess it. Yahweh will strike you with consumption and with fever and with inflammation and with fiery heat and with the sword and with blight and with mildew and they shall pursue you until you perish. Your sky that is over your head shall be brass and the earth that is under you shall be iron. Yahweh will make the rain of your land powder and dust. From the sky shall it come down on you until you are destroyed. Yahweh will cause you to be struck before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and shall flee seven ways before them, and you shall be tossed back and forth among all the kingdoms of the earth. Your dead body shall be food to all birds of the sky and to the animals of the earth, and there shall be none to frighten them away. Yahweh will strike you with the boil of Egypt and with the tumors and with the scurvy and with the itch of which you cannot be healed. Yahweh will strike you with madness and with blindness and with astonishment of heart, and you shall grope at noonday as the blind gropes in darkness, and you shall not prosper in your ways. And you shall be only oppressed and robbed always, and there shall be none to save you. You shall betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. You shall build a house, and you shall not dwell therein. You shall plant a vineyard, and shall not use its fruit. Your ox shall be slain before your eyes, and you shall not eat of it. Your donkey shall be violently taken away from before your face, and shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies, and you shall have none to save you. Your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people, and your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day and there shall be nothing in the power of your hand. The fruit of your ground and all your labors shall a nation which you don't know eat up, and you shall be only oppressed and crushed always, so that you shall be mad for the sight of your eyes which you shall see. Yahweh will strike you in the knees and in the legs with a sore boil of which you cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the crown of your head. 
Yahweh will bring you and your king whom you shall set over you to a nation that you have not known, you nor your fathers, and there you shall serve other gods, wood and stone. You shall become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all the peoples where Yahweh shall lead you away. You shall carry much seed out into the field and shall gather little in, for the locust shall consume it. You shall plant vineyards and dress them, but you shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. You shall have olive trees throughout all your borders, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil, for your olive shall cast its fruit. You shall father sons and daughters, but they shall not be yours, for they shall go into captivity. All your trees and the fruit of your ground shall the locust possess. The foreigner who is in the midst of you shall mount up above you higher and higher, and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. All these curses shall come on you, and shall pursue you, and overtake you, until you are destroyed. Because you didn't listen to the voice of Yahweh your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded you, and they shall be on you for a sign and for a wonder, and on your seed forever. Because you didn't serve Yahweh your God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart, by reason of the abundance of all things. Therefore you shall serve your enemies, whom Yahweh shall send against you, in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron on your neck, until he has destroyed you. Yahweh will bring a nation against you from far, from the end of the earth, as the eagle flies, a nation whose language you shall not understand, a nation of fierce facial expressions that shall not respect the person of the old, nor show favor to the young, and shall eat the fruit of your livestock and the fruit of your ground until you are destroyed. That also shall not leave you grain, new wine, or oil, the increase of your livestock, or the young of your flock, until they have caused you to perish. They shall besiege you in all your gates, until your high and fortified walls come down, in which you trusted, throughout all your land, and they shall besiege you in all your gates throughout all your land, which Yahweh your God has given you. You shall eat the fruit of your own body, the flesh of your sons and of your daughters, whom Yahweh your God has given you, in the siege and in the distress with which your enemies shall distress you, the man who is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children whom he has remaining, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he has nothing left him, in the siege and in the distress with which your enemy shall distress you in all your gates, the tender and delicate woman among you, who would not adventure to set the sole of her foot on the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter and toward her young one who comes out from between her feet, and toward her children whom she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of all things secretly, in the siege and in the distress with which your enemy shall distress you in your gates. If you will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and fearful name, Yahweh, your God. Then Yahweh will make your plagues wonderful, and the plagues of your seed, 
even great plagues, and of long continuance, and severe sicknesses, and of long continuance. He will bring on you again all the diseases of Egypt, which you were afraid of, and they shall cling to you. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, Yahweh will bring them on you until you are destroyed. You shall be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of the sky for multitude, because you didn't listen to the voice of Yahweh your God. It shall happen that as Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good, and to multiply you. So Yahweh will rejoice over you to cause you to perish and to destroy you. And you shall be plucked from off the land where you go in to possess it. Yahweh will scatter you among all peoples, from the one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. And there you shall serve other gods which you have not known, you nor your fathers, even wood and stone. Among these nations you shall find no ease, and there shall be no rest for the sole of your foot. But Yahweh will give you there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and pining of soul. And your life shall hang in doubt before you, and you shall fear night and day, and shall have no assurance of your life. In the morning you shall say, I wish it were evening, and at evening you shall say, I wish it were morning, for the fear of your heart which you shall fear, and for the sight of your eyes which you shall see. Yahweh will bring you into Egypt again with ships, by the way of which I said to you, you shall see it no more again. And there you shall sell yourselves to your enemies for bond servants and for bond maids and no man shall buy you. Chapter 29 The Covenant in Moab These are the words of the covenant which Yahweh commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, besides the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. Moses called to all Israel and said to them, you have seen all that Yahweh did before your eyes in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, the great trials which your eyes saw, the signs and those great wonders. But Yahweh has not given you a heart to know and eyes to see and ears to hear to this day. I have led you forty years in the wilderness your clothes have not grown old on you, and your shoes have not grown old on your feet. You have not eaten bread, neither have you drunk wine or strong drink, that you may know that I am Yahweh, your God. When you came to this place, Sihon, the king of Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us to battle, and we struck them, and we took their land, and gave it for an inheritance to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of the Manassites. Keep therefore the words of this covenant, and do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. You stand this day, all of you, before Yahweh your God, your heads, your tribes, your elders, and your officers, even all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and your foreigner who is in the midst of your camps, from the one who cuts your wood to the one who draws your water, that you may enter into the covenant of Yahweh your God and into his oath, which Yahweh your God makes with you this day, that he may establish you this day to himself for a people, and that he may be to you a God as he spoke to you, and as he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, 
but with him who stands here with us this day before Yahweh our God, and also with him who is not here with us this day. For you know how we lived in the land of Egypt, and how we came through the midst of the nations through which you passed, and you have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away this day from Yahweh our God to go to serve the gods of those nations, lest there should be among you a root that bears gall and wormwood. And it happen, when he hears the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart, to destroy the moist with the dry. Yahweh will not pardon him, but then the anger of Yahweh and his jealousy will smoke against that man, and all the curse that is written in this book shall lie on him, and Yahweh will blot out his name from under the sky. Yahweh will set him apart to evil out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant that is written in this book of the law. The generation to come, your children who shall rise up after you, and the foreigner who shall come from a far land, shall say, when they see the plagues of that land, and the sicknesses with which Yahweh has made it sick, and that the whole land of it is sulfur and salt and a burning, that it is not sown, nor bears, nor any grass grows therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which Yahweh overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all the nations shall say, Why has Yahweh done thus to this land? What does the heat of this great anger mean? Then men shall say, because they forsook the covenant of Yahweh, the God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and went and served other gods, and worshipped them, gods that they didn't know, and that he had not given to them. Therefore the anger of Yahweh was kindled against this land, to bring on it all the curse that is written in this book. And Yahweh rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land, as at this day. The secret things belong to Yahweh our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Chapter 30 Restoration Promised It shall happen, when all these things have come on you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you shall call them to mind among all the nations, where Yahweh your God has driven you, and shall return to Yahweh your God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you this day, you and your children, with all your heart and with all your soul, that then Yahweh your God will turn your captivity and have compassion on you and will return and gather you from all the peoples where Yahweh your God has scattered you. If any of your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of the heavens, from there will Yahweh your God gather you, and from there he will bring you back and Yahweh your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and he will do you good and multiply you above your fathers. Yahweh your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Yahweh your God will put all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you, who persecuted you. 
you shall return and obey the voice of Yahweh and do all his commandments, which I command you this day. Yahweh, your God, will make you plenteous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground, for good. For Yahweh will again rejoice over you for good, as he rejoiced over your fathers. If you shall obey the voice of Yahweh, your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law. If you turn to Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul. The Choice of Life or Death For this commandment which I command you this day, it is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it to us and make us to hear it, that we may do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who should go over the sea for us and bring it to us and make us to hear it, that we may do it? But the word is very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. Behold, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command you this day to love Yahweh your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his ordinances, that you may live and multiply, and that Yahweh your God may bless you in the land where you go in to possess it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. I denounce to you this day that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land where you pass over the Jordan to go in to possess it. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Therefore, choose life that you may live, you and your seed, to love Yahweh your God, to obey his voice and to cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Chapter 31 Moses Encourages the People Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. He said to them, I am 120 years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. And Yahweh has said to me, You shall not go over this Jordan. Yahweh, your God, he will go over before you. He will destroy these nations from before you, and you shall dispossess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before you, as Yahweh has spoken. Yahweh will do to them as he did to Sihon and to Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land, whom he destroyed. Yahweh will deliver them up before you, and you shall do to them according to all the commandment which I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid, nor be scared of them. For Yahweh your God, he it is who does go with you. He will not fail you, nor forsake you. Joshua to succeed Moses. Moses called to Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land which Yahweh has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. Yahweh, he it is who does go before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you, neither forsake you. Don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. The Reading of the Law 
Moses wrote this law and delivered it to the priests, the sons of Levi, who bore the ark of the covenant of Yahweh, and to all the elders of Israel. Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the set time of the year of release, in the Feast of Tents, when all Israel is come to appear before Yahweh your God in the place which he shall choose, you shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Assemble the people, the men and the women and the little ones, and your foreigner who is within your gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn and fear Yahweh your God, and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children who have not known may hear and learn to fear Yahweh your God, as long as you live in the land where you go over the Jordan to possess it. God's Charge to Joshua Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, your days approach that you must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tent of meeting that I may commission him. Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tent of meeting. Yahweh appeared in the tent in a pillar of cloud, and the pillar of cloud stood over the door of the tent. Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, you shall sleep with your fathers, and this people will rise up and play the prostitute after the strange gods of the land, where they go to be among them, and will forsake me, and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall come on them, so that they will say in that day, Haven't these evils come on us, because our God is not among us? I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evil which they shall have worked, in that they are turned to other gods. Now, therefore, write this song for yourselves, and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swore to their fathers, flowing with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and grown fat, then will they turn to other gods and serve them and despise me and break my covenant. It shall happen, when many evils and troubles are come on them, that this song shall testify before them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imagination which they frame this day, before I have brought them into the land which I swore. So Moses wrote this song this same day, and taught it the children of Israel. He commissioned Joshua, the son of Nun, and said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the children of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. The Law Placed in the Ark it happened when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites who bore the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh, saying, Take this book of the law and put it by the side of the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh your God, that it may be there for a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, you have been rebellious against Yahweh, and how much more after my death? 
assemble to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death you will utterly corrupt yourselves, and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will happen to you in the latter days, because you will do that which is evil in the sight of Yahweh, to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Moses begins his song. Moses spoke in the ears of all the assembly of Israel the words of this song until they were finished. Chapter 32 The Song of Moses Give ear, you heavens, and I will speak. Let the earth hear the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall condense as the dew, as the small rain on the tender grass, as the showers on the herb. For I will proclaim the name of Yahweh, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity. Just and right is he. They have dealt corruptly with him. They are not his children. It is their blemish. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do you thus requite Yahweh, foolish people, and unwise? Isn't he your father who has bought you? He has made you and established you. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father and he will show you, your elders and they will tell you. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the children of men, he set the bounds of the peoples according to the number of the children of Israel. For Yahweh's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, in the waste howling wilderness. He surrounded him. He cared for him. He kept him as the apple of his eye as an eagle that stirs up her nest, that flutters over her young. He spread abroad his wings. He took them. He bore them on his feathers. Yahweh alone led him. There was no foreign god with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth. He ate the increase of the field. He caused him to suck honey out of the rock, oil out of the flinty rock butter of the herd, and milk of the flock, with fat of lambs, rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the finest of the wheat. Of the blood of the grape you drank wine, but Jeshurun grew fat and kicked. You have grown fat, you have grown thick, you have become sleek. Then he forsook God who made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They moved him to jealousy with strange gods. They provoked him to anger with abominations. They sacrificed to demons, which were no god, to gods that they didn't know, to new gods that came up of late, which your fathers didn't dread. Of the rock who became your father, you are unmindful and have forgotten God who gave you birth. Yahweh saw it and abhorred them because of the provocation of his sons and his daughters. He said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very perverse generation, children in whom is no faithfulness. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. I will move them to jealousy with those who are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in my anger, burns to the lowest sheol, devours the earth with its increase, 
and sets the foundations of the mountains on fire. I will heap evils on them. I will spend my arrows on them. They shall be wasted with hunger and devoured with burning heat and bitter destruction. I will send the teeth of animals on them with the poison of crawling things of the dust. Outside, the sword shall bereave, and in the rooms, terror on both young man and virgin, the nursing infant with the gray-haired man. I said I would scatter them afar. I would make the memory of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the provocation of the enemy, lest their adversaries should judge wrongly, lest they should say, Our hand is exalted. Yahweh has not done all this, for they are a nation void of counsel. There is no understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How could one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight unless their rock had sold them and Yahweh had delivered them up? For their rock is not as our rock even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom, of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of serpents, the cruel venom of asps. Isn't this laid up in store with me, sealed up among my treasures? Vengeance is mine, and recompense at the time when their foot slides. For the day of their calamity is at hand. The things that are to come on them shall make haste. For Yahweh will judge his people and have compassion on his servants when he sees that their power is gone. There is none remaining, shut up or left at large. He will say, Where are their gods? the rock in which they took refuge, which ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering. Let them rise up and help you. Let them be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he. There is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. There is no one who can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, As I live forever, if I whet my glittering sword, my hand take hold on judgment. I will render vengeance to my adversaries and will recompense those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood. My sword shall devour flesh with the blood of the slain and the captives from the head of the leaders of the enemy. Rejoice, you nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants. He will render vengeance to his adversaries and will make expiation for his land, for his people. Moses came and spoke all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. He said to them, Set your heart to all the words which I testify to you this day, which you shall command your children to observe to do, even all the words of this law. For it is no vain thing for you, because it is your life, and through this thing you shall prolong your days in the land where you go over the Jordan to possess it. Moses' death foretold. Yahweh spoke to Moses that same day, saying, Go up into this mountain of Abarim, to Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and see the land of Canaan, which I give to the children of Israel for a possession and die on the mountain where you go up, and be gathered to your people, as Aaron your brother died on Mount Hor, and was gathered to his people, because you trespassed against me 
in the midst of the children of Israel, at the waters of Meribah of Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin. Because you didn't sanctify me in the midst of the children of Israel, for you shall see the land before you, but you shall not go there into the land which I give the children of Israel. Chapter 33 The Majesty of God This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. He said, Yahweh came from Sinai and rose from Seir to them. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came from the ten thousands of holy ones. At his right hand was a fiery law for them. Yes, he loves the people. All his saints are in your hand. They sat down at your feet. Everyone shall receive of your words. Moses commanded us a law an inheritance for the assembly of Jacob. He was king in Jeshurun when the heads of the people were gathered, all the tribes of Israel together. The Blessings of the Twelve Tribes Let Reuben live and not die, nor let his men be few. This is the blessing of Judah. And he said, Hear, Yahweh, the voice of Judah. Bring him in to his people. With his hands he contended for himself. You shall be a help against his adversaries. Of Levi, he said, Your Thummim and your Urim are with your godly one, whom you proved at Massa, with whom you strove at the waters of Meribah, who said of his father and of his mother, I have not seen him, neither did he acknowledge his brothers, nor did he know his own children, for they have observed your word and keep your covenant. They shall teach Jacob your ordinances and Israel your law. They shall put incense before you and hold burnt offering on your altar. Yahweh, bless his substance, accept the work of his hands. Strike through the hips of those who rise up against him, of those who hate him, that they not rise again. Of Benjamin, he said, The beloved of Yahweh shall dwell in safety by him. He covers him all the day long. He dwells between his shoulders. Of Joseph, he said, His land is blessed by Yahweh for the precious things of the heavens, for the dew, for the deep that couches beneath, for the precious things of the fruits of the sun, for the precious things of the growth of the moons, for the chief things of the ancient mountains, for the precious things of the everlasting hills, for the precious things of the earth and its fullness, the good will of him who lived in the bush, let the blessing come on the head of Joseph, on the crown of the head of him who was separate from his brothers. The firstborn of his herd, majesty is his. His horns are the horns of the wild ox. With them he shall push the peoples, all of them, even the ends of the earth. They are the ten thousands of Ephraim. They are the thousands of Manasseh. Of Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and Issachar in your tents. They shall call the peoples to the mountain. There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall draw out the abundance of the seas, the hidden treasures of the sand. Of Gad, he said, He who enlarges Gad is blessed, he dwells as a lioness, and tears the arm, yes, the crown of the head. He provided the first part for himself, for there was the lawgiver's portion reserved. He came with the heads of the people. He executed the righteousness of Yahweh, his ordinances with Israel. Of Dan, he said, 
Dan is a lion's cub that leaps out of Bashan. Of Naphtali, he said, Naphtali, satisfied with favor, full of blessing of Yahweh, possess the west and the south. Of Asher, he said, Asher is blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brothers. Let him dip his foot in oil. Your bars shall be iron and brass. As your days, so your strength will be. The Excellence of Israel There is none like God, Jeshurun, who rides on the heavens for your help, in his excellency on the skies. The eternal God is your dwelling place. Underneath are the everlasting arms. He thrust out the enemy from before you and said, Destroy! Israel dwells in safety, the fountain of Jacob alone, in a land of grain and new wine. Yes, his heavens drop down dew. You are happy, Israel. Who is like you? A people saved by Yahweh, the shield of your help the sword of your excellency. Your enemies shall submit themselves to you. You shall tread on their high places. Chapter 34 The Death of Moses Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. Yahweh showed him all the land of Gilead to Dan and all Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh and all the land of Judah to the hinder sea and the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, to Zoar. Yahweh said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your seed. I have caused you to see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of Yahweh, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of Yahweh. He buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor, but no man knows of his tomb to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. The children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping in the morning for Moses were ended. Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. And the children of Israel listened to him, and did as Yahweh commanded Moses. There has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom Yahweh knew face to face, in all the signs and the wonders which Yahweh sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants, and to all his land, and in all the mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses worked in the sight of all Israel. End of section 18. Joshua Chapter 1 God Commissions Joshua now it happened after the death of Moses, the servant of Yahweh, that Yahweh spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I give to them, even to the children of Israel. I have given you every place that the sole of your foot will tread on, as I told Moses. 
from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your border. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, to observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. For Yahweh your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua Takes Charge Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the midst of the camp, and command the people, saying, Prepare food, for within three days you are to pass over this Jordan, to go in to possess the land, which Yahweh your God gives you to possess it. Joshua spoke to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded you, saying, Yahweh your God gives you rest, and will give you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall live in the land which Moses gave you beyond the Jordan but you shall pass over before your brothers armed, all the mighty men of valor, and shall help them, until Yahweh has given your brothers rest, as he has given you. And they have also possessed the land which Yahweh your God gives them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession, and possess it, which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, gave you beyond the Jordan, toward the sunrise. They answered Joshua, saying, All that you have commanded us, we will do, and wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we listened to Moses in all things, so will we listen to you. Only may Yahweh your God be with you, as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your commandment and doesn't listen to your words and all that you command him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Chapter 2 Rahab Welcomes the Spies Joshua, the son of Nun, secretly sent two men out of Shittim as spies, saying, Go, view the land, including Jericho. They went and came into the house of a prostitute, whose name was Rahab, and slept there. The king of Jericho was told, Behold, men of the children of Israel came in here tonight to spy out the land. The king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered into your house, for they have come to spy out all the land. The woman took the two men and hid them. Then she said, Yes, the men came to me, but I didn't know where they came from. It happened about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Where the men went, I don't know. Pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof, and hid them with the stalks of flax, 
which she had laid in order on the roof. The men pursued them the way to the Jordan, to the fords. And as soon as those who pursued them had gone out, they shut the gate. Before they had laid down, she came up to them on the roof. And she said to the men, I know that Yahweh has given you the land, and that the fear of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and to Og, whom you utterly destroyed. As soon as we heard it, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more spirit in any man because of you. For Yahweh your God, he is God in heaven above, and on earth beneath. Now, therefore, please swear to me by Yahweh, since I have dealt kindly with you, that you also will deal kindly with my father's house, and give me a true token, and that you will save alive my father, my mother, my brothers and my sisters, and all that they have, and will deliver our lives from death. The man said to her, Our life for yours if you don't talk about this business of ours. And it shall be, when Yahweh gives us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with you. The Promise to Rahab Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was on the side of the wall, and she lived on the wall. She said to them, Go to the mountain, lest the pursuers find you, and hide yourselves there three days, until the pursuers have returned. Afterward you may go on your way. The man said to her, We will be guiltless of this, your oath, which you have made us to swear. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which you let us down by. You shall gather to yourself into the house, your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household. It shall be that whoever goes out of the doors of your house into the street, his blood will be on his head, and we will be guiltless. Whoever is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand is on him. But if you talk about this business of ours, then we shall be guiltless of your oath, which you have made us to swear. She said, According to your words, so be it. She sent them away, and they departed. She tied the scarlet line in the window. They went and came to the mountain, and stayed there three days, until the pursuers had returned. The pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but didn't find them. Then the two men returned, descended from the mountain, passed over, and came to Joshua, the son of Nun. And they told him all that had happened to them. They said to Joshua, Truly, Yahweh has delivered into our hands all the land. Moreover, all the inhabitants of the land melt away before us. Chapter 3 The Crossing of the Jordan Joshua rose up early in the morning, and they moved from Shittim and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel. They lodged there before they passed over. It happened after three days that the officers went through the midst of the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall move from your place and follow it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Don't come near to it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow Yahweh will do wonders among you. Joshua spoke to the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. They took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. 
Yahweh said to Joshua, Today I will begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here, and hear the words of Yahweh your God. Joshua said, Hereby you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Hivite, and the Perizzite, and the Girgashite, and the Amorite, and the Jebusite, out from before you. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into the Jordan. Now, therefore, take twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, for every tribe a man. It shall come to pass, when the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the Ark of Yahweh, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan will be cut off, even the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand in one heap. It happened, when the people moved from their tents to pass over the Jordan, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant being before the people, and when those who bore the Ark had come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests who bore the Ark had dipped in the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows all its banks all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up in one heap a great way off, at Adam, the city that is beside Zarethan, and those that went down toward the sea of the Arabah, even the salt sea, were wholly cut off. Then the people passed over right against Jericho, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan, and all Israel passed over on dry ground, until all the nation had passed completely over the Jordan. Chapter 4 Twelve Stones from the Jordan It happened when all the nation had completely passed over the Jordan that Yahweh spoke to Joshua, saying, Take twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take from out of the middle of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and carry them over with you, and lay them down in the lodging place where you will lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man. Joshua said to them, Pass over before the ark of Yahweh your God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you pick up a stone and put it on your shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do you mean by these stones? Then you shall tell them, Because the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. The children of Israel did as Joshua commanded and took up twelve stones out of the middle of the Jordan, as Yahweh spoke to Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. And they carried them over with them to the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. Joshua set up twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there to this day. For the priests who bore the ark stood in the middle of the Jordan, until everything was finished that Yahweh commanded Joshua to speak to the people, according to all that Moses commanded Joshua. And the people harried and passed over. It happened, when all the people had completely passed over, 
that the ark of Yahweh passed over with the priests in the presence of the people, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel, as Moses spoke to them, about forty thousand men, ready and armed for war, passed over before Yahweh to battle, to the plains of Jericho. On that day, Yahweh magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. Yahweh spoke to Joshua, saying, Command the priests who bear the ark of the testimony, that they come up out of the Jordan, Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come up out of the Jordan. It happened, when the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh had come up out of the middle of the Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up to the dry ground, that the waters of the Jordan returned to their place, and went over all its banks as before. The Camp at Gilgal the people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal, on the east border of Jericho. Joshua set up those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan in Gilgal. He spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For Yahweh your God dried up the waters of the Jordan from before you until you had passed over, as Yahweh your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we had passed over, that all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of Yahweh, that it is mighty, that you may fear Yahweh your God forever. Chapter 5 The Circumcision at Gilgal It happened when all the kings of the Amorites, who were beyond the Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, who were by the sea, heard how that Yahweh had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel, until we had passed over, that their heart melted. Neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. At that time, Yahweh said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Joshua made himself flint knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the foreskins. This is the reason Joshua circumcised all the people who came out of Egypt, who were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way, after they came out of Egypt. For all the people who came out were circumcised, but all the people who were born in the wilderness by the way, as they came out of Egypt, had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness, until all the nation even the men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they didn't listen to the voice of Yahweh. Yahweh swore to them that he wouldn't let them see the land which Yahweh swore to their fathers that he would give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Their children, whom he raised up in their place, were circumcised by Joshua for they were uncircumcised, because they had not circumcised them on the way. It happened, when they were done circumcising all the nation, that they stayed in their places in the camp until they were healed. Yahweh said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Therefore the name of that place was called Gilgal to this day. THE PASSOVER AT GILGAL The children of Israel encamped at Gilgal. They kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, in the plains of Jericho. 
they ate unleavened cakes and parched grain of the produce of the land on the next day after the Passover, in the same day. The manna ceased on the next day after they had eaten of the produce of the land. The children of Israel didn't have manna any more, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. It happened, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood in front of him with his sword drawn in his hand. Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? He said, No, but I have come now as commander of Yahweh's army. Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped, and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? The prince of Yahweh's army said to Joshua, Take your shoes off of your feet, for the place on which you stand is holy. Joshua did so. Chapter 6 The Walls of Jericho Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the children of Israel. No one went out, and no one came in. Yahweh said to Joshua, Behold, I have given Jericho into your hand, with its king and the mighty men of valor. All your men of war shall march around the city, going around the city once. You shall do this six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall be that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout, with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of Yahweh. They said to the people, Advance, march around the city, and let the armed men pass on before Yahweh's ark. It was so that when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before Yahweh advanced and blew the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of Yahweh followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets, and the ark went after them. The trumpets sounded as they went. Joshua commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor let your voice be heard, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. So he caused the ark of Yahweh to go around the city, going about it once. Then they came into the camp, and lodged in the camp. Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of Yahweh. The seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of Yahweh went on continually and blew the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. The rear guard came after the ark of Yahweh. The trumpets sounded as they went. The second day, they marched around the city once and returned into the camp. They did this six days. It happened on the seventh day that they rose early at the dawning of the day and marched around the city in the same way seven times. Only on this day they marched around the city seven times. It happened at the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets. Joshua said to the people, Shout, for Yahweh has given you the city. The city shall be devoted, even it and all that is in it, to Yahweh. Only Rahab the prostitute shall live. 
she and all who are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. But as for you, only keep yourselves from the devoted thing, lest when you have devoted it, you take of the devoted thing. So would you make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are holy to Yahweh. They shall come into Yahweh's treasury. So the people shouted, and the priests blew the trumpets. It happened, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, that the people shouted with a great shout, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. They utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, both young and old, and ox and sheep and donkey with the edge of the sword. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, Go into the prostitute's house and bring out from there the woman and all that she has as you swore to her. The young men who were spies went in and brought out Rahab with her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. They also brought out all her relatives, and they set them outside of the camp of Israel. They burnt the city with fire and all that was in it. Only they put the silver, the gold, and the vessels of brass and of iron into the treasury of Yahweh's house. But Rahab the prostitute, her father's household, and all that she had, Joshua saved alive. She lived in the midst of Israel to this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Joshua commanded them with an oath at that time, saying, Cursed is the man before Yahweh who rises up and builds this city Jericho. With the loss of his firstborn shall he lay its foundation, and with the loss of his youngest son shall he set up its gates. So Yahweh was with Joshua and his fame was in all the land. Chapter 7 Israel Defeated at Ai But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the devoted things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things. Therefore Yahweh's anger burned against the children of Israel. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the land. The men went up and spied out Ai. They returned to Joshua and said to him, Don't let all the people go up. But let about two or three thousand men go up and strike Ai. Don't make all the people to toil there, for there are only a few of them. So about three thousand men of the people went up there, and they fled before the men of Ai. The men of Ai struck about thirty-six men of them, and they chased them from before the gate even to Shebarim, and struck them at the descent. The hearts of the people melted and became like water. Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of Yahweh until the evening, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Alas, Lord Yahweh, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to cause us to perish? I wish that we had been content and lived beyond the Jordan. O oh Lord, what shall I say after that Israel has turned their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and will surround us and cut off our name from the earth. What will you do for your great name? Yahweh said to Joshua, Get up. Why are you fallen on your face like that? Israel has sinned. Yes. They have even transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. Yes, they have even taken of the devoted things, and have also stolen, 
and also deceived. They have even put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel can't stand before their enemies. They turn their backs before their enemies because they have become devoted for destruction. I will not be with you any more unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, for Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, There is a devoted thing in the midst of you, Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the devoted thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought near by your tribes. It shall be that the tribe which Yahweh selects shall come near by families. The family which Yahweh selects shall come near by households. The household which Yahweh selects shall come near man by man. It shall be that he who is taken with the devoted thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of Yahweh and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. The Sin of Achan So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel near by their tribes. The tribe of Judah was selected. He brought near the family of Judah, and he selected the family of the Zerahites. He brought near the family of the Zerahites man by man, and Zabdi was selected. He brought near his household, man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was selected. Joshua said to Achan, My son, please give glory to Yahweh, the God of Israel, and make confession to him. Tell me now what you have done. Don't hide it from me. Achan answered Joshua and said, I have truly sinned against Yahweh, the God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoil a beautiful Babylonian robe, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, then I coveted them and took them. Behold, they are hidden in the ground in the middle of my tent with the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent. Behold, it was hidden in his tent, with the silver under it. They took them from the middle of the tent, and brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel. They laid them down before Yahweh. Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the robe, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his cattle, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them up to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? Yahweh will trouble you this day. All Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire and stoned them with stones. They raised over him a great heap of stones that remains to this day. Yahweh turned from the fierceness of his anger. Therefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor to this day. Chapter 8 The Conquest of Ai Yahweh said to Joshua, Don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and arise, go up to Ai. Behold, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, with his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and her king, as you did to Jericho and her king. Except its spoil and its livestock, you shall take for a plunder for yourselves. Set an ambush for the city 
behind it. So Joshua arose, and all the people of war, to go up to Ai. Joshua chose thirty thousand men, the mighty men of valor, and sent them out by night. He commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie in ambush against the city, behind the city. Don't go very far from the city, but all of you be ready. I and all the people who are with me will approach to the city. It shall happen, when they come out against us, as at the first, that we will flee before them. They will come out after us, until we have drawn them away from the city. For they will say, They flee before us like the first time, so we will flee before them. And you shall rise up from the ambush and take possession of the city. For Yahweh your God will deliver it into your hand. It shall be, when you have seized on the city, that you shall set the city on fire. You shall do this according to the word of Yahweh. Behold, I have commanded you. Joshua sent them out, and they went to set up the ambush, and stayed between Bethel and Ai, on the west side of Ai. But Joshua stayed among the people that night. Joshua rose up early in the morning, mustered the people, and went up, he and the elders of Israel, before the people, to Ai. All the people, even the men of war who were with him, went up, and drew near, and came before the city, and encamped on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between him and Ai. He took about five thousand men, and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai, on the west side of the city. So they set the people, even all the army who was on the north side of the city, and their ambush on the west of the city. And Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. It happened, when the king of Ai saw it, that they hurried and rose up early, and the men of the city went out against Israel to battle, he and all his people, at the time appointed, before Arabah. But he didn't know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel made as if they were beaten before them, and fled by the way of the wilderness. All the people who were in the city were called together to pursue after them. They pursued Joshua and were drawn away from the city. There was not a man left in Ai or Bethel who didn't go out after Israel. They left the city open and pursued Israel. Yahweh said to Joshua, Stretch out the javelin that is in your hand toward Ai for I will give it into your hand. Joshua stretched out the javelin that was in his hand toward the city. The ambush arose quickly out of their place, and they ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand and entered into the city and took it. They hurried and set the city on fire. When the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven, and they had no power to flee this way or that way. The people who fled to the wilderness turned back on the pursuers. When Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, then they turned again and killed the men of Ai. The others came out of the city against them, so they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side. They struck them, so that they let none of them remain or escape. They captured the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. It happened when Israel had made an end of killing all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness in which they pursued them, and they had all fallen by the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all Israel returned to Ai and struck it with the edge of the sword. All that failed that day, both of men and women, were twelve thousand, even all the men of Ai. For Joshua didn't draw back his hand, with which he stretched out the javelin, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai.
Only the livestock and the spoil of that city Israel took for prey to themselves, according to the word of Yahweh, which he commanded Joshua. So Joshua burnt Ai, and made it a heap forever, even a desolation to this day. He hanged the king of Ai on a tree until the evening, and at the sundown Joshua commanded, and they took his body down from the tree and threw it at the entrance of the gate of the city and raised a great heap of stones on it that remains to this day. Joshua Renews the Covenant Then Joshua built an altar to Yahweh, the God of Israel, in Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded the children of Israel as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones, on which no man had lifted up any iron. They offered burnt offerings on it to Yahweh, and sacrificed peace offerings. He wrote there on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. All Israel, and their elders and officers, and their judges, stood on this side of the ark and on that side before the priests, the Levites, who carried the ark of Yahweh's covenant, the foreigner as well as the native, half of them in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of Yahweh, had commanded at the first that they should bless the people of Israel. Afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessing and the curse, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua didn't read before all the assembly of Israel, with the women, the little ones, and the foreigners who were among them. Chapter 9 The Deceit of the Gibeonites It Happened when all the kings who were beyond the Jordan, in the hill country, and in the lowland, and on all the shore of the great sea in front of Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard of it, that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they also resorted to a ruse, and went and made as if they had been ambassadors, and took old sacks on their donkeys, and wineskins, old and torn and bound up, and old and patched shoes on their feet, and wore old garments. All the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. They went to Joshua to the camp at Gilgal and said to him and to the men of Israel, We have come from a far country. Now, therefore, make a covenant with us. The men of Israel said to the Hivites, What if you live among us? How could we make a covenant with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. Joshua said to them, Who are you? Where do you come from? They said to him, Your servants have come from a very far country because of the name of Yahweh your God. For we have heard of his fame, all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, who was at Ashtaroth. Our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provision in your hand for the journey, and go to meet them, and tell them, We are your servants. Now make a covenant with us. This our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we went out to go to you. But now, behold, it is dry and has become moldy. These wineskins, which we filled, were new, and behold, they are torn. These our garments and our shoes have become old because of the very long journey. 
the men sampled their provisions and didn't ask counsel from the mouth of Yahweh. Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. The princes of the congregation swore to them. It happened at the end of three days after they had made a covenant with them that they heard that they were their neighbors and that they lived among them. The children of Israel traveled and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Kephira, Beeroth, and kiriath Jerim. The children of Israel didn't strike them because the princes of the congregation had sworn to them by Yahweh, the God of Israel. All the congregation murmured against the princes, but all the princes said to all the congregation, We have sworn to them by Yahweh, the God of Israel. Now, therefore, we may not touch them. This we will do to them, and let them live, lest wrath be on us, because of the oath which we swore to them. The princes said to them, Let them live. So they became woodcutters and drawers of water for all the congregation, as the princes had spoken to them. Joshua called for them, and he spoke to them, saying, Why have you deceived us, saying, We are very far from you, when you live among us? Now, therefore, you are cursed, and some of you will never fail to be bondservants, both woodcutters and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua and said, Because your servants were certainly told how Yahweh your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore we were very afraid for our lives because of you and have done this thing. Now, behold, we are in your hand. Do to us as it seems good and right for you to do. He did so to them and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, so that they didn't kill them. That day Joshua made them woodcutters and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of Yahweh to this day in the place which he should choose. Chapter 10 Five Kings War Against Gibeon now it happened when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them that they were very afraid, because Gibeon was a great city, as one of the royal cities and because it was greater than Ai, and all its men were mighty. Therefore Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, to Piram, king of Jarmuth, to Jephiah, king of Lachish, and to Deber, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me, and help me, and let us strike Gibeon for it has made peace with Joshua and the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their armies, and encamped against Gibeon and made war against it. The men of Gibeon sent to Joshua, to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Don't abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the hill country have gathered together against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. Yahweh said to Joshua, Don't fear them for I have delivered them into your hands. Not a man of them will stand before you. Joshua therefore came on them suddenly. He went up from Gilgal all night. Yahweh confused them before Israel, 
And he killed them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, and chased them by the way of the ascent of Beth Horon, and struck them to Azekah and to Makeda. It happened as they fled from before Israel, while they were at the descent of Beth Horon, that Yahweh cast down great stones from the sky on them to Azekah, and they died. There were more who died from the hailstones than who the children of Israel killed with the sword. The sun stands still. Then Joshua spoke to Yahweh in the day when Yahweh delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still on Gibeon. You, moon, stop in the valley of Ajalon. The sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the nation had avenged themselves of their enemies. Isn't this written in the book of Jasher? The sun stayed in the midst of the sky, and didn't hurry to go down about a whole day. There was no day like that before it, or after it, that Yahweh listened to the voice of a man, for Yahweh fought for Israel. Joshua returned and all Israel with him, to the camp to Gilgal. Victory at Makeda These five kings fled and hid themselves in the cave at Makeda. Joshua was told, saying, The five kings are found, hidden in the cave at Makeda. Joshua said, Roll large stones to the mouth of the cave, and set men by it to guard them. But don't stay. Pursue your enemies and them from the rear. Don't allow them to enter into their cities, for Yahweh your God has delivered them into your hand. It happened when Joshua and the children of Israel had finished killing them with a very great slaughter until they were consumed, and the remnant which remained of them had entered into the fortified cities that all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave, and bring those five kings out of the cave to me. They did so, and brought those five kings out of the cave to him. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. It happened when they brought these kings out to Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the chiefs of the men of war who went with him, Come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. They came near and put their feet on their necks. Joshua said to them, Don't be afraid nor be dismayed. Be strong and courageous for Yahweh will do this to all your enemies against whom you fight. Afterward, Joshua struck them, put them to death, and hanged them on five trees. They were hanging on the trees until the evening. It happened at the time of the going down of the sun that Joshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees and cast them into the cave in which they had hidden themselves and laid great stones on the mouth of the cave, which remain to this very day. Joshua took Makeda on that day, and struck it with the edge of the sword, with its king. He utterly destroyed them and all the souls who were in it. He left none remaining. He did to the king of Makeda as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua conquers southern Palestine. Joshua passed from Makeda, and all Israel with him, to Libna, and fought against Libna. Yahweh delivered it also, with its king, into the hand of Israel. He struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls who were in it. He left none remaining in it. He did to its king as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua passed from Libna and all Israel with him, to Lachish, and encamped against it, and fought against it. Yahweh delivered Lachish into the hand of Israel. He took it on the second day, 
and struck it with the edge of the sword with all the souls who were in it according to all that he had done to libna then horam king of gezer came up to help lachish and joshua struck him and his people until he had left him none remaining joshua passed from lachish and all israel with him to eglon and they encamped against it and fought against it they took it on that day and struck it with the edge of the sword he utterly destroyed all the souls who were in it that day according to all that he had done to lachish joshua went up from eglon and all israel with him to hebron and they fought against it they took it and struck it with the edge of the sword with its king and all its cities and all the souls who were in it he left none remaining according to all that he had done to eglon but he utterly destroyed it and all the souls who were in it joshua returned and all israel with him to deber and fought against it he took it with its king and all its cities they struck them with the edge of the sword and utterly destroyed all the souls who were in it he left none remaining as he had done to hebron so he did to deber and to its king as he had done also to libna and to its king so joshua struck all the land the hill country and the south and the lowland and the slopes and all their kings he left none remaining but he utterly destroyed all that breathed as yahweh the god of israel commanded joshua struck them from kadesh Barnea even to gaza and all the country of goshen even to gibeon joshua took all these kings and their land at one time because yahweh the god of israel fought for israel joshua returned and all israel with him to the camp to gilgal chapter 11 northern palestine defeated it happened when jabin king of hazor heard of it that he sent to jobab king of Madon, to the king of shimron to the king of akshaph and to the kings who were on the north in the hill country in the arabah south of kenneroth in the lowland and in the heights of dor on the west to the canaanite on the east and on the west and the amorite and the hittite and the perizzite and the jebusite in the hill country and the hivite under hermon in the land of mizpah they went out they and all their armies with them many people even as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude with very many horses and chariots all these kings met together and they came and encamped together at the waters of miram to fight with israel yahweh said to joshua don't be afraid because of them for tomorrow at this time i will deliver them up all slain before israel you shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire so joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of miram suddenly and fell on them yahweh delivered them into the hand of israel and they struck them and chased them to great sidon and to misrephoth maim and to the valley of mizpeh eastward they struck them until they left them none remaining joshua did to them as yahweh told him he hamstrung their horses and burnt their chariots with fire joshua turned back at that time and took hazor and struck its king with the sword for hazor used to be the head of all those kingdoms they struck all the souls who were in it with the edge of the sword utterly destroying them there was no one left who breathed he burnt hazor with fire joshua captured all the cities of those kings with their kings and he struck them with the edge of the sword and utterly destroyed them
as Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded. But as for the cities that stood on their mounds, Israel burned none of them, except Hazor only. Joshua burned that. The children of Israel took all the spoil of these cities, with the livestock, as spoils for themselves. But every man they struck with the edge of the sword, until they had destroyed them. They didn't leave any who breathed. As Yahweh commanded Moses his servant, so Moses commanded Joshua. Joshua did so. He left nothing undone of all that Yahweh commanded Moses. Joshua takes the whole land. So Joshua captured all that land, the hill country, all the south, all the land of Goshen, the lowland, the Arabah, the hill country of Israel, and the lowland of the same, from Mount Halak that goes up to Seir, even to Baal Gad, in the valley of Lebanon under Mount Hermon. He took all their kings, struck them, and put them to death. Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, except the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon. They took all in battle, for it was of Yahweh to harden their hearts, to come against Israel in battle, that he might utterly destroy them, that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them, as Yahweh commanded Moses. Joshua came at that time and cut off the Anakim from the hill country, from Hebron, from Deber, from Anab, and from all the hill country of Judah, and from all the hill country of Israel. Joshua utterly destroyed them with their cities. There were none of the Anakim left in the land of the children of Israel. Only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod did some remain. So Joshua took the whole land, according to all that Yahweh spoke to Moses, and Joshua gave it for an inheritance to Israel, according to their divisions by their tribes. The land had rest from war. Chapter 12 List of Kings Defeated by Moses Now these are the kings of the land, whom the children of Israel struck, and possessed their land beyond the Jordan toward the sunrise, from the valley of the Arnon to Mount Hermon, and all the Arabah eastward. Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon, and ruled from Aurora, which is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon, and the middle of the valley, and half Gilead, even to the river Jabbok, the border of the children of Ammon, and the Arabah, to the sea of Kinneroth, eastward, and to the sea of the Arabah, even the salt sea, eastward, the way to Beth Jesimoth, and on the south, under the slopes of Pisgah, and the border of Og, king of Bashan, of the remnant of the Rephaim, who lived at Ashtaroth and at Edrei, and ruled in Mount Hermon, and in Salika, and in all Bashan, to the border of the Geshurites, and the Maakathites, and half Gilead, the border of Sihon, king of Heshbon. Moses, the servant of Yahweh, and the children of Israel struck them. Moses, the servant of Yahweh, gave it for a possession to the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh. List of Kings Defeated by Joshua These are the kings of the land whom Joshua and the children of Israel struck beyond the Jordan westward, from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon even to Mount Halak that goes up to Seir. Joshua gave it to the tribes of Israel for a possession according to their divisions in the hill country and in the lowland and in the Arabah and in the slopes and in the wilderness and in the south. The Hittite, the Amorite, and the Canaanite, 
the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, the king of Jericho, one, the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, one, the king of Jerusalem, one, the king of Hebron, one, the king of Jarmuth, one, the king of Lachish, one, the king of Eglon, one, the king of Gezer, one, the king of Deber, one, the king of Geder, one, the king of Horma, one, the king of Arad, one, the king of Libna, one, the king of Adullam, one, the king of Makeda, one, the king of Bethel, one, the king of Tapua, one, the king of Hefer, one, the king of Aphek, one, the king of Lesharon, one, the king of Madon, one, the king of Hazor, one, the king of Shimron Miron, one, the king of Akshaf, one, the king of Tayanak, one, the king of Megiddo, one, the king of Kedesh, one, the king of Jognium in Carmel, one, the king of Dor in the height of Dor, one, the king of Goyim in Gilgal, one, the king of Terza, one, all the kings, thirty-one. End of section nineteen. Chapter 13 Lands Yet Unconquered Now Joshua was old and well advanced in years. Yahweh said to him, You are old and advanced in years, and there remains yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that still remains all the regions of the Philistines and all the Geshurites, from the Shihor, which is before Egypt, even to the border of Ekron northward, which is counted as Canaanite. The five lords of the Philistines, the Gazites and the Ashdodites, the Ashkelonites, the Gittites and the Ekronites, also the Avon on the south, all the land of the Canaanites, and Miara that belongs to the Sidonians, to Aphek, to the border of the Amorites, and the land of the Gebelites, and all Lebanon toward the sunrise, from Baal Gad under Mount Hermon to the entrance of Hamath, all the inhabitants of the hill country, from Lebanon to Misrephoth Maim, even all the Sidonians, them will I drive out from before the children of Israel, only allocate it to Israel for an inheritance, as I have commanded you. Now, therefore, divide this land for an inheritance to the nine tribes, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Inheritance East of Jordan With him the Reubenites and the Gadites received their inheritance, which Moses gave them, beyond the Jordan eastward, even as Moses, the servant of Yahweh, gave them, from Aurora, that is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon, and the city that is in the middle of the valley, and all the plain of Meraba to Dibon, and all the cities of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, to the border of the children of Ammon, and Gilead, and the border of the Geshurites, and the Meachathites, and all Mount Hermon, 
and all Bashan to Salika, all the kingdom of Og in Bashan, who reigned in Ashtaroth and in Edrei. The same was left of the remnant of the Rephaim. For Moses attacked these and drove them out. Nevertheless, the children of Israel didn't drive out the Geshurites nor the Maacathites, for Geshur and Maacath dwell in the midst of Israel to this day. Only he gave no inheritance to the tribe of Levi, the offerings of Yahweh, the God of Israel, made by fire, are his inheritance, as he spoke to him. Moses gave to the tribe of the children of Reuben according to their families. Their border was from Aror, that is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon, and the city that is in the middle of the valley, and all the plain by Medaba, Heshbon and all its cities that are in the plain, Dibon, Bamoth Baal, Beth Baal Meon, Jahaz, Kedemoth, Mephaeth, Kiriathaim, Sibma, Zeruth Shehar, in the mount of the valley, Beth Peor, the slopes of Pisgah, Beth Jesimoth, all the cities of the plain, and all the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses struck with the chiefs of Midian, Evi, Recham, Zur, Hur, and Reba, the princes of Sihon, who lived in the land. Balaam slain. The children of Israel killed Balaam also, the son of Beor, the soothsayer, with the sword, among the rest of their slain. The border of the children of Reuben was the bank of the Jordan. This was the inheritance of the children of Reuben, according to their families, the cities, and its villages. Moses gave to the tribe of Gad, to the children of Gad, according to their families. Their border was Jazer, and all the cities of Gilead, and half the land of the children of Ammon, to Aror, that is before Rabbah, and from Heshbon to Ramoth Mizpeh, and Betanim, and from Mehanaim to the border of Deber, and in the valley Beth Haram, Beth Nimrah, Sukkoth, and Zaphon, the rest of the kingdom of Sihon, king of Heshbon, the Jordan's bank, to the uttermost part of the sea of Kenareth, beyond the Jordan eastward. This is the inheritance of the children of Gad, according to their families, the cities, and its villages. Moses gave an inheritance to the half-tribe of Manasseh, it was for the half-tribe of the children of Manasseh, according to their families. Their border was from Mahanaim, all Bashan, all the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, and all the towns of Jair, which are in Bashan, sixty cities. Half Gilead, Ashtaroth, and Edrei, the cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan, were for the children of Maker, the son of Manasseh, even for the half of the children of Maker, according to their families. These are the inheritances which Moses distributed in the plains of Moab, beyond the Jordan at Jericho, eastward. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses gave no inheritance. Yahweh, the God of Israel, is their inheritance, as he spoke to them. Chapter 14 Canaan Divided by Lot These are the inheritances which the children of Israel took in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed to them. By the lot of their inheritance, as Yahweh commanded by Moses, for the nine tribes and for the half tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of the two tribes and the half tribe beyond the Jordan. 
but to the Levites he gave no inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and they gave no portion to the Levites in the land, except cities to dwell in, with their suburbs for their livestock and for their property. The children of Israel did as Yahweh commanded Moses, and they divided the land. Caleb requests Hebron. Then the children of Judah drew near to Joshua in Gilgal. Caleb, the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the thing that Yahweh spoke to Moses, the man of God, concerning me and concerning you in Kadesh Barnea? I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of Yahweh, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. I brought him word again, as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed Yahweh, my God. Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where you walked shall be an inheritance to you and to your children forever, because you have wholly followed Yahweh, my God. Now, behold, Yahweh has kept me alive, as he spoke, these forty-five years, from the time that Yahweh spoke this word to Moses, while Israel walked in the wilderness. Now, behold, I am eighty-five years old today. As yet, I am as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this hill country of which Yahweh spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and great and fortified cities. It may be that Yahweh will be with me, and I shall drive them out as Yahweh spoke. Joshua blessed him, and he gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. Therefore Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed Yahweh, the God of Israel. Now the name of Hebron before was Kiriath Arba, after the greatest man among the Anakim. The land had rest from war. Chapter 15 the Territory of Judah The lot for the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families, was to the border of Edom, even to the wilderness of Zin southward, at the uttermost part of the south. Their south border was from the uttermost part of the Salt Sea, from the bay that looks southward, and it went out southward of the ascent of Akrabim, and passed along to Zin, and went up by the south of Kadesh Barnea, and passed along by Hezron, went up to Adder, and turned about to Karka, and it passed along to Asmon, went out at the brook of Egypt, and the border ended at the sea. This shall be your south border. The east border was the Salt Sea, even to the end of the Jordan. The border of the north quarter was from the bay of the sea at the end of the Jordan. The border went up to Beth Hogla and passed along by the north of Beth Araba. And the border went up to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. The border went up to Deber from the valley of Achor, and so northward, looking toward Gilgal, that is over against the ascent of Aduman, which is on the south side of the river. The border passed along to the waters of Enshemesh and ended at Enrogel. The border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom to the side of the Jebusite southward. The same is Jerusalem. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lies before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is at the farthest part of the valley of Rephaim northward. The border extended from the top of the mountain to the spring of the waters of Nephtoah and went out to the cities of Mount Ephron, and the border extended to Baalah. The same is Kiriath-Jerim. 
and the border turned about from Baala westward to Mount Seir, and passed along to the side of Mount Jerum on the north. The same is Kesselon, and went down to Beth Shemesh, and passed along by Timnah, and the border went out to the side of Ekron northward, and the border extended to Shikaron, and passed along to Mount Baala, and went out at Jabneel, and the goings out of the border were at the sea. The west border was to the shore of the great sea. This is the border of the children of Judah, according to their families. Caleb's Portion and Conquest To Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he gave a portion among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of Yahweh to Joshua, even Kerioth Arba, named after the father of Anak. The same is Hebron. Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak, Shishai and Ahiman, and Talmai, the children of Anak. He went up against the inhabitants of Deber. Now the name of Deber before was Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said, He who strikes Kiriath Sefer and takes it, to him will I give Aksa, my daughter, as wife. Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, as wife. It happened, when she came, that she had him ask her father for a field. She got off of her donkey, and Caleb said, What do you want? She said, Give me a blessing, because you have set me in the land of the south. Give me also springs of water. He gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. The Cities of Judah this is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. The farthest cities of the tribe of the children of Judah toward the border of Edom in the south were Kabzeel, Eder, Jager, Kenna, Demona, Adada, Kedesh, Hazor, Ithnan, Ziph, Telam, Bealoth, Hazor Hadatha, Kiriath Hezron, the same is Hazor, Amam, Shema, Molada, Hazar Gada, Heshman, Beth Pilet, Hazar Shul, Beersheba, Biziothiah, Baala, Lim, Ezem, Eltolad, Kiesel, Horma, Ziklag, Madmana, Sansana, Libaoth, Shilhim, Ayin, and Rimmon. All the cities are twenty-nine with their villages. In the lowland, Eshtael, Zora, Ashna, Zenoa, Enganim, Tapua, Enum, Jarmuth, Adulam, Soko, Azika, Shearaim, Adithaim, and Gedera, or Gederotheum, fourteen cities with their villages, Zenon, Hadasha, Migdal Gad, Dilian, Mispi, Jokthiel, Lakish, Bozkath, Eglon, Cabin, Lamum, Kidlish, Gedaroth, Beth Dagon, Naama, and Makeda, sixteen cities with their villages, Libna, Ether, Asian, Ifta, Ashna, Nizib, Kiila, Agzib, and Marisha, nine cities with their villages. Ekron, with its towns and its villages, 
from Ekron even to the sea, all that were by the side of Ashdod, with their villages. Ashdod, its towns and its villages. Gaza, its towns and its villages, to the brook of Egypt, and the great sea with its coastline. In the hill country, Shamer, Jadder, Soko, Dana, Kiriath Sana, which is Deber, Aneb, Eshtemo, Anim, Goshen, Holon, and Gilo, eleven cities with their villages, Arab, Duma, Eshan, Janim, Beth Tapua, Afika, Humta, Kiriath Arba, the same is Hebron, and Zayur, nine cities with their villages, Mayan, Carmel, Ziph, Judah, Jezreel, Jogdium, Zenoah, Cain, Gibeah, and Timnah, ten cities with their villages, Halhul, Bethzur, Gidur, Meorath, Bethanoth, and Eltikon, six cities with their villages, Kiriath Baal, the same is Kiriath Jerum, and Rabbah, two cities with their villages. In the wilderness, Betharaba, Midden, Sikeka, Nipshan, the city of Salt, and in Gedi, six cities with their villages. As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Judah couldn't drive them out. But the Jebusites live with the children of Judah at Jerusalem to this day. Chapter 16 The Territory of Ephraim The lot came out for the children of Joseph from the Jordan at Jericho, at the waters of Jericho on the east, even the wilderness, going up from Jericho through the hill country to Bethel. It went out from Bethel to Luz, and passed along to the border of the Archites, to Ataroth, and it went down westward to the border of the Japhletites, to the border of Beth Horon the Lower, even to Gezer, and ended at the sea. The children of Joseph, Manasseh, and Ephraim took their inheritance. This was the border of the children of Ephraim, according to their families. The border of their inheritance eastward was Adaroth Adder to Beth Horon the upper. The border went out westward at Mikmathath on the north. The border turned about eastward to Teonath Shiloh and passed along it on the east of Genoa. It went down from Genoa to Adaroth to Neara, reached to Jericho and went out at the Jordan. From Tapua, the border went along westward to the brook of Cana and ended at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, together with the cities which were set apart for the children of Ephraim in the midst of the inheritance of the children of Manasseh, all the cities with their villages. They didn't drive out the Canaanites who lived in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwell in the midst of Ephraim to this day, and have become servants to do forced labor. Chapter 17 The Territory of Manasseh This was the lot for the tribe of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Joseph. As for Maker, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, because he was a man of war, therefore he had Gilead and Bashan. So this was for the rest of the children of Manasseh, according to their families. 
for the children of Abiezer, for the children of Helek, for the children of Azrael, for the children of Shechem, for the children of Hefer, and for the children of Shemida. These were the male children of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, according to their families. But Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, had no sons but daughters, and these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terza. They came near before Eleazar the priest, and before Joshua the son of Nun, and before the princes, saying, Yahweh commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brothers. Therefore, according to the commandment of Yahweh, he gave them an inheritance among the brothers of their father. Ten parts fell to Manasseh, besides the land of Gilead and Bashan, which is beyond the Jordan, because the daughters of Manasseh had an inheritance among his sons. The land of Gilead belonged to the rest of the sons of Manasseh. The border of Manasseh was from Asher to Michmethath, which is before Shechem. The border went along to the right hand, to the inhabitants of Entapua. The land of Tapua belonged to Manasseh, but Tapua on the border of Manasseh belonged to the children of Ephraim. The border went down to the brook of Cana, southward of the brook. These cities belonged to Ephraim among the cities of Manasseh. The border of Manasseh was on the north side of the brook and ended at the sea. Southward it was Ephraim's, and northward it was Manasseh's, and the sea was his border. They reached to Asher on the north and to Issachar on the east. Manasseh had three heights in Issachar, in Asher, Bethshean and its towns, and Iblium and its towns, and the inhabitants of Dor and its towns, and the inhabitants of Endor and its towns, and the inhabitants of Taanach and its towns, and the inhabitants of Megiddo and its towns. Yet the children of Manasseh couldn't drive out the inhabitants of those cities but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. It happened, when the children of Israel had grown strong, that they put the Canaanites to forced labor, and didn't utterly drive them out. The children of Joseph spoke to Joshua, saying, Why have you given me just one lot and one part for an inheritance, since I am a great people, because Yahweh has blessed me so far? Joshua said to them, If you are a great people, go up to the forest and clear land for yourself there in the land of the Perizzites and after Rephaim, since the hill country of Ephraim is too narrow for you. The children of Joseph said, The hill country is not enough for us. All the Canaanites who dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, both those who are in Beth Sheen and its towns, and those who are in the valley of Jezreel. Joshua spoke to the house of Joseph, even to Ephraim and to Manasseh, saying, You are a great people, and have great power. You shall not have one lot only, but the hill country shall be yours. Although it is a forest, you shall cut it down, and its farthest extent shall be yours. For you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have chariots of iron, and though they are strong. Chapter 18 The Tabernacle at Shiloh The whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled themselves together at Shiloh, and set up the tent of meeting there. The land was subdued before them. The Remainder Divided Seven tribes remained among the children of Israel, 
which had not yet divided their inheritance. Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long will you neglect to go in to possess the land which Yahweh, the God of your fathers, has given you? Appoint for yourselves three men from each tribe. I will send them, and they shall arise, walk through the land, and describe it according to their inheritance, and they shall come to me. They shall divide it into seven portions. Judah shall live in his borders on the south, and the house of Joseph shall live in their borders on the north. You shall survey the land into seven parts, and bring the description here to me, and I will cast lots for you here before Yahweh our God. For the Levites have no portion among you, for the priesthood of Yahweh is their inheritance. Gad, Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond the Jordan eastward, which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, gave them. The men arose and went. Joshua commanded those who went to survey the land, saying, Go, walk through the land, survey it, and come again to me. I will cast lots for you here before Yahweh in Shiloh. The men went and passed through the land, and surveyed it by cities into seven portions in a book. They came to Joshua to the camp at Shiloh. Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before Yahweh. There Joshua divided the land to the children of Israel according to their divisions. Benjamin's Territory The lot of the tribe of the children of Benjamin came up according to their families. The border of their lot went out between the children of Judah and the children of Joseph. Their border on the north quarter was from the Jordan. The border went up to the side of Jericho on the north and went up through the hill country westward. It ended at the wilderness of beth -Avon. The border passed along from there to Luz, to the side of Luz. The same is Bethel, southward. The border went down to Adaroth Adder, by the mountain that lies on the south of beth -Horon, the Lord. The border extended and turned around on the west quarter southward, from the mountain that lies before Beth Horon southward, and ended at Kiriath Baal. The same is Kiriath Jerim, a city of the children of Judah. This was the west quarter. The south quarter was from the farthest part of Kiriath Jerim. The border went out westward and went out to the spring of the waters of Nephtoa. The border went down to the farthest part of the mountain that lies before the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is in the valley of Rephaim northward. It went down to the valley of Hinnom, to the side of the Jebusite southward, and went down to Enrogel. It extended northward, went out at En Shemesh, and went out to Gililoth which is over against the ascent of Aduman. It went down to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. It passed along to the side over against the Arabah northward and went down to the Arabah. The border passed along to the side of Beth Hogla northward and the border ended at the north bay of the Salt Sea at the south end of the Jordan. This was the south border. The Jordan was its border on the east quarter. This was the inheritance of the children of Benjamin, by the borders around it, according to their families. Now the cities of the tribe of the children of Benjamin, according to their families, were Jericho, Beth Hogla, Emek Kizes, Beth Arabah, Zemaraim, Bethel, Avim, Pera, Ophra, Kephar Ammonai, Ophni, and Geba, twelve cities with their villages, Gibeon, Ramah, Beeroth, Mizpeh, Kephira, 
Moza, Rikam, Erpio, Terala, Zila, Elif, the Jebusite, the same is Jerusalem, Gebeoth, and Kiriath, fourteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Benjamin, according to their families. Chapter 19 Simeon's Territory The second lot came out for Simeon, even for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. Their inheritance was in the midst of the inheritance of the children of Judah. They had for their inheritance Beersheba, or Sheba, Molada, Hazershul, Bela, Ezem, El Tolad, Bethel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markaboth, Hazer Susa, Beth Lebaoth, and Sheruhin, thirteen cities with their villages Ain, Rimmon, Ether, and Ashan, four cities with their villages and all the villages that were around these cities, to Baalath Beer, Ramah of the south. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. Out of the part of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon. For the portion of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore the children of Simeon had inheritance in the midst of their inheritance. Zebulun's Territory The third lot came up for the children of Zebulun, according to their families. The border of their inheritance was to Sarid. Their border went up westward, even to Marilla, and reached to Dabasheth. It reached to the brook that is before Jognium. It turned from Sarid eastward, toward the sunrise, to the border of Kisloth Tabor. It went out to Dabareth, and went up to Japhia. From there it passed along eastward to Gathhefer, to Ephkazin, and it went out at Rimmon, which stretches to Nea. The border turned around it on the north, to Hanathon, and it ended at the valley of Iftael, Kadath, Nahalel, Shimron, Idala, and Bethlehem. Twelve cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Zebulun, according to their families. These cities with their villages. Issachar's Territory The fourth lot came out for Issachar, even for the children of Issachar, according to their families. Their border was to Jezreel, Kesoloth, Shunim, Hapharaim, Shion, Aneharath, Rabbith, Kishion, Ebez, Remeth, Enganim, Enhada, and Beth Pazes. The border reached to Tabor, Shehazuma, and Beth Shemesh. Their border ended at the Jordan. Sixteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Issachar, according to their families, the cities with their villages. Asher's Territory The fifth lot came out for the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families. Their border was Helkath, Halai, Beden, Akshaph, Alamelech, Amad, Mishael. It reached to Carmel westward, and to Shahor Libneth. It turned toward the sunrise to Beth Dagon, and reached to Zebulun, and to the valley of Iftael northward, to Beth Emek and Neiel. It went out to Cable on the left hand, and Ebron, Rehob, Hammon, and Cana, even to Great Sidon. 
the border turned to Ramah, to the fortified city of Tyre, and the border turned to Hosa. It ended at the sea, by the region of Agzib, Uma also, and Aphek, and Rehob, twenty-two cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, these cities with their villages. Naphtali's Territory The sixth lot came out for the children of Naphtali, even for the children of Naphtali, according to their families. Their border was from Heleph, from the oak in Zeananim, Adamineketh, and Jabneel to Lakum. It ended at the Jordan. The border turned westward to Asnoth Tabor, and went out from there to Hukak. It reached to Zebulun on the south, and reached to Asher on the west, and to Judah at the Jordan toward the sunrise. The fortified cities were Zidim, Zer, Hamath, Rakath, Kinnereth, Adama, Rama, Hazer, Kedesh, Edrei, Enhazer, Iron, Migdalel, Horam, Bethaneth, and Beth Shemesh, nineteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Naphtali according to their families, the cities with their villages. Dan's Territory The seventh lot came out for the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families. The border of their inheritance was Zorah, Eshtaol, Irshimish, Shealabin, Ajalon, Ithla, Elon, Timna, Ekron, Eltaka, Gibbethon, Baaleth, Jehud, Benibirak, Gathrimon, Mejarkan, and Rakan, with the border over against Joppa. The border of the children of Dan went out beyond them, for the children of Dan went up and fought against Leshem and took it, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and possessed it, and lived therein, and called Leshem Dan, after the name of Dan their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families, these cities with their villages. Joshua's Inheritance so they made an end of distributing the land for inheritance by its borders. The children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua, the son of Nun, in the midst of them. According to the commandment of Yahweh, they gave him the city which he asked, even Timnath-Sirah, in the hill country of Ephraim. And he built the city and lived there. These are the inheritances, which Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed for inheritance by lot in Shiloh before Yahweh at the door of the tent of meeting. So they made an end of dividing the land. Chapter 20 Six Cities of Refuge Yahweh spoke to Joshua, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Assign the cities of refuge, of which I spoke to you by Moses, that the manslayer who kills any person accidentally or unintentionally may flee there. They shall be to you for a refuge from the avenger of blood. He shall flee to one of those cities, and shall stand at the entrance of the gate of the city, and declare his cause in the ears of the elders of that city. 
they shall take him into the city with them, and give him a place that he may live among them. If the avenger of blood pursue after him, then they shall not deliver up the manslayer into his hand, because he struck his neighbor unintentionally and didn't hate him before. He shall dwell in that city until he stands before the congregation for judgment, until the death of the high priest that shall be in those days. Then the manslayer shall return and come to his own city and to his own house, to the city he fled from. They set apart Kedesh in Galilee, in the hill country of Naphtali, Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, and Kiriath Arbor, the same is Hebron, in the hill country of Judah, beyond the Jordan at Jericho, eastward. They set Bezer in the wilderness, in the plain, out of the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth in Gilead, out of the tribe of Gad, and Golan in Bashan, out of the tribe of Manasseh. These were the appointed cities for all the children of Israel, and for the alien who lives among them, that whoever kills any person unintentionally might flee there, and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood, until he stands before the congregation. Chapter 21 Forty-eight Cities of the Levites then the heads of fathers' houses of the Levites came near to Eleazar the priest, and to Joshua the son of Nun, and to the heads of fathers' houses of the tribes of the children of Israel. They spoke to them at Shiloh in the land of Canaan, saying, Yahweh commanded Moses to give us cities to dwell in, with their suburbs for our livestock. The children of Israel gave to the Levites out of their inheritance, according to the commandment of Yahweh, these cities with their suburbs. The lot came out for the families of the Kohathites. The children of Aaron the priest, who were of the Levites, had thirteen cities by lot out of the tribe of Judah, out of the tribe of the Simeonites, and out of the tribe of Benjamin. The rest of the children of Kohath had ten cities by lot out of the families of the tribe of Ephraim, out of the tribe of Dan, and out of the half-tribe of Manasseh. The children of Gershon had thirteen cities by lot out of the families of the tribe of Issachar, out of the tribe of Asher, out of the tribe of Naphtali, and out of the half-tribe of Manasseh in Bashan. The children of Merari, according to their families, had twelve cities out of the tribe of Reuben, out of the tribe of Gad, and out of the tribe of Zebulun. The children of Israel gave these cities with their suburbs by lot to the Levites, as Yahweh commanded by Moses. They gave out of the tribe of the children of Judah, and out of the tribe of the children of Simeon, these cities which are mentioned by name. And they were for the children of Aaron, of the families of the Kohathites, who were of the children of Levi, for theirs was the first lot. They gave them Kiriath Arba, named after the father of Anak. The same is Hebron. In the hill country of Judah, with its suburbs around it. But they gave the fields of the city and its villages to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for his possession. To the children of Aaron, the priest, they gave Hebron with its suburbs, the city of refuge for the manslayer, Libna with its suburbs, Jadar with its suburbs, Eshtemoa with its suburbs, Holon with its suburbs, Deber with its suburbs, Ayin with its suburbs, Judah with, with its suburbs, and Beth Shemesh with its suburbs, nine cities out of those two tribes. Out of the tribe of Benjamin, Gibeon with its suburbs, Geba with its suburbs, 
Anathoth with its suburbs, and Almon with its suburbs. Four cities. All the cities of the children of Aaron, the priest, were thirteen cities with their suburbs. The families of the children of Kohath, the Levites, even the rest of the children of Kohath, had the cities of their lot out of the tribe of Ephraim. They gave them Shechem with its suburbs in the hill country of Ephraim, the city of refuge for the manslayer, and Gezer with its suburbs, Kibzaim with its suburbs, and Beth Horon with its suburbs, four cities. Out of the tribe of Dan, Eltaka with its suburbs, Gibbethon with its suburbs, Ajalon with its suburbs, Gathrimon with its suburbs, four cities. Out of the half-tribe of Manasseh, Taanach with its suburbs, and Gathrimon with its suburbs, two cities. All the cities of the families of the rest of the children of Kohath were ten with their suburbs. They gave to the children of Gershon, of the families of the Levites, out of the half-tribe of Manasseh, Golan in Bashan with its suburbs, the city of refuge for the manslayer, and Beeshtera with its suburbs, two cities. Out of the tribe of Issachar, Kishion with its suburbs, Dabarath with its suburbs, Jarmuth with its suburbs, Enganim with its suburbs, four cities. Out of the tribe of Asher, Mishael with its suburbs, Abdon with its suburbs, Helkath with its suburbs, and Rehob with its suburbs. Four cities. Out of the tribe of Naphtali, Kedesh in Galilee with its suburbs, the city of refuge for the manslayer, Hamothdor with its suburbs, and Kartan with its suburbs. Three cities. All the cities of the Gershonites, according to their families, were thirteen cities with their suburbs. To the families of the children of Merari, the rest of the Levites, out of the tribe of Zebulun, Jogneum with its suburbs, Carta with its suburbs, Demna with its suburbs, and Nahalal with its suburbs. Four cities. Out of the tribe of Reuben, Bezer with its suburbs, Jahaz with its suburbs, Kedemoth with its suburbs, and Mephaeth with its suburbs. Four cities. Out of the tribe of Gad, Ramoth and Gilead with its suburbs, the city of refuge for the manslayer, and Mahanaim with its suburbs, Heshbon with its suburbs, Jazer with its suburbs, four cities in all. All these were the cities of the children of Merari, according to their families, even the rest of the families of the Levites. Their lot was twelve cities. All the cities of the Levites in the midst of the possession of the children of Israel were forty-eight cities with their suburbs. Each of these cities included their suburbs around them. It was this way with all these cities. So Yahweh gave to Israel all the land which he swore to give to their fathers. They possessed it and lived in it. Yahweh gave them rest all around, according to all that he swore to their fathers. Not a man of all their enemies stood before them. Yahweh delivered all their enemies into their hand. Nothing failed of any good thing which Yahweh had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Chapter 22 Tribes Beyond the Jordan Return Then Joshua called the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and said to them, you have kept all that Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded you, and have listened to my voice in all that I commanded you. You have not left your brothers these many days to this day, 
but have performed the duty of the commandment of Yahweh your God. Now Yahweh your God has given rest to your brothers as he spoke to them. Therefore now, return and go to your tents, to the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, gave you beyond the Jordan. Only take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded you, to love Yahweh your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their tents. Now to the one half-tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given inheritance in Bashan, but to the other half gave Joshua among their brothers beyond the Jordan westward. Moreover, when Joshua sent them away to their tents, he blessed them and spoke to them, saying, Return with much wealth to your tents, with very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with brass, with iron, and with very much clothing. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brothers. The children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan to go to the land of Gilead, to the land of their possession, which they owned, according to the commandment of Yahweh by Moses. The Offensive Altar When they came to the region about the Jordan, that is, in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh built there an altar by the Jordan, a great altar to look at. The children of Israel heard this. Behold, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar in the forefront of the land of Canaan, in the region about the Jordan, on the side that pertains to the children of Israel. When the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go up against them to war. The children of Israel sent to the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the half-tribe of Manasseh into the land of Gilead, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and with him ten princes, one prince of a father's house for each of the tribes of Israel. And they were, every one of them, head of their father's houses among the thousands of Israel. They came to the children of Reuben, and to the children of Gad, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, to the land of Gilead, and they spoke with them, saying, Thus says the whole congregation of Yahweh, What trespass is this that you have committed against the God of Israel, to turn away this day from following Yahweh, in that you have built you an altar, to rebel this day against Yahweh? Is the iniquity of Peor too little for us, from which we have not cleansed ourselves to this day, although there came a plague on the congregation of Yahweh, that you must turn away this day from following Yahweh? It will be, since you rebel today against Yahweh, that tomorrow he will be angry with the whole congregation of Israel. However, if the land of your possession is unclean, then pass over to the land of the possession of Yahweh, in which Yahweh's tabernacle dwells, and take possession among us. But don't rebel against Yahweh, nor rebel against us, in building an altar other than the altar of Yahweh our God. Didn't Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the devoted thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel? That man didn't perish alone in his iniquity. Then the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered and spoke to the heads of the thousands of Israel. The Mighty One, God, Yahweh, the Mighty One, God, Yahweh, He knows, and Israel shall know. If it was in rebellion or if in trespass against Yahweh, don't save us this day. 
that we have built us an altar to turn away from following Yahweh, or if to offer burnt offering or meal offering, or if to offer sacrifices of peace offerings, let Yahweh himself require it. If we have not out of concern done this, and for a reason, saying, In time to come, your children might speak to our children, saying, What have you to do with Yahweh, the God of Israel? For Yahweh has made the Jordan a border between us and you, you children of Reuben and children of Gad. You have no portion in Yahweh. So your children might make our children cease from fearing Yahweh. Therefore we said, Let's now prepare to build ourselves an altar, not for burnt offering, nor for sacrifice, but it will be a witness between us and you, and between our generations after us, that we may perform the service of Yahweh before him with our burnt offerings, with our sacrifices, and with our peace offerings, that your children may not tell our children in time to come, you have no portion in Yahweh. Therefore we said, It shall be, when they tell us, or our generations, this in time to come, that we shall say, Behold the pattern of the altar of Yahweh, which our fathers made, not for burnt offering, nor for sacrifice, but it is a witness between us and you. Far be it from us that we should rebel against Yahweh, and turn away this day from following Yahweh, to build an altar for burnt offering, for meal offering, or for sacrifice, besides the altar of Yahweh our God that is before his tabernacle. When Phinehas the priest and the princes of the congregation, even the heads of the thousands of Israel that were with him, heard the words that the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the children of Manasseh spoke, it pleased them well. Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, said to the children of Reuben, to the children of Gad, and to the children of Manasseh, Today we know that Yahweh is in the midst of us, because you have not committed this trespass against Yahweh. Now you have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of Yahweh. Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and the princes, returned from the children of Reuben and from the children of Gad, out of the land of Gilead, to the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought them word again. The thing pleased the children of Israel, and the children of Israel blessed God, and spoke no more of going up against them to war, to destroy the land in which the children of Reuben and the children of Gad lived. The children of Reuben and the children of Gad named the altar a witness between us that Yahweh is God. Chapter 23 Joshua's Charge to Leaders It happened after many days, when Yahweh had given rest to Israel from their enemies all around, and Joshua was old and well advanced in years, that Joshua called for all Israel, for their elders, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and said to them, I am old and well advanced in years. You have seen all that Yahweh your God has done to all these nations because of you, for it is Yahweh your God who has fought for you. Behold, I have allotted to you these nations that remain, to be an inheritance for your tribes from the Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off even to the great sea toward the going down of the sun. Yahweh your God will thrust them out from before you and drive them from out of your sight. You shall possess their land as Yahweh your God spoke to you. Therefore, be very courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you not turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, that you not come among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, 
nor bow down yourselves to them. But hold fast to Yahweh your God, as you have done to this day. For Yahweh has driven great and strong nations out from before you. But as for you, no man has stood before you to this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for it is Yahweh your God who fights for you, as he spoke to you. Take good heed, therefore, to yourselves, that you love Yahweh your God. But if you do at all go back and hold fast to the remnant of these nations, even these who remain among you, and make marriages with them, and go in to them, and they to you, know for a certainty that Yahweh your God will no longer drive these nations from out of your sight, but they shall be a snare and a trap to you a scourge in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from this good land which Yahweh your God has given you. Behold, today I am going the way of all the earth. You know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing has failed of all the good things which Yahweh your God spoke concerning you. All have happened to you, not one thing has failed of it. It shall happen that as all the good things have come on you, of which Yahweh your God spoke to you, so Yahweh will bring on you all the evil things, until he has destroyed you from off this good land which Yahweh your God has given you, when you disobey the covenant of Yahweh your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods, and bow down yourselves to them. Then the anger of Yahweh will be kindled against you, and you will perish quickly from off the good land which he has given you. End of section 20